the Sumerians refer to their land as Kengir, K-E-N-G-I-R. And that means the country of the noble lords. Their name does not refer to a geographic location on earth, even though there may be a geographic location on earth called Sumeru, right? Cool. We, we, we can't, we ain't going to argue that. What I want to share with you is that the Sumerians, like a lot of ancestors during this golden age of advanced science, their name holds a secret to their spiritual land of origin. So they didn't name themselves out there any geographic location. They named the geographic location after a spiritual location. And that location is in the summit point of the earth or what we call the summit area, which is the root word of Sumeria. The Sumerians had the name Maru. Maru there to encode this spiritual place where everything in creation originates from, okay? When we talk about the Sumerians, the Tower of Babel story is very prevalent in their culture as well. This all seeing eye represents a holy land that's the highest point in our cosmos. And what I have on the right here this picture on the right, this is Sira cosmology, S-E-R-E-R. -E -E and you see that our earth is the underworld here surrounding the mountain of Maru. But at the top of this mountain, there's a city, a holy city. And this is the base reality where we all originate, the seed reality. Okay, so the all seeing eye represents this sort of place that's detached from the physical reality and where the physical reality ends this spiritual re reality begins and so the capstone is detached because this marks a spot in our cosmos where physicality ceases to exist as we know it we change forms the Tower of Babel being knocked down is a representation of how the Taurus field folds back inward at the sky vault. The god El, a.k.a. the all-seeing eye, is the deity responsible for the tower falling. The top of Mount Maru is being decapitated by El, the reaper, the ripper. The syncretism is due to the fact that what caps Maru is the energy of the pole arching up and outwards, expanding the sky canopy to the outer ring. This is also referred to as the stone that the builders rejected. So this is because this is the part of our universe that can't be built. Energy can't be created or destroyed, but the release of energy is the foundation of all things. Life is all about the release of energy. So as I move forward deep into this, you know I'm going to make it simple and leave no stone unturned. Peace and love and welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Um, do me a favor. Do me a favor on your way in. Hit the like and share button for me. We about to get it in on a Friday night. Drop a one if you can hear me loud and clear. Please drop a one for your boy. If you can hear me. Thank you. Mic check, mic check. How is my audio on y'all in? Y'all see the title, right? We're going to talk about why there's different languages because the religious people have an explanation to why the world speak different languages. And then science also have an explanation based upon evolution and the original humans migrating out of Africa. And basically what they're teaching us is the environment that changed the features of these humans 
also changed the language and dialect that they had. So we're definitely going to be talking about all of this. It's going to be some very deep stuff we're going over. So uh, let's get ready to get into it, but right after this message. Support the content you love. Your contribution matters. It helps us continue our groundbreaking research, allowing us to create the unique content that you expect from our brand. Contribute today via Cash App, PayPal, or Patreon. Thank you for your support and for being part of this Flat Power slash Golden Wings community. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Please, everybody, hit the uh, like button and share button on your way in. It's Friday. Let's build a momentum up. Let's, that's one way you can help grow the channel. I appreciate that. We're going to be going over a lot of deep stuff today, and it needs to be shared. So, All right, yo. First of all, the video clip that you saw at the uh, beginning of this thing is uploaded on the channel. And I thought I had added it to the stream here. I'm tripping. Hold on. Uh, redirect. My bad. Uh, redirect. Redirect. I'm going to have to do that right now. And I hate to keep y'all waiting, but that's important. Let me do it right quick. Get my redirect game on, man. Indians refer to their land. Uh, yeah, that's that's what's up. Now I don't understand why I can't redirect nobody to a video that I made. Maybe oh, that's a trailer, maybe. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm tripping. I don't know why I thought I could do that, but anyway. Come on up in the building. Salutes to everybody. Come on up in here, man. Get this love and this enlightenment, man, for real. Okay, people, so the title is called Before Babel, and we're going to be talking about a little bit of Sumerian simulation technology, also how it relates to the confusion of tongues um, in the simulation, because in the base reality, there are no different languages. These souls speak to each other via direct thought and telekinesis i want i want to really drive this home and break this down and they I'm, I'm waiting on the people to get into the building uh before i go all the way in but i might just need to go on do my thing all right let me let me load some stuff up real quick while we wait on them people i want y'all to realize right if every human on earth were mentally connected with one another teleconnected, telekinetically, meaning that I can see your thoughts and you can see my thoughts at all times, meaning that and, 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 um, even if we're separated by distances, right, I can think of you and actually share your mind and be in your mind. I can uh, feel how you feel. I can say, let me see what my brother in Japan is doing, right? And I can close my eyes, go into meditation, kind of remote view, kind of share your body with you, <laughs> right? And we can be one. And I would even know your thoughts, see your thoughts, and feel your feelings. 
imagine a world where every single human was connected that way, meaning there was no privacy. There was no such thing as my thoughts and your thoughts. It was just the thoughts of the collective. This right here is what we call a hive mind. Um, I'm just starting and I'm getting a signal from YouTube that's saying we're not getting a good connection. So let me get a one from you guys if, if the stream is, is okay. Let me get a one if we're thumbs up. Imagine the world being all one, a Borg, a connected hive mind. Imagine that for just a second, right? Imagine the world, one big hive mind. I mean, somebody said that's China's future. That's the future of the world. Yeah, that's China first, but then it's going to be the world later. Thank you for the ones. So, I want to explain something to you. I know you guys like the idea of having your own thoughts, your idea of being an individual unit that can hide your feelings. And, you know, this concept of heaven where in heaven God knows everything, like this concept where, see, basically what our earth is and our whole process of incarnations to make it, up the stairway to heaven back to Eden, right? Eden, and let me let me let me show you a picture of what Eden is so we just don't talk about it. Here, right here. This little uh so excuse me, excuse me. This little area that you see at the top of Maru, that's a whole nother universe above our creation. And that's the base reality. That is associated with the pineal gland, whereas creation is associated with the brain and the left and right brain, sun and moon, Joachim and Boaz. But now check this out, right? In our base reality, we are one hive mind, one shared collective like a board. And it's because that version of us in the base reality, it has purged itself of all the desires that it would have to want to hide within the creation. So think to yourself, right? If right now the world went online via thought and everyone was able to see everybody's thoughts, what about your thoughts would you be ashamed of? What about your thoughts would make you ashamed and say, oh, wait a minute, I don't want to be part of this hive mind. Whatever that is that you're ashamed of, that you're hiding from the world, this place is here for you to purge that out of you so that when you make it to Eden, you have no shame, no guilt, no regrets, nothing. You can share your mind with the hive unapologetically, which is why the Hindu said um, the version of yourself that you're not ashamed of and that you die with no regrets is, is basically where we're trying to be. These series of incarnations is like a filtering process to where we're here to live out our secular desires or the desires in the creation down here before we can ascend back up to Eden. So the word purgatory is dealing with a purging process where we have to really act these lower desires of our heart out it, this is what we call living out our truths before we can ascend. The prophecy or scripture that's written in the heart must be fulfilled. But I want to I wanna share some with you about how it's going to all tie into the Bible story in the Bible and the God of the Bible that knocked the tower down and separated the languages. Because what you got to realize, this area at the top, excuse me, this area at the top 
is the summit area, meaning it's the highest point in the universe. And this is the area that is equivalent to the place where the Bible calls pineal. The word pineal is related to the word pinnacle, which means the top point, just like the word Samaria is a play on the two words summit area. The Sumerians were not aliens. They were not Nephilim fallen angels. They were humans who realized that earth is not our true home. And later that was put into the Bible, you see. They realized that we this is not our base reality like me and Jason Brashears keep telling y'all. When we say earth is not the base reality, we're literally repeating what the Christians say when they say earth is not the true home, our true home. Our true home is this place called Eden in the middle of the earth. And one thing I want to point out is this cosmology on the right is called Sarah cosmology, where they're literally showing us this place above creation, above time, above duality. And in this central place, you can see how this little world right on top of Mount Maru is how we get the Santa Claus hat with the ball on top of the Santa Claus hat, right? Because the birthday hat being a cone on top of your head, it represent this Mount Maru. When See, when we leave out of the creation, right? See, there's a split in the middle of our earth. I'm going to show it to you real quick because now we getting it in, man. Let's start uh, dropping, dropping these bombs, man. Let's go. Let's go. Let me show you some because... There's a split in the middle of the earth. Like what you see in the middle of all the ziggurats. That's called a great hall of Osiris. In the Wizard of Oz, they call it the yellow brick road. But I'm bringing this up for a reason. Just walk with me, right? Just walk with me. Let me show it to you again. You see this? This is your Reuben cosmology where they show you Jack's beanstalk cutting through the middle of the earth. Same in Egyptian, you see Joaquin Boaz being personified, sun and moon, man and woman, with the child being born through the tree of life, which is Maru or Mary, which is a black void or a black stone, a black pillar in the middle of creation. What is this opening in the middle of the earth? It's the same opening in the middle of the brain. We're not our brain. We're the mind that is seated in between the two pillars, Joachim and Boaz. And the, so the Sumerians identified, like I said in my video that I played, the term Sumerian is not dealing with a geographic location on earth. It's because the ancestors identified, the ancestors basically named their geographic location on earth out to their spiritual homeland and they didn't identify by the body they identified by the soul and if anybody want to debate what i'm saying guess what you telling me you telling me the christians are original and we know that they plagiarized all this stuff what do you mean sanchez the christians say we're not our bodies we're our souls don't be attached to the flesh where you think they getting this from but if you look at the church today, it's all about prosperity, blessings, money, sowing seeds. They caught up into the fake religion of Paul. They all going to hell. They ain't practicing the knowledge of the true Christ, what we're doing. Because they Bible tell them don't be caught up in the worldly things, but they all about money blessings in the church, which is worldly concerns. And the Bible was about seeking of things of the spirit which is what we're doing. Now watch this, right? I want you to know that this particular collage right here, this ball that you see at the top of the pyramid represent the base reality. That also represent the mind that's seated in between the two pillars, left and right brain. See, to leave the world is to leave the body. You see what I'm saying? 
if our world is a simulation that we are engaging in via like some sort of virtual reality layering over a base reality, think of you wearing virtual reality goggles. To, for you to leave that game would mean to take those goggles off and then come back to see the real world that's behind that fakeness that was blinding you. So to take those goggles off is to take the bodies off. Uh, uh, it ain't to pluck your eyes out. There's a reality that ain't being processed by the eyes or the brain. What the eyes and the brain is processing is the simulation, the matrix. We don't see the real world until we get out of the body. And the body is, is what's processing the simulation and bringing in a, 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 this cloaking technology, giving you sun and moon, trees, and basically creation outside. But you only see that via this filtering technology called Joachim and Boaz, left and right brain and the two eyes. Once the true self awaken, it, is, it, it doesn't see the same it sees the truth behind the layering. And uh, basically, when we uh, leave the simulation, is leaving the body, and that which is ejected from the body, what we call the soul or the higher self, the way it exits the earth is at the North Pole, according to the Sumerians. And so what, why I brought that up is because when you look at this cosmology on the right, right here, want... excuse me, I keep hitting play. When you look at this cosmology on the right, right here, this little mountain that we see in the middle of creation, I want you to try to look at that as open curtains. Open curtains. Let me see here. Check it out. What we're calling Mount Maru was called M. Maru City in the Wizard of Oz. Why is the word Maru or Mera, Mary, Mira? Think about it. The word Maru is the word Mira. You got the word Maru in the word Camera. See, the, the C and the S are interchangeable like the word ceiling. So when you say Camera, you're saying Samara or Sumaru, which is a Mira or Maru reality that it, 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 it it's a copy of ours it's a reality within a reality but the more we go toward this core or center realities the the more that it gets more uh realer it, it ain't simulated see basically it's stripping back the veils so the veils, you can, you can rearrange that word as the evils. Each of these simulations were how we get this concept of the seven deadly sins. Um, like I tell you, these seven ancient kings all created their own simulation. And now we got to be born out of them all. Each of the gateways into each of these worlds are what we're calling the seven wandering stars. They call it the seven planets in the Trappist system that they used to call the solar system or the soluring system, the Trappist into the simulation. This is the knowledge that leads us out. Now, why am I talking about the confusion of tongues today? Stay with me for a minute. I want to show you something in the Yoruban cosmology here. You see at the top, there's this gap, this opening in the middle of the universe right here. And that is the same location that I'm telling you is called Eden right here. This little world is at the middle of our world. That's Eden. And the thing that I want to show you is the way that we get into Eden up here, right, is we walk in, inside of those curtains up under it. You see it? that triangle that you see up under Eden or the summit area, some area, you can call this some area, hyperborea or the hyperboloid area. A hyperboloid is the center of a magnet. So the people who said that they're Hyperboreans were saying we're from this area too. Everybody, they had Eden night saying we're from Eden. No one identified by geographic locations. Like and share the video if you think that this is worth 
you know, going viral. I want to share with you that in this Eden paradise or sort of this, this base reality in the middle, there were no languages and it didn't, you don't have no race up there. It's only when you fall out of here that you become a human being and a human being got a race, a nation, a zodiac sign is so much division in creation. You separated by where you're born, when you're born, how you're born, whether you know black, white, but that don't exist in Eden. Remember, we all enter the creation looking the same, and that's a sperm cell. There's no difference, Amona. You show me 10 million human sperm cells, I wouldn't tell you what race they are. And if you show me 10 million human corpses, you wouldn't be able to tell me what race they are. We enter the same and leave the same. We enter as white sparks and leave as a black pile of dust. And that's the Ben Ben stone. So the thing about this pyramid that is uh, 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 beneath Eden is that is the UFO beam. So... Uh, that's the UFO beam that's allowing the people to get beamed up into the mothership. And the mothership is the mother reality or base reality. That's the one that gave birth to all of these, the, the fake shells or hells around it. When you take the word shell and you move the S to the, you get hells. Sheo. So, the, so one thing I want to point out was. You can see in this art that a brother is leaving the simulation. He's leaving up through that, through the, through this uh, black. See this whole little black pole area is your spinal cord and what they mean about the Kundalini rising up the spinal cord and out of the crown chakra. This is happening. In, uh, as as inside of us and outside of us in order to get travel out of the earth you got to travel out of the body that's what i'm saying so when your pineal gland that is located in this underworld right here have a out of body experience or and, and it travels out of the earth right while you're asleep or meditating and it goes up jacob's ladder and it can go as high as it like a rocket how much energy you got to project this a practice so but we all eventually make it out of here through a process of incarnations or out of body experiences what we call in death but the thing that i wanted to point out about all all of this about how this ties into the languages being separated is that like i said and first of all let me just say what i'm saying here like when we get out of the body we can see the uh, curtains opened up at Eden. We can see a big ass beam of light, like a crack in the middle of creation that's in between the sun and moon. You can't see that right now because you're literally, your two eyes of the body, left and right eyes, is calibrated with a dual experience in the world of like sun and moon. The way we see in this world is an illusion is what I'm saying. You don't really have two eyes. You have one eye. We calling that the third eye. But let me show you what I, what I mean here about the UFO ship symbolism. Like and share the video, please. So when they give you the UFO ship, with the light beam beneath it. This the same thing I'm giving you right here. It's cosmology. As I move, see how we get, how we ascend up to Eden is we walk up a spiral staircase that's made out of light. But that's, that light that makes up this Mount Maru or this spiral staircase that lead us into Eden right here, right? That 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 uh uh light that makes that staircase, we can't see that light. You know why? We are that light. What do you mean, Brother Sanchez? 
Let me show you what the spiral staircase is. See, when our kundalini lead, because when we talk about the kundalini rising, the word kundalini is the Hindu word for candle, candle kundalini. Now watch this. The kundalini to the Hindu is a light inside of you, like your soul, your life energy. And that light is in a version of you that is in a underworld simulation. The Hindu say you got seven more births and deaths and that the kundalini rises from one body to the next body. So when we look at this green serpent right here inside of the body, that's symbolic of the soul. And when that leaves the body, it becomes a streak of green light that we're calling the aurora borealis. You become this serpent, which is what Christ and all the other ones was, which now go and wraps itself around the pole. And that's how it gets out of here. So we become this sort of stream of consciousness represented as a green wave. Shout out to Tulane, green wave, baby, college football. But anyway, um, that is the aura, our auric energy being summarized and compressed, meaning that each of these versions of our self is its own aura, right? Let me show you what I mean. But when that version of you is peeled away from the body, right? It's like me blowing the flame off a candle. It is no longer a candle flame, which is a, let me show you what a candle flame is. This is very important, man, with sacred, that I do this with sacred geometry. Because the thing about being, when they said that the people in hell are the wicked ones, the word wicked is dealing with a candle wick. And to be wicked is to be lit. You know what the rapper's telling you to be? Yeah, I'm lit. Because that's the, they talking hell language. Let me show you some. The uh, concept of wicked and wicked and how it, deals with this candle i'm gonna show you some it's because if you look at the candle right the flame of fire is this circle and then it's seated on this line and that's what your human aura is see your body when you were born you were burned you were lit your spark came on like this candle and you literally look like a lit candle which the wick part is the body and the aura around the body is like the fire around the wick. And if you look at the fire flame, it is in layers. It has a, a, a bright white layer in the middle, right? And then it has a blue layer around that and another faint layer around that and more layers around that that get bigger and dimmer leading all the way to the big ass layer that's lighting up that part of the wall. It's a big bubble, but it's coming out in layers just like the universe. So if you think about how our universe is made, right? Let me show that real quick. Let me show that real quick. Watch this. So our entire world is made the same way I showed you where when we journey back to the middle of the earth, we see what's called the burning bush on top of the mountain. They called it Mount Sinai, but that's sand, sand, the sand of AI. When you say Sinai, it's spelled S-I-N-A-I. -I. That's the sand of artificial intelligence. Why? The first form of artificial intelligence was when our ancestors in Eden created the body, created the flesh. What is the flesh? A flash, a, a flash of what? Fire, energy. Your whole life is a light. See, the brightest part of this flame is the part that's seated directly on the wick at the middle. That's the brightest part. So when you look at this candle flame, guess what else you're looking at? The open curtain at the middle of it all, what we call in Maru. See, only a few people gonna get this thing today, man. 
because I ain't really on no surface st type stuff today. Let me show you what this is, an open, you got to look at this different. This is what's at the North Pole, an open curtain. We say it's a mountain, but it's not really a mountain. Yeah, it's a triangle. It looks like a mountain, but really it's an open curtain that leads back to the central self. So let's go back to this cosmology. How do we get up? Excuse me, I keep hitting play. How do we get up here in Eden? You see my mouse on the right? How do we get back home? We got to go toward the center. And the more we journey inward, our pineal gland is waking up. Because it's really what your pineal gland is a whole nother smaller version of you that sleep inside of this bubble. See, inside of this bubble up here, you a baby that's just been born. But like all babies, soon as they come into the world, they go to sleep. And in that sleep, they're dreaming of a lifetime and that little bit of nap. Your whole life down here in creation is just a little nap of a sleeping baby up here at the baby land tower, Babylon tower. See, this is projection into the body, but you're not a body. You're a baby soul and ask God that they're waiting to wake up and for your mama to say, hey, baby, it's your first awakening out of your rebirth into a new world. It's a series of awakenings. V this was one of those awakenings this lifetime but like i said at the middle of our earth where we see this triangle at that's where the truth the light of the true self is coming from and that light is so bright that it is cutting through all the layers of reality and, and layers of the self it's so bright that it now becomes this open curtain in the darkness like i'm showing you with this candle flame See how that looks like an open curtain? That's the, the beam stalk or the obelisk, the George Washington shit that I'm trying to teach you about. Let me show you. Because you know George Washington was a mason too. They had this same knowledge. Why do we see these all over the place? Because this is the lightsaber, the jad pillar to the heavens, the beam me up light up the the inner light of the self that allows us to open back up the veils to get back to the world of being right here you see and this is the open curtains so if you look at what we are the body is the wicked one what is that the one that is on the wick you see this is the phi symbol what am i telling you phi is fire phi is fire I keep teaching this over and over because it's important. Fire is fire. Because when you look at the fire symbol, you're literally looking at the fire symbol, and that's what you are. When they said we're in hell and we're on fire, you don't see what you are. Your aura is literally the fire of a burning man, a dead man walking. Your body is literally the dead soul that is sleeping as God and it went to hell like Jesus did when he was up on Mount Calvary. Remember when Jesus was on top of Mount Calvary, what did he do? He went down into hell to get the keys. You are in hell now getting the keys. Let me show you something. Jesus and Mount Calvary is talking about the Lord. red, excuse me. Jesus and Mount on top of Mount Calvary dying means the real self, which is sleep up here in Eden. Just like the real Neo was actually a version of him that was sleep outside of the matrix, inside of a Babel tower, in, in a little pod, pod. In a pod. That's true, man. This whole tower is a freaking tree of life, meaning... The real you it's human life on this tree being harvested and the version of you that's growing from this tree is the real base reality. You meaning your body was created in Eden, but your conscious ain't in it yet. Why, brother Sanchez? Because they waiting on you to rise up out the body and, and quit being attached to this world. 
you got to reclaim, you got a whole body in Eden like on Demolition Man when they put Denzel Washington them to sleep inside of the little pod and woke them up after a couple million years and they was like, how much time has passed? Because to them, you don't have no perspective of time when you sleep. So you sleep in Eden and in Eden, you don't know that you've been down here in the body for 70 years, 80 years, no matter how long your life was, when you wake up in the base reality, it was just a little eight hour dream or few minutes dreaming, right? The dream of a baby that just was born and he fell asleep. And when he wake up, now he opened his eyes for the first time into his new world. You're a sleeping baby. In, in our base reality in Eden. You haven't even opened your eyes yet to the real world. You're in a dream with your eyes shut. And that's why they said Adam and Eve fell out of Eden. They didn't literally fall. They fell asleep. When you fall asleep, what you do? You lay down in the bed. You fall <laughs> on purpose, though. Like Adam and Eve are the dual energies from Eden that decide to go into the creation as either a man or a woman to fulfill whatever will they wanted to do in the simulation, in the flesh, in the body. This triangle that you see that uh, is above Eden, excuse me, that's below Eden. That's the beam light of how you get out of this joint, man. That's why I keep showing you the UFO ship. So that's the gateway into the base reality. The crazy thing about this is that uh, you can look at this like curtains opening up with a staircase or whatever. You can look at this like a... See, what, what it is is we can't see this split in the middle of the sun and moon because when when you're looking through your two eyes you don't see it's hidden from you that split that we're looking for at the middle of the earth is literally the split in the middle of your brain this light that it's creating a gateway into eden is beyond the visible spectrum of 2020 to the human eyes but not the soul so just like your soul when it when your soul listen your sleeping soul it can't see the sun and moon i'm gonna say that again your sleeping soul in eden it cannot see the sun and moon and creation because it's so high above it. And the light of Eden is so bright that it's overpowering the light of creation below it. Your real soul will never be able to see the sun and moon. Just like your body will never be able to see the open curtains at the North Pole. But your body can see the sun and moon and your soul can't because these are two sets of eyes. When it's time for you to see the open curtains in the middle of the earth, it's going to be when you die and get out the body. That's when you no longer going to see the sun and moon, though. See, when we get out of our body, it's like uh, when you take a picture and paint and invert the color. If the image is black and white, when you invert it, it's going to be white and black. And basically, our reality is inverted once we become spirit. So everything that you're calling light that's around you becomes darkness when you die. You fade to black. And everything that was dark becomes bright as hell, light like a motherfucker. And what that looked like is this right here. Let me show you. This is what we see when we die. Reality around us fades away because the only thing that can see that is your two eyes. And guess what? Them dead. They picking them up off the ground, putting them in a casket. You become this central being that's in between the two eyes. And it sees another reality behind the veil. This is what it sees. It sees a beanstalk leading it back to its original home you finally now can see the mountain of maru or what they're calling the obelisk you won't see that with your two eyes 
You will only see this when you get out your body and read what the sun and moon that's creating the left and right hemisplanes of the earth, that's going to fade the darkness. See, what you call in the light of the sun and moon is really darkness to the soul because the sun and moon blinding it with the simulation. For the soul to get back to the base reality, it has to cancel out the false light and only focus on the true light that's leading it back home. And this is what it sees when it does that, when it get out the body. It's no need for the soul to process the simulation because the thing that it uses to interface with the simulation, it's no longer in it. It has abandoned that thing. That's the body. And the eyes of the soul don't see the same reality as what the body see limited to 2020. See, the body is putting together the simulation based upon its limitations, based upon its only being able to see a certain field of the light spectrum. It will take that limited light spectrum from 2020 or the seven primary colors and it'll just make the best reality that it can out of that but it's way more frequencies and colors to uh, you know but this is the world we make out of our limited sight and this 2020 limited spectrum but once we're no longer limited and we're in the body you the the light your light is so fucking bright that it cancels out the little bit of damn lights of the simulation and when it does that the whole simulation fades to black and the only light that you will be able to see is the true light that leads you back to the true self this is the white light that everybody talking about they seeing at death but death is the darkness they can only see the white think about it they they are now traveling in, 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 in between the sun and moon back home to the place that leads us to Eden. And what I'm saying is this is what this looked like right here. The cosmology of going to that crack in between the brain, which is called the Great Hall of Osiris. But like I said, if you take the word Osiris or Osar and rearrange it, you get Orishas or the auras, all of the fake egos will return home. This is a summoning, right? Your higher self in Eden is, is calling all of its fake selves back home. The God El became these plural deities called Elohim, and that's why you see Vishnu is God in the middle, and of surrounding him are all these other versions of himself. So drop the like and share button, man. I wish we can get more people in the building with stuff like this. You know, when we go real deep and it ain't all messy, you already know how it be. But think about it. When you open up curtains, right, the open curtains look like what? The way we open up the Torah. This is the way we go, but this is what our soul is doing when it leaves the body. It's pushing back Joachim and Boaz like Samson. The word Samson is Mason. If you look at George Washington down there in the bottom right, he's a Mason in the middle of the two pillars. The G is God, which is above him because that's the pineal gland, the true self. When the energy expands at that point, you see through the veil. Reality fades to black. You push back the pillars of the simulation, and this is what we see, the gateway to the other side, which leads out of the simulation and back home. This is the yellow brick road. And this is why Jim Carrey now, when he goes, beams up out of the obelisk right there, he goes beyond the veil. The, the top of the obelisk is sharp because it's piercing through the veil. Is what I'm sharing with you. Let's see if we can get the numbers up, guys. So why do we wear birthday hats? Because the symbol of rebirth is, is really symbolic of us being, when we die, 
we're going to be reborn in the base reality up here. And what that looks like is a soul walking through these curtains. So if you think of a man, right, standing up under some open curtains, he looks like he got on a birthday hat or a Santa Claus hat. Santa is center. When we are at the center point of the universe, we all wear Santa Claus hats, Santa hats. When we're going beyond the veil and leaving the simulation, going back home and we're being reborn back into our base reality, that birth is symbolic of us wearing a Santa hat. Because we going under the curtain and everybody got to put on this Santa hat when they leave the earth because they going up under them open curtains. That's why everybody birthday we put on a cone hat. We put the cone hat on because it's ritual what we doing on the earth to really hide the secrets of we all in a Truman show. And they got us doing rituals to mock the fact that you don't know it's all a game. And, but you so all of the rituals you did in this world, when you make it out of here, you're going to realize they was playing a joke on you. Like, yeah, man, we had you wearing that cone hat and you didn't even know why. It's because it was all a joke, man. Ha 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 ha. The trickster is the devil. That's why he say ha ha ha. But Santa is Satan. And that's why he say ho, ho, ho. Same God. He's the trickster joke. The, he the one that played the, what they call it, dark comedy. You know, you everybody got friends that think certain things are funny, but they really dangerous as hell. Like the white boy that set your shirt on fire and start laughing and you like, bro, that ain't funny. Like this is really one of them kind of jokes to where somebody puts you in a simulation and when you born out of this thing to them, just like the end of the Truman show, they think it's a game. But Truman is like, bro, that shit ain't funny. But everybody laughing like, shut up, nigga. We all went through it. Shut up, man. You know. So. It's and when you realize what you gained. Excuse me. When you realize what you gained from the simulation, you won't regret coming to it. Each, see, I, I, I want to break down to you the title real quick and dry it at home so I can skip around and do more stuff like what I'm doing now, but so it don't look like I'm doing clickbait. So how did we get different languages when the tower was knocked down? What, what we got to realize, though, is that the fall of Babel is the fall of babies. Imagine babies falling from the sky. That's literally, they gave you a movie like that. See, the babies in Eden, when they are born, you know, like, and I went over this uh, uh, in my documentary. You know what I'm going to do? I'm supposed to be playing my documentary while I'm teaching this, and I'm not even playing the thing, and that's why I'm all over the place. I might want to get on track here. But let me just say this before I do. The fall from Eden is literally baby souls that got to rise back up to their true self, right? And um, the reason why the languages were separated is because in Eden, we are one. United, we stand. Divided, we fall. Plato showed you this. Look at Plato's concept of the Big Bang of the universe right here. What is that? A Santa Claus hat. A shaman hat. What is it? Atenism in Egypt. Right here. So what we're saying is that in the top world there's singularity. And in the bottom belief that numbers are created. But right here is zero. Ain't no languages. Ain't no amounts. Ain't no differences. And this world is a bunch of beings that's all the same. They are just pure light beings. But when they fall, when these pure light beings go into a body, guess what they look like? Let me show you.
This is what they look like. All of us are a piece of the original hive mind in Eden, every single human in creation. So let's go back to the cosmology. In Eden is where our mind literally is seated at because the mind don't live in a physical reality. So basically, this arch is represented by two pillars. As you can see, three, one pillar is made out of three, three balls over here and three over here giving you two little curtain, uh, uh, curtain cloths or whatever. But again, they come to a point. Now the thing is that these two pillars are the brain, left, right brain. And in the middle of them is the mind that we can't see. I can see your brain. I can't see your mind because it's in a different dimension, a different layer of reality. But it's that old. It's seated in the brain and it's pulling the strings right here. So this is the mind pulling the neural network, the strings in the brain manifesting its will through the body. This is how thought is processed through the body and we are our thoughts and our thought paradigm and that's why we got to have mind over matter but check this out mind over matter we're looking at it right now the mind exists in eden but your mind it is sleep in eden and when the mind sleeps in eden it goes into a body and falls asleep into creation and as you're waking up up here your life is ending down here. See, everything is polarized. If you're dying down here, you just being born up here. And when you died up here, you was just being born in creation. It's, po it's polarity is here. Time exists down here. Time don't exist up here. Numbers exist down here. Numbers don't exist up here. It's the zero point. Nothing. Only thing exists there is infinity. But guess what? That's just one thing. How can one thing include all things? See what I'm saying? When that one thing expands, we call it creation, which includes amounts and different things and animals and trees. But all of these things aren't different. They're the same source of light from the same place if this make any sense let me let me let me just sum this up so i can play the video which is gonna actually make this more organized um um where was where was i so this is the identity of the soul right here pure light once it goes into a body right and by the way that little world that exists in the middle of our earth that I keep showing you right here, that is the chamber that your pineal gland is in. Your soul never left the tower, which is why the mind is seated on the brain stalk. Everything that's happening in the spiritual realm is happening in the physical realm, but it's layered. It looks different. You see what I'm saying? So basically... Let me go back here. Hold on a second. So in the base reality, hold on a second. I was going somewhere with that. So basically, um, this is the seat of the soul in between your left and right brain on earth. But what I'm saying is when you get out of your body, your consciousness is going to be pulled. Think about this, right? Because this is, you got to realize this. The energy that you feel in your fingertips and in the tips of your toes and on the tip of your flesh. All of that energy that's allowing you to feel, touch with the hands, feet. That's going to be pulled back out of the body when the soul extracts itself from the body. And what that is, is electricity being pulled from the very outer parts of your body or from the, think about this, energy is leaving 
from your skin and building a simulation around the the energy that's forming your body it's coming from the inside out and projecting the body into creation in other words your mind is creating your body and when your mind don't want to create your body no more it's going to stop powering it the same thing that's powering your body is creating your body when that thing leaves your body your body won't be powered no more and it'll fade out of creation it'll phase out that thing which created your body gonna destroy your body and move on to create you over again and over again in different places this mothership is like a ufo ship that finds a earth and then it beams a light down and when it beams that light down it projects a body in the circle that the light make that's you in your own simulation or you with the torus field around you when it's time for that soul which created the body to leave the body it sucks that life force back out the body the body drops down and that ufo ship takes off and then when it get to its next destination it drops the light back down again and project another version of itself in that world then when it's ready to leave it sucks the life back out of it that version drop down that's why they said when you die you rip because this thing is ripping it's in see this is what's happening the real you is up here in asgard but it's agreeing to to expand its energy outward to be to create the body in creation and then to put that energy inside of the body and walk around and live around as a human but when it don't when it's tired of being a human it's gonna pull its life force back up here to the body that's that's its real self think about when you dream right you ever been in a dream and the moment you die the moment you get shot or the moment you fall off that mountain and hit the ground guess what boom you wake up in the bed and you say man i had a bad dream guess what it's polarity law when you die in the dream world you actually awaken in the next world so death in the dream is awakening when you die in your dreams what happens you wake up that's what happens all the time life is but a dream it's a series of awakenings Hindu said when we die and we wake up from this bad dream and everybody got to die. You know why? Because life is a dream. But they didn't tell you what kind of dream. It's a nightmare. It always ends in death. Cancer, fading away. Like this simulation is a horror. Listen, there are many simulations. Think of them like movies. Not all movies got uh good endings this particular simulation or reality this real is r-e-e-l real the sun and moon is running like a film realm it's a simulation real this this see your so like these these roles the souls are playing meant your souls are first of all when revelation talk about the seven seals they're talking about the seven souls. The energy of your God self was chopped up into seven chunks and wrapped up into each one into their own little bubble, into their own little dimension. So these seven seals of God are literally the seven dimensional planes that you exist on and that you got to be born out of. And when we die, that's called a big bang. Boom, we break through one of the seals. The Hindu said it's going to be seven deaths. That seven seals broken and God will be manifested now. Where? Back at his, tr in his throne in the heavens up there. You see it? Why do God got to break the seven seals to regain power uh, over earth? Because the Hindu said we got to ascend up through these seven layers dimensional planes before we can reach the throne 
That's why I made this collage. If you really want a three hour in-depth presentation where I edit it and all that stuff that go into detail, click the link that's pinned to the top of the chat is also in the top of the video description area. Everything I'm teaching you now is research from one of my recent presentations and edited presentations, which is available for you all right now. Please support the research and grab your copy today. We're going to continue to show you what you, why you should download this presentation. The information I'm giving you now is additional information to that. What you're going to download in the new edited presentation is a lot of information that ties into Sumeru being the god Shu and Mary. Shu Mary, Su Mary, which is Nud and Gab, which became the Madonna and Child, Madonna and Christ. You need to download my documentary that I put, a, I spent three, four days editing the thing. All of the collages you seeing, like I, I included them in the bundle. You won't be disappointed and you'll be supporting your boy, man. Real talk. Now check this out. The seven seals are the seven souls. You got seven different layers of yourself. <coughs> Each of these souls are an individual. <laughs> I'm sorry. Each of these souls are an individual unit of consciousness. What do you mean, Brother Sanchez? When you're dreaming, you are another version of yourself with, it, with a mind of its own. That's why the great whore got seven different minds, seven different faces of God. In other words, in each of these universes, you are playing a different role. Sometimes when I'm dreaming, I don't even know who the hell bro Sanchez is. I'm a whole nother version of myself in that dream. And when I wake back up here, I put on the bro Sanchez mask. That's who I am in this universe. Now think about this. What if you was an astral traveler? I want you to just hear me out. What if you were an astral traveler like what our ancestors was? And you were a person that was able to go into any one of your avatars in any one of these universes at any given time. Guess what people will call you? A trickster, a devil. Why? Because you're conscious of the fact that you are playing different roles in these dreams. Think about that. Think about that. There's been time where I've been dreaming. And in my dream, I start lucid dreaming and I'm like, oh shit, I'm dreaming, but I don't wake up. When that happened, I'm a two headed dragon. Like I got two childhood memories. It's crazy because in the dream, I remember my birth date in that universe. In the dream, I remember the hospital I'm born at in that world, the memories I had in that world. But the moment you become lucid, you are now two versions of yourself. You got two childbirth memories. You remember being born in this world where the person sleep in the bed, but you also remember the memory of the guy in the dream. When that happens, which role do you play? There's a conflict now. Am I bro Sanchez or am I Broderick Parry's? Because in some of my dreams, bro Sanchez don't exist. He's Broderick Parry's and he's a whole, he went a whole nother way. 
Brother Sanchez don't exist till I wake up from that dream in this world where I became bro Sanchez. But in the dream, if I realize I'm dreaming and don't wake up, I become two different people in one damn body. People, what if this was to happen seven times? You become this seven headed dragon that I'm showing you here. You become this trickster. Why are you a devil now? Why are you a trickster? Because you're going into these different worlds conscious of the fact that you're playing one of your many seven roles. While there may be other people in that world that ain't woke up yet. They don't know that they playing a role. Think about it. If I'm dreaming right now, and I know I'm dreaming, but everybody in the dream don't know they dreaming. They think it's real. I'm the one that's tricking everybody. Because I, if I walk around that dream saying, listen, y'all, I'm two different people. Just like in this world, the sleep folks going to say, boy, you done lost your mind. If you walk up to your mama in a dream and say, mama, I'm dreaming, and there's another you in another world where I'm sleeping in bed, you know what your mama tell you in that dream? Boy, you done lost your damn mind. Get out of my face. <laughs> You'll look like a crazy man in that dream trying to tell folks, hey, y'all, I'm from another world, and I'm dreaming here, and I got two bodies, and one of them sleep right now. Man, they'll put you in a crazy house in that world, in that dream. So now that will become a secret you got to keep. And you will become just like the people we bad at, just like the people we talk about. We say, why are they keeping a secret from us? Because they don't want to look crazy. If they told the world the truth, the average person will tell these folks in power, <laughs> you're going to lost your rabbit ass mind. If, if these celebrities told you the truth about reality. If these witches and warlocks told you the real truth about this reality, you'll just call them crazy like they did Jesus Christ, man. You're going to end up being an archon yourself. That's what I'm telling you. Because when you regain this power and start traveling through these dimensions, Talking about it going to make you look stupid and it's going to get you targeted by the damn algorithm and the non-player characters and killed just like Jesus. See, they're going to eject you out of the simulation just like you're going to get kicked out of the class if you're telling all the answers. This is a test. Everybody got an awakening on their own. So that's why the people that's teaching the language of trying to wake people up, they can't wake them up. They can only point them the way, but they can't like I can shake you, but I can't wake up for you. I can smack you and pour water on you. But if you don't wake up, you don't wake up. You got to wake up. I can shake you and do all that, but I'm not waking you up. I can influence your awakening. I can point you in the right direction, but you got to walk the path. What Morpheus told Neo, all that good stuff. He basically said the same thing. So uh, the seven seals of God are the seven souls of God, and each one of them got to be broken. These souls are like eggs, and the word egg is related to the word ego or ego. They are the seven egos or false personas that God fell into, and he got to realize he is not the body. So... Once he do that, he will break seven eggs or break seven seals. And cracking the egg is for resurrection. Remember that. So it's cracking the seals. It's the same concept told in different ways. So again, the serpent that's wrapped around a tree is the kundalini energy returning home. The word aurora is the word aura. When you see, check this out, man. Right now, right? 
your aura exists around the body. Let me show it to you. This is deep what I'm about to show you. Right now, your aura exists around the body. But when the body is gone, it's like me. It's like a candle without a wick. The flame turns into smoke. And it turn and the smoke don't look like a candle flame. The smoke look like a stream of energy. And that's what your spirit is when it leaves the earth. Your spirit becomes a spiral, spirit spiral, which wraps itself around the tree. And that's a soul going up to the, uh, uh, stairway. So in the hospital, they get, they talk about a green line. When that green line go flat, they say you dead. But when the green line ain't flat, they say you alive. Why? This green line means that the spirit is still in the body. What do you mean, Brother Sanchez? Check it out, man. Here go to Kundalini. That's the soul in the body. When that leaves the body, they show a flat line. That means the snake or the spirit has left the body. When the spirit is in the body, they literally show it on the radar right here. But think about this now. When the spirit leaves the body, it becomes a stream of green energy that now going wraps itself around this pole area to return back home. So the serpent on the tree is the kundalini going uh, energy ascending up the stairway to heaven which is the spinal cord the central nervous system the jad pillar to bust out of the body at the crown chakra that's how you get out the body who is you the serpent you're not the body man so when i'm saying you i'm referring to the energy in you and that's why the sumerians called themselves the sumerians or the Hyperboreans or the Lemurians because they didn't identify with the body. That's the straw man. And when you identify with the body, that's how the government is able to take your power from you and give you the all caps name. My Morris brothers know this ties into spirituality. This was started by the church. When they got us identified by the body, this works against you in the court of law and everything, man. You're not your body. When they ask you where you live at, you're supposed to say in my body. No, what's your address? See, if they would have asked one of the ancestors that, they would have said my address is not of this world. And ain't that what Jesus said? When they was asking Jesus where the hell he from and what's his address and shit, Jesus was saying I'm from a kingdom that's not of this world. And people were saying, you're a crazy motherfucker. You stupid, Jesus. <laughs> but this is what all our ancestors were saying, the same shit Christ was saying. All of us knew that we were Christ. Didn't Christ say, ye are gods? Christ was telling everybody, y'all are gods, and y'all come from the kingdom that I come from, which is called Kinger, which means the land of the noble lords or the land of the gods. This was called Olympia to the Greek people. Why? Because this is where we exist as God, the higher self. In other words, the part of you that know you can always be a better person and making you check yourself and be better, that's the, the real you up in Eden summoning your energy up the spinal cord. The real you is up here in Eden calling out to the fake, the, the fake you to submit its energy to the Lord, like we say in church, to the Lord on high, to give up the ghost like Christ did on Calvary. He had to die. Because all of these versions of God in the creation are false ego versions that's not his real self. Each one of them got to die and give up the ghost. And death just don't mean I got hit by a car or I died. Death means when you wake up and realize I'm not really bro Sanchez. I'm playing a role. 
See, when I'm when you lucid dreaming and somebody come up to you in a dream and they say, hey, Broderick, you know, you're a great dentist. And if I'm not lucid dreaming, I think that I'm a dentist named Broderick. But the moment I start lucid dreaming, I realize not only am I a dentist named Broderick, I'm a sacred geometry teacher named Bro Sanchez in a whole nother world. And now both of these versions is right here in the dream in one spot. That's lucid dreaming. You are a double headed dragon. You getting it, but not quite. You learning how to juggle. And if you can juggle these two heads, eventually you will learn how to juggle three heads, four heads. See, we are jugglers. That's what you see this Shiva goddess doing. She's a big goddess in the middle, but around her are a bunch of small copies of her making a circle. She's juggling all these versions. And the greatest jugglers, I learned how to juggle in high school. You start off with two objects, and you go to three and four. The soul is a juggler. And I'm going to show you what it looked like when a person is juggling, right? Watch this. When a person is throwing all that stuff around their head like that, this is what it looked like. You see that? You are juggling. But you're a baby juggler. You get, they gave you one ball. And they said, listen, just throw that up and down. Because I don't know if y'all noticed. When you go to class to learn how to be a juggler, which I did, and I still know how to juggle a little bit, you got to keep doing it. But when you first start juggling, they literally give you one object to throw up and down for a minute, and then they give you two. Just imagine your one version of yourself in his world is me giving you one ball saying, hey, just throw that up and down and catch that person. We'll give you two later when you get good at the one. And we give you another ball when you gradually. That's what this chakra system is. So this person here, when you fully activate all seven of your chakras, you, you look like this, which is what the Indian feather hat was all about. You know how the Indians wore a feather hat? The feathers are the rays of light, which is emitting from all the cells. The shot is coming from the central self. <laughs> this the Indian hat. And this is the, the chakras going around the body in the solar system form. You are the sun in the middle of your own universe. And all of these different versions of yourself are gateways into other universes that will land you in a whole nother body in that world where that's another you there. So then this now is, becomes this steering wheel. And it's like this person is a god in the middle of their own reality up in Eden. And they are projecting themselves down into creation. And this steering wheel appears in front of them. And what this steering wheel is, is seven gateways that, is form, that are in rotation. And those seven gateways become Venus, Mercury, Mars, and our sky, the, no matter what simulation we in. And those seven wandering stars are always going to orbit around the earth. They told you they orbiting around the sun, but what they orbiting around is this right here. Hold on. Those seven planets, Mercury, Mars, all of that, is orbiting around the sun, which is the sand, the C-E-N, the root word of central, central. Let me show y'all something real quick. I'm giving you Sumerian spirituality right now, and if you like what I'm doing, hit the like button to show me that. If you like what I'm doing, hit the button to show me that. Check it out. 
our soul system or solar system, right? The sun, this is fake right here. This sun right here is literally your pineal gland. And all of the planets are going around you. See, they killing, they was killing people for this. Why you think Christ was put to death? See, the word Christ is the word crease. Christ was personifying a crease in the middle of the earth, which is why he said, I am the way. I am the truth because the truth is the base reality. Christ on top of Mount Calvary is him personifying this split, this crease. Let me go this right here. Christ said, I am the light. And the light, it, it pierces through reality. It makes the world around you fade to black. You no longer see the simulation. And once we become blind to the simulation, our spiritual eyes awaken. This is the third eye opening up. You know, the reptilian slit. Listen, man, you don't be scared of this eye because this eye right here, when Christ said, I am the light, brother, that's the vesica Pisces. It's the reptilian eye. The vesica Pisces is the reptilian eye. Jesus is a serpent God. Brother Sanchez got some eye candy for you. You see, Jesus is the light that is blasting up out of the slit. You see, this represents a crack in the middle of creation. And Jesus said, I am the light bursting up out of that crack. The name Christ is crease, crease. He's personifying a split. He's saying, I'm the light. You got to go through me, through me, like going through curtains. And I'm going to show you something else if you think I'm playing. You know, Christ with his arms open uh, is plagiarization. They get that right from a North American God called Camasots. Let me show him to you. I ain't going to bullshit you. Hold on. I, I, I got this. I, I, I want to show you this. Here it is. They turn. See, the word Torah is the word Taurus. The Taurus field is what I'm teaching you about right now. So they turned it into a book that opens up like curtains. You see what I'm saying? So Christ is crease and he's personifying a split that's in between the two pillars. Like I'm showing you everybody on this collage doing. Every single person on this collage is personifying this true self that exists in between the sun and moon. And this base reality that I keep showing you. Even Morpheus showing you that. Because remember... You are already born into the blue pill. That's the matrix. We all take the blue pill. When you take the red pill, you now take them both. You born into the lie and you wake up to the truth. The combination of the red and the blue creates purple, which is royalty. That's the third eye that leads us out of here. The word pole is the word pull. See, Neo is the one. Remember Neo the one? Christ represents the one too. And the one is literally a line. The true version of yourself is a mummified version that's waiting to get up and eating. Like I told you, like on Demolition Man. And when I'm talking about a mummified version of yourself that's wrapped up, um, the Taurus field is the real secrets of mummification. The wrapping up the mummy is right here, man. When they talking about wrapping up the mummy and all that so that the, the Pharaoh can live forever. That's literally the simulation and why we are immortal beings. That's why we are immortal beings. Let me show you what I'm talking about, though. I want to go deeper with this. Check it out. 
This is what the mommy concept is all about. See, we learned how to teleport, how to travel, time travel, and go to different worlds. And to get to certain, like, let's say you want to project from one world to another one. You may have to pass through a world to get to another one. And that's why we say that the earth is just a pass through realm. See, what happened was when they unlocked your energy in Eden, it started off with a big bang. It started off like the Bible, which you getting kicked up out of Eden. You know why? Because when, when, when conception take place in Eden, deep into this. Remember, man, life is an explosion. And so when your conception began in Eden, your immaculate conception, your energy, you being an infinite being, all that energy when it was first conceived, you were a big bang, boom. That explosion of energy was turned into the light of your conception when it landed into the creation. Because everything is as above, so below. Let me show you. I'm going to show you your sperm, the sperm cell. Look. <clears throat> this is what's happening to us right now. When they said we're climbing the stairway to heaven, you were a seed with a stem attached to it. That's what the sperm is. And it rolls up from the ground, from Sheol, from the earth god, Gab, just like any other tree or plant. You are a seed that rolls up from the ground. And you're still rising up. You're just changing forms as you do it. Because this pyramid that you see sucking the man up, that is you climbing the stairway to heaven through incarnations. What do you mean, Brother Sanchez? I'm going to take my time today, right? And I'm going to show everything I'm saying because I don't want to, I want to be thorough. Watch. Hold on a second. Hold up. I just forgot what I was. Here's what I'm showing you. The stairway to heaven is basically the entire earth uh, uh, multiverse simulation. You see it? See, the concept of being born again and dropping a person down into the water and picking them back up, that's our whole journey in the simulation. The ancestors are overlords. Once you became a soul in Asgard, your initiation process was just like Jesus. See, when Jesus was born in heaven, God sent them down to the earth before he can reclaim his throne in heaven. Christ dying on Mount Calvary is literally talking about you as a baby sleep up here on that mountain. You were put to death on a mountain, on a cross. And what that is, is the spirit sleep inside of the brain. Look, Moses, rep look at this collage, man. Just look at it while I grab something to drink. Because I've been talking a lot and I, I, I got to play the video. This going to be a long stream. I got a lot to teach. But everything I'm teaching, you can get it in a more organized and edited form with music behind it and all the good uh, eye candy, right? By clicking the link that's pinned to the top of the chat or that's in the video description area. Check out my new edited presentation. You won't be sorry, man. I've been in a lab researching and I'm finna share it, be, be sharing that research with you. It's Friday night. Y'all ain't got nothing to do, man. Let's see if we can get 1K viewers. We need 20 more people in the building to get our quota of 1,000. Let's put the word out that we going in over here and get the people in here. I'll be right back uh, to, to finish this collage. I'm just grabbing something real quick.
We gonna get it in. We gonna get it in, man. With your boy today. And it's Friday. I got time. Let me light an incense and we finna hop back on it. Hold up. Make sure y'all check that link out, man. Check me out, man. Check out the link that's pinned to the top of the chat. It's also in the video description area. I, I've been working on that. I put a lot into it. It's a whole bundle. Come with slides and all. Check that out. You won't be sorry. Now, <clears throat> let's continue. Hold on a second. So, listen, fam, when they talk about Jesus in between the two thieves, the two thieves are the left and right brain. Those are pulling the energy from the soul. The soul is dead as long as it's in the body. You're a quote unquote dead man walking. This God that we call Christ He's literally a dead man walking since the moment he was born. He knew he was going to have to die. He knew his fate. But the story of you being a dead man walking or a man that's condemned to death or hell was a God called in zombie, meaning a walking dead man. All right. A walking dead man. Let me show you. This was the uh, old, one of the oldest gods in Africa. His name was Nzambi. N-Z-A-M-B-I. Nzambi. And that is the African word for zombie. And it tell you right here uh, to check out the Congo language because the word zombie is an African word. Why? Because religion started in Africa. Freemasonry started in Africa. Why are we bringing up Freemasonry with religion? All religion is based around the Hiram Abiff ritual of life and death and re resurrection. All the gods are embodying the concept of resurrection. All of these gods are spirits that can't die. Or, or like zombies. You see here the word zombie come from the word in zombie. And what I'm telling you is the the first two words on there is Nizza Nazi. I ain't gonna go into that because the the the, the deity that they was calling a in Zambi was symbolized by a green spiral. What is the green spiral? That is the serpent going up the doggone Mount Maru spiral staircase. People worship Jesus as before Christianity. Listen, watch this. Before Christianity, people still worship a deity on a cross. But what was the deity on a cross that Moses and them worshiped? It was a serpent on the cross. They don't want you to know that Christ was a serpent. Christ was the devil. Christ was the devil. Christianity come from Satanism. I know you don't like what I'm saying, but check this out. Watch this. Here go one of the earliest pictures of the devil. Not the first, but one of them. And this from a book called Paradise Lost. And you know that's a classic. And this image of the devil is a very viral one because of Paradise Lost. It's actually one of the books used in Satanism by occultists to talk about the paradise that we lost in Eden. Because of the serpent, which is the Kundalini. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> if you think about it, people look at this image, and if you're a Christian, it ought to look familiar. Watch this. Watch this. I don't got to talk. I can show that Jesus is the devil. Now, here go Jesus on the cross. And as he's on the cross, guess what? His, there's a sky. The sky opens up. The sky opens up above Jesus as he's on that cross. You see that? 
it, this artwork is older than me and you, man, with the sky opening with him on the cross. But check this out. Jesus is on Mount Calvary in between other dudes that's suffering and the sky is open above him with his arms open. What, don't this look familiar to y'all? This is a picture of the devil in Paradise Lost. Why are they the same? Oh! Why are they the same? Jesus is the serpent that was lifted up. They keep recreating the Kundalini God. I keep showing you Satan and Christ was on top of the same mountain. They're one and the same. In fact, there was another God called Aten or Aten in Egypt. And he, 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 he's another form of this same God too. They recreating the wheel. Aten is Satan. The garden of Eden is literally the garden of this dude, Aten. Why? Because we're in his simulation, man. It said that there were seven ancient Babylonian kings, each one of them got their own tower. So the whole thing about these towers all around the world, these little phalluses or obelisks, is seven of these towers um, on a spiritual level. But they making them symbolic with the seven major nations of the world having their own obelisk. That's a galactic federation. See, if you look at the God Aten, he's got his arms open just like Christ with the sky open. And, and, and he's in between the two pillars that he's holding in his hand. Those are the, remember when Morpheus had the two pills in his hand, the red and blue one? This is where they get it from, fam. Those two pillars open up the sky vault, and that's why they was able to lead a matrix through Morpheus. Why did they call him Morpheus? Because you got to transform. This is transformation. You got to morph, morph into something different. People, life is about metamorphosis. You used to be a little swimmer called a sperm cell. Now you're a human. What are you going to be after this? You ever heard of the mighty morphin power rangers? <laughs> That's literally you and me, damn it. You can't really call me a human. I'm a god. Can't really call me a god. I'm a human. Well, shit, I'm a shapeshifter. I'm a paradox. I am what I am. You see why he said it now? The only thing that God can say, knowing that I'm all things, is, hey, man, I am whatever I am. Meaning, whatever I'm manifested as at the moment, that's what I am. But I'm many things. Like, that's the, that's the best explanation for God. And if you think about this, right? All of this symbolism with Aten with his arms open, with the sky open. Same thing with Christ. Same thing with the devil. But I'm about to blow you away with this, though, because what if I told you the same thing with you? Oh, my God. I can't make it up. Watch this. Let's cut your brain open. Look at what's inside of your brain. People, doctors, have been cutting people's heads open for years. And they used to torture people in these houses and orphan children. They would literally cut their heads open to try to study this power that's in between the left and right brain. That's the seat of God. So when you look at George Washington... Look at that G. You see that G? That's the sky vault open. You see, there's a hole in the middle of your brain. And what scientists know is that when they cut the brain open, they don't see nothing right there. It's just empty as hell. But all of the energy that's influencing your body is coming from right there. Did you hear what I just said? If you look at this picture of the brain cut open there's literally a little man inside of your head that you're calling the mind but that's really the man
the mind is the man. And guess what? Man ain't got shit to do with the body. When the Bible refers to man, it ain't dealing with the female or the male. It's dealing with the spirit of the species, which has no sex. So when, whenever they refer to humans as man, they ain't being sexist. They're not calling women males. They're saying that we are the mind or the man. The word mind, man. This man inside of our head with these big ass boots on, right? They did a ritual and it went over y'all head. You know why it go over your head? The crown chakra is over your head. And all of the doggone symbolism that the controllers use to symbolize the way out the matrix, it just go over your head if you sleep. Now, most folks don't know what these big ass boots mean, but it mean the same thing with Astro Boy. That's the one flying through the clouds with the big boots on. The brain is the cloud space, man. Check that out. This looked like a little dude with big old boots on flying over the clouds. Look at him. This is Astro Boy. He's in all of us. He's traveling the heavens through the many versions of the self. He's traveling the universe through his many avatars and he can hop out of one and go into the other one and pull the strings on it. See, they tell you about this North Pole God named Santa or Center and Santa got on big black boots. Look at this dude right here. And Santa is pulling the strings with the reindeers. Why? Each of them reindeers are all of your avatars, all of your souls. Here goes Santa right here with his strings and his Santa hat on. See, that light coming from the center is one version of you coming from Polaris, but it's tethered to all of your fake versions. It's tethered to your, like Santa with his reindeers. He's at the center with a lifeline that goes to all the seven of his different false selves. And this is what Santa looked like at the reins. Plato's universe. You see it over here on the right? Because Santa is center. And he's traveling the heavens with these strings that's connected to all the rain deals and stuff. Santa is center. Is you. Told you Joker is Joker tricks the ha 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 ho ho ho. You played this joke on yourself. You're going to be mad at ourself when we wake up. The big red boots, just like all of the other rituals, if when you think about it, it's kind of deep. Because there's a group of people that know the secrets and know the way out, but they can't tell it to you. They can only show it to you. And the Bible said those with eyes will see. And those without eyes, they got to keep reincarnating. It ain't that these, I don't think that these people are just evil, a lot of them. To me, I think there's workers of light too. Like a lot of these people, They'll show you this shit in codes is symbolic. And the more you see it in multiple lifetimes, you will catch on like what I'm doing right now. I'm able to put it all together. See, when we see Jesus mounted up on top of Calvary, that's your soul inside of the dome, inside of your brain. And we see the sky opened up above Jesus when he on the cross. And you see that hole right there? That hole is the sky opening up. That's the way that he get out the body. That's the way that that little man get beamed out, just like Jesus resurrected on the cross. So Jesus with the sky open is representing the mind inside of the brain. 
And as you can see, the color of the sky is the same color as your brain. With the pineal gland, with the gateway to heaven open right there so that your soul can lead the body. That's why they said an open mind is a gateway to heaven. That's, in, that's one of my quotes. People with their mind closed, they, they'll never make it out. Check this out. This is the not, I just gave you so many Jews like Christ being put to death and resurrecting is literally your journey in the flesh on earth. We all are Christ performing our Hiram Abiff ritual. Let me, let me kind of clear this scream up a bit and I'm going to go deep with y'all. I ain't through. I'm not through. So, when they said Jesus represent the one, the Elohim is the plural concept, the one God, El, is the singular concept. He exists in the middle at the very top. This little line, that is the number one, the one. And from the one becomes many. This singular God named L, that's a lowercase L. This is the phi symbol that I keep showing you, phi, which is Gaia, which is Taurus energy, the bull. The ethereal flame right there. So here it is right here, another form of phi. So you can see the cosmology associated. This is what optimism is all about. So there is one version of you at the middle of the earth and surrounding that version are many false versions. And that one version of you at the North Pole, it can't wake up to all of its energy returns back home. That's why they said Jesus is in between the two thieves. Because the two thieves is taking his energy from him. That's the left and right brain. Your soul is not the body, but as long as your soul is in the body, it cannot stand up. And, and in order for your soul to stand up, the body got to fall down. Your body is like a puppet connected to strings. Let me show you some. Here go your body right here. When they said that Jesus had to carry a cross, and Jesus said, it ain't my will being done because Jesus is a puppet. You're doing the will of your higher self. You don't have free will. You are bound to the will of your own thoughts in your mind. And that's the higher self. Ain't no free will. You are your thoughts. You're going to submit to your thoughts, which is why if you don't like your behavior, you need to change your mind, man. See, human behavior ain't nothing you can cover up with makeup and clothes and fits with a good outfit. That your behavior and actions are a direct result of your mental paradigm. And if you want to change your behavior, you got to master the mind. Some people ain't got no control over their own body. So they puppet is doing things that they don't want it to do. And that's why the Hindu said you shouldn't have no regrets. Why? Because if you're living from the mind over matter, you controlling your body with every action you make in this specific with intent behind it. You're being you got purpose behind your action versus just a person who's puppet. They ain't even tapped it to their mind yet. Jesus had a purpose with all of his actions because he knew he had a will and prophecy that had to be fulfilled. If I'm projecting a reality in my mind of a future that I know that's going to manifest my greatest version, every action I'm getting up taking every day is the will that I'm cement to of my higher self. And I don't care what my dick telling me, what my stomach telling me. I see this grand version of myself upstairs in my mind. And that's what's summoning me higher up to think above all of my 
lower things that would keep me manifesting in the world. So um, my body is literally a servant to the man upstairs, and I'm not talking God, I'm talking my higher self, the one pulling the strings in between the brain that I'm showing here. Once you get in tune with your heart and mind, your heart will show, will, will, will show you what thoughts, what thought paradigm is healthy for you, the program you need to be running, and day-to-day -day actions on how you need to move to manifest your greater self. And this dude upstairs will now get control over his puppet. But see, if he ain't controlling that thing, somebody else is. And that's literally the TV and everybody else. The idol worship. An idol mind is the devil's workshop. If you don't pull your strings, somebody else will. They'll press your buttons and pull your strings. So check it out, right? The word God is the word geode. What the hell is Sanchez talking about? Check this out, dude. Why do you think they said God is Saturn? This is a geode. Ain't it beautiful? But guess what? The earth the ge is dealing with geography. What is our earth, though? Our earth is a big-ass geode. And they personified the earth as a god, a geode, a ge god, god, earth god named Saturn or Gab. Christ, you see, this earth is a g God called Gab that's laid out, you see, and the magnetic ley lines, you know, that I know I'm hopping all over the place. I know all of this is my research that I've been doing that I want to share with you in, a, in, in no particular order. But these ley lines that are coming from the center that is earth knowledge. Just look at this. Look at your brain. If you cut the brain open, you will see that the earth is a big ass brain with all of the ley lines being the neural networks that lead to the pineal gland, which is the place called pineal pinnacle. You see, these are the ley lines going up as they go toward the center and down as they go out, making a cone trapping us in a cone and and you study a geode you literally study in god and the knowledge of the simulation god geode but the thing that i'm showing you here though is what's so deep about this is samson pushing back the two pillars is when this guy decides he don't want to be in the body no more and he's just he dropped those those He's holding on to strings that's controlling the puppet. And when he let that thing go, your body going to fall down and you're going to realize, guess what? You're this little dude. You're not the body. This little dude is little. Why? Because he come from a little place up here. Look, this is his home. Our base reality is a very small and dense world. And these fake worlds that's around it are big ass, hollow gas giants of no sustenance. And when I say no sustenance, I mean it in all ways. The people in those worlds, they have no sustenance. Ain't nothing deep about them. They all about clothes, food. They do things like say, well, what you ate today? And like my post, they post pictures of they fucking dinner and, and them hunting animals and just very what we call worldly lower vibrational things. Then there's another group of people in these lower worlds. They always talking about these other worlds and higher worlds that's above this world. And everybody in these lower worlds laugh at them and call them tenfold hatters. And they say this fool talking about other worlds and shit. This nigga talking about us being little people from the North Pole. Ha ha ha. That's stupid. Because there's no sustenance here. There's the light as it 
travels from Eden, it gets dimmer and dimmer. And the word dimmer is the word dumber. In other words, you got to really have your eyes open to tap into the source light if you are being that's down here. And if you are one of those beings, they call you a God, which is the word guide, because you are the one that can lead others back home. It's that simple. We made it so deep. Baptism and being born again is literally you being risen up through the stairway to heaven. Our ancestors are the ones that put us into the simulation. They did it so that we can activate our God self. You can't understand up if you don't learn about down. If I tell you to jump right now, you're going to bend your knees down and go up. This earth is like a trampoline. In order for us to get back to our true heaven, we got to jump down onto the trampoline and get some tension. And then that thing going to pounce us back up high, just like a trampoline. So what happened was when our soul landed into the body, this brain became like a trampoline or a net system to catch it. See, we fell from Eden. All right, we fell from Eden up here. And we were little bitty miniature Smurf gods. You know how they got the Smurfs living in a snow globe? That's our true home, man. So here it is. When we fell from the snow globe up here, we landed inside of the body. The body caught us during our great fall from Eden, and it cushioned us. It stopped the fall to save you. And how that look is like you falling on a cloud or you falling on a bunch of cotton balls. You falling on the brain. Look at this. When, the, when that little man fell out of Eden, he fell on the cushion on the brain right there. And he landed right there in the body on a safe little net. But just like a dude that's tight roping, right? When he, when he fall on that net beneath him, guess what, though? When he fall, that thing on a, like a trampoline, he going to press all the way down, all that energy and tension, and it's going to shoot his ass up. And he going to have to bounce a couple of times to even out. So what happened was when this little guy fell into the body, he fell all the way into the body. Just like you pressing your weight all the way into the middle of a trampoline and you will create this big tension point in the middle. That's called Sheol. Check this out. Let me show you. When the soul fell into the body, it's like somebody falling into the middle of this trampoline. The tension made it create this big hole or crater in the middle of the trampoline. And that's the hole that you see in the middle of the brain. That's the deepest point in our skull. Ain't no deeper point than that. All of the tension leads there, just like all of the ley lines lead to the middle of the earth. At the middle of the earth, it's the deepest hole and the tallest mountain. What do you mean, Brother Sanchez? Watch this, man. Think of a volcano. A volcano is a hole and a mountain at the same time. It's a paradox. Because if you dig a hole, you make a mountain. And, and wherever you pile the dirt up, that becomes a mountain, and then you'll have a hole next to it. You can't have a hole and a pile in the same space without it being a volcano. That's a paradox. And wherever a paradox exists at, 
it allow energy to be transported from two dimensions, which is why volcanoes allow gases from the bottom depths of the earth that would never be able to make it to the surface. They allow as a gateway from those deep pits and chambers for that gas to come out into the, the realm above. Just like the pyramid at the North Pole allows as a transport point for your soul to leave. Does that make sense to y'all? Drop one. Drop a one. Because that's the paradox at the center of the earth. You got the deepest pit leading to hell and the highest ladder leading to heaven. And it's making a diamond. One leading down and it's like a tunnel spiral where people being going to hell and then one is a mountain going up the weather at this one point out in the middle of the earth traffic going up and down let me do something real quick yeah drop a one if y'all resonating with, with what i'm showing So the pyramid with the light at the top is what I'm showing here. It's the dome, the skull with the pineal gland. It, it's the light of the soul that's projecting the body as a hologram into the hollow sphere. When that light leaves the body, the body fades to black and fades out of reality and your world fades to black. You exit the simulation. Other souls keep projecting this world from, from their own center. Everyone is creating their own version of the simulation and connect them together online, like I said, like Call of Duty. Everyone got their own TV, own console, but when we go online, we share one space and go online together. When a player leaves the Call of Duty game, we don't see his avatar no more. It lead a stage. This is a simulation. So think about it, right? You got George Washington standing on the Masonic checkerboard, and his feet are in a 45-degree angle. Check that out. George Washington's feet are in a 45-degree angle. Why? Look at the inside of your brain. Why is George Washington holding a knife and wearing black? Because this God was called the Reaper, the Ripper. He's the one that rips through the veil like you see this Egyptian God so care doing. That God in the bottom right corner, that is an Egyptian God called Seeker or so care. He represents your wandering soul in the body, the little dude in your brain. When he leaves the body, it's the, the black crow that leaves Noah's ark. See, when Noah sent the black bird out of the ark and the white one came back, that's this bird so Carol Horace the falcon is the black bird. But the white bird, that's the uh, higher self and lower self is all it is. Yin and yang. Why is George Washington feet in a 45 degree angle? Because if you look at the little dude inside of your brain, his feet is at a 45 degree angle. And if you look at the inside of that dome right there, all of these triangles are at 45 degree angles. Mm. Why is George Washington standing on top of a checkerboard? Because that represent the brain pattern. The checkerboard is the brain. You see this pattern that the brain makes? So this little guy is standing on top of a checkerboard with a 45 degree angle on his foot. And look at George Washington. He's in between two pillars, Joachim and Boaz. And he got a little hole, which is the sky vault, the God. Why is that G right there? Because his true body is up there asleep. His God body is in that little 
portal, which leads back to the base reality. You see? He's called the Ripper, and he wears all black. This was also called the Samurai. Why am I talking about a Samurai? Because the Samurai is the word Sumeru. The ninja, the samurai, the witch, Maru is Mary. All of us are a, this dark entity, what they call it, the reaper. So like I said, the samurai was basically identifying himself as his base, his true version, his God body, which is this black hole at the middle of the universe, like I said. That's the portal up out of here. And that's the beam stalk that leads us back to the base reality. Why did they all wear all black? Why do we wear all black when we die? Why do we wear all? Because we become the reaper. The word reaper is the word ripper. We, don't want, we, we dress like the samurai whose spiritual system was called Bushido which is a Asian form of the burning bush, Kabbalism, and the seven hermetic principles. The samurai is a spiritual deity when you look it up. Today, when you watch movies, they want you to think that the samurai and the ninja is some dude in the jungle with all black on throwing stars. That ain't what it is. The star was the same star of Christ meaning your portal in the sky, your crown chakra, the sky vault that you see this God busting through. Why does the ninja wear all black and he got a star? Look at George Washington. All black with the, st the star is a stir. The word star is stir. The witches got a stick in their hand and they're stirring up a brew pot. But that ain't got nothing to do with some people on earth. That got something to do with this cosmology with the Virgin Mary that's creating the, the, the womb that allow us to be born again into the base reality. The ninja star is basically the black hole sun. It's Polaris. It's the, the, the Nagini star. The word ninja it's just an Asian word for Najini, Nagini, genie. And these serpent people identified themselves by their soul and not their body. They were sovereign. They, if you would have asked our ancestors, where you from? They would have pointed up at the sky and said, we're from the heavens. We from the stars. Why you think we talk about fallen angels? We look up in the stars and we say, I wonder if there's any life out there besides humans. Man, when the ancestors look up at the stars, they said, listen, we are the stars. We are every last one of them stars you see up there. And we're projecting ourselves down. Each human is a star in the heavens. They got you thinking that the only stars are the ones on TV and in the rap game. Every last one of y'all are a star that's shining and we all are significant, goddammit. Got these stars thinking that they the only goddamn celebrity. The word celebrity means celebrate. When you wake up in the base reality, all of the ancestors gonna celebrate your awakening. When you make it out the matrix, man, everybody is a celebration, a celebrity. When you get out the simulation, we're going to throw a party for you. On the other side, man. And, and guess what's so crazy about it, yo? Your energy got to reach a point where the knowledge is power to where this awakening expands like you will get so much knowledge I, I swear yo life won't even be as fun to you no more even when you on vacation you will be trying to teach and figure shit out and talk about deep shit you will realize you're lonely even though you surrounded by people man you know why 
because you ain't your body. And everybody in this world only want to talk about shit that governs the body. Hey, girl, what vacation you went to last year? What's your favorite food, favorite color, favorite clothing brand? What's the, the stats to the game or the basketball scope? See, the moment you go up in the room talking about, hey, man, I wonder if there's a multiverse. I wonder about beyond this world. I wonder about the soul. They're going to say, bro, ain't nobody trying to hear all that deep shit, bro. Come on now, bro. You blowing my high with all that deep shit. And then when you try to go into it, they might say, man, you don't know everything. And we ain't meant to know everything, bro. We trying to talk about the game last night. See, everybody got to reach a point on their own time where the, the knowledge make you not fit in no more. And that's when you realize you go to busting up out this bitch like Sakar, like Samson. This, your knowledge have grew you to a level now. This world can no longer amuse you. So you have expanded now. You've gained access to the next world or what they call the Netherlands. Now, if you research the Thule Society, the word Thule just mean the northernmost most part of the earth. That's the summit area. Or the place in the Bible called Pineal, the pinnacle area. You know, we could do this all day. Hyperborea. You know, so I want to share with you that the samurai is just another word for Sumerian. The Sumerians were called the black headed people. You know why? Because they were all black just like Jews do today. You know the Jews up in New York with the all black on with the black top hat? Put, watch this. Watch this. Uh, Sumerian king. I'm going to pull up this dude for you. The Sumerians called themselves the black-headed people because they was referring to themselves as the dude inside the brain. We the black-headed people. Meaning... There's a dude in the brain that we're identified by. We from the summit area. These were a group of humans that was walking around in their human bodies, but identifying themselves by the mind. Do you understand how advanced society must have been? You got to really take a minute and think about what I'm saying. What if every human on earth identified by the energy inside of the body versus the body? Guess what? These celebrities wouldn't be getting worship. Why? Because everybody worship these archons because of they beautiful, they talented, they got the best clothes on and jewelry all on with the best cars. The simulation is all about eye candy. It's all about visual Aesthetics. And, and, and in a world where people don't care about what they two eyes see, they judge a person by the spirit. In the ancient world, they didn't give a damn how beautiful a woman was. If her spirit was out of whack, she was ugly as hell. And they treated her like how we treat an ugly fat woman today. You know, no offense to fat women. You know, some of y'all sexy. I'm just saying, like, I don't want a fat shame. But check this out, right? My point is, in the ancient world, it wasn't shallow like today. Not too long ago, they were singing a song called Beauty is Only Skin Deep. Because they were saying the energy of your soul is what makes you ugly or pretty. Today we live in a world where these celebrities be beautiful, but they attitude be ratchet, disgusting, not classy, not ladylike, manly. And niggas don't care because all they see is ass and beauty. Men weren't like that back in the day. We didn't even identify by the body. 
we didn't care how pretty your ass was. If your energy was out of whack, we was a, we stayed away from you because we knew that spiritual energy caused disease and illness and stress. You got niggas dying quick as hell because they got a fine-ass headache on the side of their goddamn arm. Because <laughs> some of these chicks in the music industry only good for a one-night stand. They been a drove a nigga crazy trying to deal with they stupid satanic asses every day with all them mental issues. But niggas will do it. And it dried them crazy too, like Erica Badu did Andre. <laughs> yeah, man. Real shit. Real shit. Y'all, some of y'all niggas know what I'm talking about. You got a, a fine ass headache you land with every night and that's cause dude that's your fault beauty is so overrated nigga and I know a lot of people in this world hate when you say that you telling me to holler at an ugly woman I'm telling you don't let a beautiful woman control you nigga that's what I'm telling you I'm not telling you to women to holler at an ugly man I'm telling you if a nigga look good enough, he can make you his slave if you a slave to just beauty. See, I never was an ugly dude and I can get fine girls. So I started looking for other qualities in women besides just your ass look good. And niggas who just looking for beauty, you ain't a man, dawg. You still in the simulation on this surface shit. And that's why you will never get the right woman, nigga. Our ancestors was in tune with energy what made them choose or not choose. In some cultures, you can't even pick your wife. They pick it for you. And how about it? What if I told you in countries where they arrange marriages, they got a lesser divorce rate than the countries where you get to choose your own uh, uh, spouse. You got the power to choose whoever you want to marry and we got the highest divorce rates. And the people in them countries that give you your wife when you a young boy, they stay together to death, do them apart. Some wrong, y'all. We been bamboozled, man. But see, I'm showing you what kind of people your ancestors was. You couldn't fool them with the simulation. They didn't even identify by the body. How do you summon them to a courtroom? You don't have jurisdiction over a person who thinking like what I'm telling you. Which is why our ancestors were sovereign. They had to indoctrinate our ancestors and trick them into religious indoctrination in order for them to give up their birthrights and land and all that and become slaves. Because when they knew the truth, there was no way you can fool them because they didn't even identify by the body. And all of the devil's tricks is, 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 is centered around the flesh and the body. But if you the type person that's saying, nigga, I'm not even my body. You really got to come with some serious mind tricks now for me. Because I'm operating up here. So now they govern the mind of what we call government. Government. In order for you to control, the gateway to the controlling the body is through the mind. Why? You got to holler at this dude to get control over his giant. We are not the body. And to prove it to you, the energy that's controlling your body, somebody else can take over that and control your body. And they ain't even got the, this ain't no spooky demon possession. I'm saying, nigga, I can be your favorite rap artist and I can control the actions of all of my fans and they don't even know it. And I'm controlling their whole swagger and how they develop and how they dress. They even want to eat what I eat, which is why I get endorsement deals. You see what I'm saying? The body can be hijacked. It can be hacked. 
because it is a computer is what I'm telling you. And it's as simple as make you run a different program other than the one that's installed into your body. Your body came with its own operating system. It's called you, motherfucker. <laughs> it's called you, nigga. <laughs> and when you ain't running the operating system that came with your damn device, you compromise it and now problems can come. If you buy a computer and it come with Windows, whatever, or whatever, and you want to try a different operating system other than Windows, and you want to try some Japanese shit and all that, but you... That's, you you got to, whatever come with that, come with that. It will, it'll be what's called compatibility issues. See, some of y'all's mental paradigm is not compatible for the person you are. And when you front and you don't, you know that ain't who you are. You being convicted by the guy upstairs and I keep telling you that ain't God. That's the higher self. That's the man saying, look here. I created this body so that I can pull the strings and control it. Why the fuck are you doing what Jay-Z told you to do? Throw your hands in the air and wave them like you just don't care. See, all of that is to see. I'm going to show you something. I used to say, why do rappers want you to do so much at a concert? Throw your lighters up. Do this. Do that. Because it's small programming. If I can make you do that at a show, I can make you buy a tennis shoe when I'm not at a show. I can make you buy this new liquor right here when I'm not at a show. I can make you buy this new brand over here I'm promoting for this corporation when I'm not at a show. Small things lead to big things, but you don't see how it all tie in. If I tell you to do something, you do it enough, I'm basically a parent to you subconsciously. I can say, hey, hammer that ink pen. Okay, my nigga, boom. All right, my nigga, uh, hammer that bill. Okay, if you do that every day for you, my slave, and you don't realize, and I might not be asking you for much, and you might be willing to do it, but in my mind, it's energy I don't got to use. You can use your energy. I'm now a vampire in, in, in a way. It's subtle, but it adds up at the end of your life. If I tell you to do two 30-minute things a week, add up an hour a week versus if you live 80 years, how much time of your life I took and it was probably something I didn't even care or didn't need to even do just vain energy you wasted. That's the thing about these vampires, man. The more time you spend focus on what they telling you to do, the less time you spend trying to figure out the simulation. And that's the plan. Because if you're left alone in quietness for too long, you go to wondering and that's when the awakening happened, which is why from the moment you wake up to the time you go to sleep, the simulation got to keep throwing data at you. This commercial, that product, that product, a new trend, another new trend, another new trend. It's like you can't keep up. It's overwhelming you with options and choices and none of these choices don't exist. The concept of diversity is an illusion that the simulation running on us. I just went over that, how in the base reality, in the real reality, all the energy is, the word, the etymology of the word psalm is to gather. To gather, like the psalm of an answer. When we say Samaria, we're saying the together area. If you go to the etymology dictionary and do the etymology for Psalm, which is S-U-M, that's the root word of Samaria. It'll give you Samsara, which is a Samarian, uh, uh, excuse me, a Hindu concept that's shared with the Samarians about uh, the, the, the uh, simulation. 
Samsara is the spiritual system that teaches about your incarnations through the seven seven layers. It's called Samsara. And if you want to learn about Samsara, you got to get my new presentation. I put the uh, link to it in the top. It's so much information and it takes me so much time. Time is money, unfortunately, in the simulation. And money is something that all of you motherfuckers got. You're not going to lie to me. <laughs> and I know that you can pay your boy $25 to help me continue this research and put my time and effort into this. Because you can see that I do meticulous research. I put a lot of time into it to be able to make all these collages and come up with all these connections and stuff. So when you say Samaria, the, the, the word S-U-M, S-E-M, S-A-M are the same. The word same has the root words S-A-M, which is Samaria, Samaria, Samsara, all of this S-I-M, Psalm, simulation, Samaria. So embedded within the name of these ancient cultures was the knowledge of the simulation itself. Is what I'm saying. There was a goddess that the Dogon worshipped. Her name was Ama. And that's the Greek is called Hama. And Hama is a Thor symbol. Because let me show you something real quick because I think I'm losing y'all. Wait a minute. Our... The Babel Tower, right? The concept of the base reality and the Babel Tower. Watch this. It looks like a hammer. You see it? This would be the top of the hammer up here. And then this would be the handle. So the concept of the Thor hammer with the electricity coming. You know how they give you Thor's hammer with the electricity coming from it? Like the Babel Tower is based upon the same knowledge as the Tesla Tower. Check it out. They said that the Tower of Babel didn't have a capstone because it was knocked down by the God of electricity. And he was a God. His symbol was an all-seeing eye. I swear to you that Tesla was a flat earther. Our earth is a, in the middle of our earth is a big ass Tesla tower. And all of the magnetic ley lines that you see on that AE map are all of the ethereal cracks that are running through our Taurus field. Just like this plasma ball. Magnetic ley lines cutting through our hollow sphere. From the North Pole. So our entire universe is basically an electric discharge coming from a tower. And it's an emission of holographic light that is creating trees, birds, animals, you and me. But when we return back to the source, the light that was creating your body exists as something else on the inside of the thing that it expanded from. Our journey from Eden is literally an electric discharge from the middle of the earth. In other words, the energy running through your body is like a lightning strike. But instead of personifying the energy in your body as a lightning strike running up the central nervous system, they personified as a serpent, which looks like what? A lightning strike. This is the energy in your body. This is Zeus. Zeus symbol is a lightning bolt, but he's also a serpent god. They said, so the thing about this lightning bolt and this serpent, they're one and the same. So like I showed you, the Aurora Borealis is this green streak of light. When we die, the Kundalini, this green streak of light, this alien is going to get sucked back into his UFO ship at the North Pole. That'll be like the energy that's discharged from this tower journeying back into the tower after it was discharged. That's what's going to happen, people. You hear what I'm saying? You are literally energy 
that was discharged from a central location on earth. And when that energy expanded from the center point, it transformed just like the, in this image, right? The energy that's flowing up this pole and expanding out as light, it don't exist as light inside of the pole. It exists as invisible electromagnetic energy. But when it discharges, we, it now enters the visual spectrum. See, electricity is all around you. And when you see a lightning strike, yes, you can visually see electricity now, but that was always there, though. In other words, there is electromagnetic pressure in the sky. It's invisible energy. But when enough of that energy get compressed together, it bleeds into the visible spectrum, and we see it as a lightning strike. But the light ain't really a good representation of the energy. There's really no good representation of it. This is our moon, a hidden one, because energy in its truest form is in a form that no man can behold with their own eyes, which is why they said that no man can look upon the face of God. Because energy in its truest form don't exist in any visible spectrum. So when the, when the energy leaves its truest form, it leaves Eden. It exists now into the visible spectrum. But what you see ain't really a good representation of what it is. And if you ask me, well, how can I see a good representation of what it is? You can't. Because a good, the most perfect representation of what it is cannot manifest into the, uh, a visible spectrum. This is what's called a hidden one. And when you do see God, it's a representation of God, a Christ, a Buddha, a messenger. No man can see God. Because energy in its truest form, you can't even fathom it. It don't even bleed into the visible spectrum. So the visible spectrum is layering technology like icons on a computer so that we can interface with this thing in a way that's comprehensible. Because you can't even comprehend that which you think you, you trying to grasp and that's the paradox that the deepest secret of reality is cloaked in ignorance the crazy thing about uh see because i'm all over the place here um let me see here uh yeah so in the North Pole, in, a, in, in the summit area, some area, we exist as one. And that word is together, one and the same, a hive mind. A hive mind. So people, it's so much that I got to teach that, remember, they said we're made in the likeness of God, an image is a likeness. So when we say we're the Sumerians, we're saying we're the souls trapped in human bodies. We're the Nephilim. We're the fallen angels. We're the Hyperboreans. We're the ones that exist as one above. See, united we stand, but divided we fall. And that is what the symbol of Atenism showing you. Look at here. United, we exist as one ball of energy. But divided, when that thing is span, and when God falls out of Eden, he becomes a bunch of different individuals. Look. The Big Bang Theory right there. And 
In Eden, we are one supreme being called God. But that being is being made by a bunch of Buddhas agreeing to build Voltron. We are agreeing to do that. We got a galactic federation, in other words, in Eden, of a bunch of souls agreeing to create heaven in the same space and to share that state of mind and bliss with each other. So they're one hive mind creating hell and unity and oneness, togetherness. And beneath them is the opposite. It's these spirits, it's these archons that's creating division, separation, and, and all that. And to, for everybody to be divided. And that's why everybody can't understand each other. It's so much killing and so much people need therapy down here in creation because it's full of sick souls. It's the walking dead. They down here to experience the land of the dead. See, the, uh, the, the uh, ziggurat to the Sumerian was a big-ass necropolis for dead souls. But if you look at all the Sumerian ziggurats, they don't bury people there. What did they mean? The ziggurat to the Sumeria was a symbol of the earth. In fact, the word... Ziggurat is shikarat or shakara, chikarat, shikarat. And one of these ziggurats is called Sakara. They built ziggurats all over the world and they all spoke one language, which was the language of mind, telekinesis. What this ziggurat symbolizes is an ancient hive mind that the Sumerians were a part of. They were just one advanced civilization among many that had an ancient one world unity, one world order and hive mind. We are just now going back to that today. It's called a singularity. But we're doing it with technology. They did it with spirituality. There, were, there was a one world order on the earth, a heaven. Us people, they had built the same, the same kingdom we got in heaven where, where we're one mind. Like all of these religions are telling you in heaven, we're all going to share the mind of Christ. So they're telling you we're going to be a hive mind. We're going to be this one mind. And the early symbols of Christianity was a beehive. And bee symbolism and the beehive, you see, it looks just like the earth. Um, basically, in Eden, there's a hive mind. And the beings there are unified as one, agreeing to create the best reality possible. And that is called the summum bonum. Again, summum meaning summit. And Bonham meaning a bond, a galactic federation, a bond of spirits at the summit point that are grinning, we don't want to participate in hell. And your vibe attract your tribe. Once your energy start to match the energy of Asgard, you can't, you, you phase out of creation out the death. People who ain't matching the energy of Ask God, they, they will continue to reincarnate in the creation. They're not, but we all are being summoned to our greatest version. That's God is a guide. That's what Polaris is. It's not just there to guide you in a physical reality. But when we leave the body, the North Pole literally becomes a God that show us our way home. And I just showed you that with the candle flame. Remember? So when, they, when you came onto the earth, the body became, landing into the body was like the soul landing on a trampoline. And the, at, the most, at the point where the trampoline gets the most tension at your lowest point, that's when you go into the graveyard, into the casket. And when that happens, 
guess what? Just like a trampoline, the soul springs up out of the body and it's able to bounce back to its highest heaven. So the deepest people project the furthest. See, all of this knowledge right here, it makes you deep. It makes you serious, which is tense, which is the word tension. In order for you to make it to the Samambana, you got to be deep, man. You got to take a plunge within the self. See, if we on a trampoline, put it this way. If I tell 10 people to jump, the ones that bend their knees the lowest will more likely jump the highest. Whoever get the lowest go the highest. If I get 10 people a bow and arrow that's made the same, whoever can pull it back the furthest, they arrow will shoot the furthest. Whoever on a trampoline that can create the biggest crater on that trampoline, they're going to get shot out the furthest. You know, simple, simple uh, knowledge. That's why Resurrection Month is called spring. And Jack in a box is attached to a spring. That's the Kundalini. The serpent wrapped around your spinal cord is like a spring mechanism. And on top of that is the pineal gland. That's the bullet that's sitting on top of the spring. And when the body leaves the when the soul leaves the earth the firing mechanism that allow it to project back into the heavens is this spring system that we're calling the kundalini right here you see this guys check that out ain't that some shit and that's the whole story of jack popping out the box jonah coming out the well neo coming out the matrix jacob's at jacob's ladder so the deepest ones project furthest in the heavens. I'm so glad I'm a, I'm so deep that when folks hear me talk like this, it sound like I'm going into another language. You know you deep when you get around regular folks and you talk like this and they say, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? Maru, astral projection, layers of reality, dimensional planes, what are you, man? Nigga, I'm not a human. <laughs> I'm a soul in a human body. And when you learn what you are, your language gonna change. See, this is the advanced type of language that these beings would be speaking if they landed on Earth. Those advanced beings landed on Earth, but they got amnesia. Now when I go to talk in the language of the multiverse, they, they say, man, that's pseudo. They blinded by the simulation. And I'm trying to give these guys back the knowledge through symbolism in my own unique way. That's my mission here. So, just like a spring mechanism in a gun, the bullet is on top of that spring. And when the spring expands, the bullet takes off. The bullet is the pineal gland right here in the brain. See, all of these chakras are like bullets in a clip. Let me show you some. You got a clip, right? You, you like a gun clip. And your magazine can hold seven bullets. Now, the bullets, right, that you got loaded up in your gun... You got seven bullets, right? And each one of them is a different type of bullet. One is a hollow point. One is a sharp point. One is just a light to let them know we in trouble, right? One is the first one we shoot it to lead us to the target. So each bullet in my chamber is different because it got a different purpose. And that's like each chakra. Each chakra is a different type of bullet load it up in the magazine and when the time is right each one will be discharged and each one is a different version of you a different layer of yourself returning back home 
and the spring mechanism that's projecting it is right there in the spinal cord, the kundalini. Each of these chakras, like I said, it's a bullet in a clip. And they stacked up on top of each other. And whichever one at the top going to be the next one be discharged by the spring mechanism. But just like a gun clip, that spring, the, as it expands, it widens and widens, right? You know what I'm saying. I don't got to beat this horse. I got to keep moving. But you see how this whole system in the spinal cord is like a, 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 a cylindrical chamber with the chakras in it like bullets. And these, di these are the different egos, eggs, little balls. They represent portals into different versions of the self. So Venus, Mars, and how all of these planets control our emotions because it's energy in motion. They lead to another version of you in another world. And because all of these different versions are tethered together, it, your emotional state is dictated by how, see another version of you in another world might be having a bad day. And you may be like, God damn it, man, today I just, a part of me feels down. I'm not really sad, ain't nothing happened to me or nothing. It's just a part of me got a little gray spot in it. I can't explain it. And what that is is that one of these other versions of the self, another you and another reality had a fucked up day. And because all of these are tethered together and vice versa, another version of you have a, a great day and you like, I don't know why, but I just feel good. Why you feel good? I don't really got a reason. I just feel good as hell today. See, all of these other versions of the self, your energy, emotion is energy in motion. So, these are represented by the chakras. And you got seven different emotional bodies. And what that means is that each one of your incarnations, who you are, represent a different combination of these chakra states. And each combination of your chakra states creates a different version of you. What's going to happen one day, these chakras are going to align in a combination that creates your greatest version. And that's when the combination lock going to open up. See, the whole thing is, let me show you some. When you look at the uh, seven concentric chakra bands, let me pull them up. You looking at a straight jacket technology. And, uh, yeah, spiritual straight jacket technology. Let me show it to you. Spiritual straight jacket. Check it out. So imagine a man in a straight jacket. And in order for him to get out of that straight jacket, he got to wiggle around like evil Knievel. And that's the dance of the serpent. That's why the kundalini is a serpent. Imagine you trying to get out of that thing, right? Guess what you're going to be? You're going to look like a snake trying to get out of that thing. That's the kundalini dance. We are all evil Knievels. We're all going to come out. See, they give you this Oscar trophy. You know the, what, what it's called? Because they got this Will Smith and um, Chris Rock is the Christ Rock, and Will is the Willer of the Smith, the one that breaks the rock. This is a whole ritual when we go into like Will Smith, Chris Rock, and the Oscars, because what's going on in the heavens is happening on earth. But when they show you the Oscars, at the North Pole, when the curtains open up, 
you're going to see your mummified sleeping self. And they gonna, everybody going to be clapping like you got an award. This Oscar award, he's, he's standing on top of a film reel. That's the circle of the earth, man. All of these are the Pharaoh's tombs. The Oscar, the word Oscar, if you rearrange the word Oscar, guess what you get? Sokar. Who is Sokar? An Egyptian god that represent a mummy coming up out the tomb. Oh, my God. You can't make this up. They named the Oscars after the god Sokar. And the whole symbol of this thing is the Pharaoh, but resurrection, the tomb, the golden quantum computer. The Oscars, Oscars, look at how they got the human up under the triangle in the birthday hat. See, that's going beyond the veil that I told you about in between the two pillars. Oscars is sarcoph sarcophagus. That's what this is, a dead mummy. But he gonna wake up. And the mummy waking up in the pyramid is the symbol right here. I'm showing you, man. Oz car is the car that exists at Oz. It is your vehicle that you use to travel the heavens. The body is your Oz car. And they wrapped you up like Neo in the pod in a little bitty like tube and that's the straight jacket and each other while you sleep at the North Pole you moving like this now let me show you what if you ever saw like see you are a baby that's sleep in a box let me show you some watch this you a baby in a box this is what you look like at the North Pole you literally look like a bee larva, white with stripes, a mummy, a sleeping mummy. You see the, and you're in your own pod at the North Pole, and you really look like this, a bee larva, a mummy. But this thing gonna wake up, it fell asleep. It, and it, these larvae are dreaming that they are bees. But they're going to wake up out their dream like, oh, I ain't a bee yet. That was a dream. But they learned how to fly, though. Remember in the Matrix when, when Neo and Morpheus wanted to learn something, they just plug into the Matrix, download it, and when they come back to the other side, they know this shit now. Let me show you something. Your soul wanted to learn how to fly. It went into a pod as a lava with no wings. And in its sleep, it, it got wings. Let me show you the Sumerian tree of life so you can see I'm not capping. You can see a dude leaving the damn quantum computer with wings. He didn't go in with wings. You get your wings at death, and that's how you get back the... Asgard. No one can go back home if they don't get their wings. And to get your wings, you got to, your consciousness got to ascend up out the body like this dude right here. He was down here in the earth realm in the quantum computer and he came up the steps like I told you and like a bullet leaving a gun clip. Boom, he shot out. That's one of his souls. He got six more to go. Six versions of him going to shoot out of that and enter this sleeping version at, the, at where he at, exists as a tomb in a pod. He in a tomb or a pod, a quantum computer. And seven layers of this quantum computer and his seven versions in the, in the simulation, he got to die seven times. So when Brother Sanchez die, I'm going to be born again in, in one of them dream worlds in another reality. That's familiar to me. That's when you die, you're going to be born again. And the world that you go to, you've been there before in one of your dreams. It's a, and when you was dreaming, you didn't know you was dreaming. 
But when you die in this world, you're going to go back to one of your dream worlds and you ain't going to know you even died here. It's a continuum. Death is awakening. Just like I told you earlier, every time you dreaming that you dying, what happens when you die? You just wake back up in this world. That's all death is. So when you die in this universe, you go back to one of them dream worlds you've been to before that's familiar to you. And you know it's familiar to you because when you get there, you go to having deja vu. Like, I've been here before. Yeah, dude, we are, time, we are multidimensional beings. The version of you that exists in these other little dream worlds and these other dimensional planes, they got to live their lives out and die too. And it ain't to all of your different versions return home that the true version gonna wake up on top of the mountain just like Jet Li in the movie The One. And where did they get that from? Right here from the Sumerians. Look at it. Look at that. Everything is this ancient spiritual system being headed from y'all. And I got a passion to show you. You see, in this movie, Jet Li, he, he went and collected all of his other avatars and he became the one. And the one is literally dealing with the Christ, which is the crease. What is the number one? It's a crease. It's a, this scepter. It's the beam stalk. The one is on top of the pyramid. The one, Neo, is on top of the pyramid, just like Jesus said, I'm the light, and he's on top of Calvary. You get it now? Do you get it now? Can't give it to you all in one show. But Jet Li is the one, and if the one is on top of the pyramid, He's personified the soul leaving the earth, just like Christ on Calvary, man. Y'all, I put a lot of work to be able to come up with these uh, connections. Takes a lot of time of staying up with coffee while my woman in the bed sleep by herself. Um, I got damn near over 2,000, 5,000 collages under my belt of nothing but info. If, if, if I didn't spoke a word, just gave my slides, a person will wake up just looking at them. Um, I'm saying that to say support the research if you like it, and you can do so by actually continuing the research and the journey of learning. I put together a, over three hours of Sumerian information Information that you will not hear on this stream is so many things that I unlocked that I'm going to be teaching this stuff for so many days to come uh, about the Virgin Mary being Maru and all that. But what I was saying about the larva so I don't get off track, this is what the soul is. It's a mummy that's wrapped up as a larva and you see how the larva look like a mummy. This is your holographic stray jacket. And to, if you want to get out this street, why do you think all the magicians do the straitjacket trick? It's symbolic. They all know the truth, man. They all know the truth. Why do you think they all do the straitjacket trick? Because your journey up out the body is literally, if you can see what you look like on the other side, you are literally a sleeping soul that's wrapped up in a holographic matrix. And the souls on the other side are rooting for you. They saying, I hope he wake up. He's going to wake up. And the more they see you turn and shit like that, they know you having a bad dream called life. It's a bunch of war here, famine here. They know that you are a baby that's in creation. But you, you are sleeping as God and the gods are watching over your sleeping body. Just like these bees in the beehive, they watching over the lava as they sleep. When they see a lava moving around and moving too much, they all crowd around because they say, okay, he's going to wake up soon. He's about to wake up soon. And they know it's a matter of time for he transform and turn into a, a bee. 
And when he become a bee, he's going to fly up out that pit, transform with his wings, and he's going to be walking on top of the Masonic checkerboard. And that's when you're on top of the world, baby. That's when you're this God right here. See, all them got wings. You get your wings, you fly up out of here, and you join the other gods up above walking on top of the earth. Because above our earth is basically like above this lava pit. It's a bunch of bees that already been lava before. They already been down into the pits of hell. See, each lava exists in its own separate torus field, its own pit. But when the lava turn into a bee and it's born out of that pit and it rise up and walk above that which it call the sky as a transformed creature, a bee, it becomes one with everybody in the heavens. See, we're all sleep on the Babel Tower. And the reason we all separated in this creation is because while we dreaming at the North Pole, we all separated like these larvas. You got two people, right? The husband may be in this pod, the wife over here in this pod. But in the earth realm, they kissing in the bed. Science tell it, tells us that Two humans never really touch each other. Nothing never really touches. Now, there's a big spill on why they said two magnets never really touch because there's always a thin layer of magnetism in between two objects. So there's a documentary you can watch on that, right? They said objects never really make contact in this reality. They just become very close. And if you think about the little thin layer that's separating them, it's like the walls in, these, in this honeycomb thing right here. Now, if all of these lava are sharing a dream world together, they would be separated in the dream because they are sleeping babies that's separated in their own pods. Like you see here, like Neo in the Matrix with all them people on the tower. Now, why would they separate and why they sleep? Because it can be dangerous, man. Have you ever been into a virtual reality game room before? They got to have a way to protect them. If you sleep and you experience in a virtual reality, when you go to swinging and shit, moving around, and I'm in a virtual reality experiencing my own part of the simulation, I'm going to feel you kicking me. If both of us got on virtual reality goggles, we playing the same game, but you in a different part of the game. If me and you meet up in that game, we'll be able to touch and feel because this virtual reality game is so advanced that it gave us a bodysuit, right? To where if, if, if I'm meeting you in a game, we can feel it. Like, you know, the kind of games, the high-tech stuff they make in a day. But what if I, I'm away from you in a game and I'm still feeling you? They'll say, well, that's a glitch in the system. You only post to feel them when y'all come in proximity. But how does that manifest in the game? That's because if you got on your own virtual reality goggles and your own bodysuit, but you in Canada and I'm in Russia, I can't feel you because we're separated by our own proximity matters here. And remember that when I meet up with you in the world, we're in a dream. We're not really meeting up. See, the thing about this is this. When this lava meet up with this lava over here in a dream and they get to fighting, you can see this lava throwing punches and all that. And, they, and just you can imagine the bees at the top saying, I wonder who he's fighting against in the dream world. And so they would find another lava that's swinging and punching and they say, oh, those two might be fighting down there on earth. Now, they, in, in the earth realm, they blacken each other's eyes and shit. But in the base reality, 
they ain't even touched each other. It's just a dream. So science literally teach what I just taught you. They got another way of explaining it. They say we separated by a thin layer of magnetism. That's each other's Taurus field and the ethers. We're all creating this shit in our mind. If I'm trying to explain it the best way. I'm not a coder, a gamer, or none of that. We got people who can do it in those terms, and I hope that they click the link. And, and, and if they can sync this to computer knowledge, that'll be dope because I know what I'm trying to say, but I don't know the technical shit. I'm not a fucking, you know, computer guy, but I know a little bit playing games what this Ready Player One simulation is doing. So basically, when one of these lava wakes up, ain't no separation in heaven, meaning when the lava get out of its little Taurus field, its little shell, right? Like I told you, you're inside of a Taurus field. That's the whole world around your body in your own little pit. Here is what it looked like. The lava inside of the pit is the mind inside of the brain, what you see here. You, the spirit is sleep and its dream is the body in the simulation. But when that bee wakes up, it's going to be transformed. And its whole time it was sleep, it was transforming into a bee. When it finally wakes up, it won't even be a lava no more. It'll be a bee. And, and its wings will be what's allowing it to get the hell up out the pit. Like you see this God doing. And once it get up out the pit, ain't no separation in heaven. All them bees up there ain't separated by this little barrier. See, the, them bees that sleep in the simulation... They inside of the earth realm, you know, life is just a dream. They dreaming in the simulation. And they think they really touching each other. They think they really making contact when they just in a dream space. They're, when you when that man just say it's a married couple in the simulation that lay together every night and his wife pass away and he think that he lost his wife. When he pass away, guess what? He's going to realize his wife is standing over his pit waiting on him to wake up and come to the other side. There are bees that are assigned to each of the lava. Them your guardian angels, them your ancestors. So you got worker bees at the top that's guiding these lava through their trip like a shaman. When they give you the mushroom, they got to watch your sleeping body because you can harm yourself. It's all kind of things in play to where when you take a trip, you got to do it guided. So these guardians, they exist on another plane, but how they influence us is just say you see your cousin sleep in the bed and he's slapping himself real hard. He's slapping himself so hard and it because he's dreaming. But he's starting to damage his body. He's scratching his face, right? Because in the in the dream world, his avatar body is itching. But his base reality world, he's literally digging into his real face. So what we do, we might sneak a little piece of cloth in between his nails so he don't hurt himself. And I'm just giving you an example of how this play out, um, how these guardians is, is, is like Neo in the Matrix. When they go in the Matrix and they lay them on the table, they keep somebody in Trinity to check your, your vitals and all that. You are a sleeping pharaoh in a quantum. And in order for you to have a proper awakening, there have to be these guardians on the other side, just like these bees they, the B don't know that he's, he's in ignorance. But while we in the simulation and ignorance, these guardians are making sure not, no harm really comes to the real you. 
They don't care what the hell happened to the dream version of you in the simulation. He can get his head blowed off. They don't care. They're guarding the real you. So when the real you wakes up, you're going to realize no matter how you died or what you went through in a simulation, it doesn't matter. It was just a dream. And everybody that's in the dream are separated by the checkerboard, like all of the sleeping lava. But when they rise up, there's a unity in heaven and there's nothing separating us when we get the wings and, and get out. So people, that completes my knowledge of Babel before Babel. We were one in the heavens. We weren't separated by the grid system. See, the quantum computer creates this fencing me mechanism because remember, musicians, when you quantitize something, you snap it to a grid. That's the Babel Tower. And with that thing that's quantitized is limited now like the body is with the soul in it. See, the best music ain't on grid. The classical music, the jazz is off beat, it's off grid. The grid is a prison, a fencing mechanism for the soul, which is a sound vibration. And the, the fence, the fence that's trapping the soul See, because we know what a fence is. So let me show you this. There's a soul inside of your body. But the reason it can't make it out, let me show you something. All of us have a soul, right? And this is what the soul looked like. This green little serpent. The reason it can't get out is because the way out is through the top of the mind up here. It's the vault is, is an open mind, right? And the reason a mo lo lot of people don't make it out, they don't open their mind up. Your soul can only go as far as it knows. People cannot go somewhere that I don't know exists. Think about this. I cannot aim my body in a direction that I don't know exists. I never go to Jamaica if I don't know it exists. Wouldn't even think to aim my body in that direction called Jamaica. If a person don't know that there's a world beyond this one, they can't go. You can't go nowhere you don't know exists. The ancestor said the way into heaven is knowledge. Knowledge of what? Knowledge of heaven. Ain't that crazy? The very knowledge of heaven it's the way to it. And it makes perfect sense. You can't go somewhere you don't know exists. So once the soul wakes up to this place called heaven, it awakens to its original homeland and it returns there. And when it gets there, it have a nostalgic moment. It said this place always existed. I just forgot that I've been here before. You do that sometime. There are places in this world that don't even exist in your mind right now. But if I took you to one of those back streets, you would be like, yo, I've been here before. When I was 11 years old, my daddy took me here. But when you forget, it get pushed back so far, it don't even exist in your reality no more until I take you there and you have a nostalgic moment. It's places you've been before, but you forgot you've been before. And the only way you're going to remember you've been there before is to go back. And when you get there, you're going to be like, yo, I've been here, man. I swear I've been here, bro. Nostalgic going to come on. You're going to remember when you was there, how you was there. And just a minute ago, you didn't even know the place existed. The root word of nostalgia is nos, nos, the Gnostic knowledge. The Gnostic people are the people that was tapping into these Akashic records or the knowledge that we gain through nostalgic moments, which is your aha moments. I'm not teaching you nothing, brothers and sisters. 
on waking you up the shit you already knew. That's why it resonates with you in a way that soon as you get it, it's like, damn, right, yeah, like, okay, yeah, like, duh, like, because you always knew this. You're having a nostalgic moment. And this Gnostic, nostalgic moment is the Gnostic moment when you start seeing beyond the veil. There's so much more I want to teach. I'm going to end with this and I'm going to open up the calls. The spirit is trapped in the body. There's a cork blocking the way out, and that's called indoctrination and ignorance. We all born into religion programming. That ignorance of what happens when we die and the knowledge of the heavens, it takes away from us who we really are. Because the knowledge of life and death and rebirth lies within the base higher self. And when that takes that away from us and we're not tapping into the knowledge of Samaria, which is the summit area, we're not unlocking the power of the mind, which is the power we need to blow a hole through the ether to let the soul out the body. Can't nobody do this but each individual. You got to have this awakening moment and this reality can no longer hold you anymore. You start to compromise the system like Jonah, like Jesus. Jesus had to die. They had to put him to death. Jonah had to get kicked out the well. Neo had to, every time them agents see Neo in the Matrix, they follow him down and chase him out. Once they know that your ass is woke, you can't be here no more. Listen, man, when your kindergarten teacher know that you smart and that you ready for the first grade, you can beg all you want to stay in kindergarten, but they ain't going to let you. They not going to let you. You know why? You, you're a first grader now. You know better. You got to do better. You can say, I know I passed kindergarten with straight A's, but I don't want to go to first grade. Can I stay in kindergarten? The Board of Education ain't going to let you do that. You know why? You're going to compromise the class to the next students with your smart ass. If you so smart, go to the second grade and compete with your peers. See, you pass the first grade and you want to stick around so you can tell all the answers to the new babies and get your shine on. And what you did was you robbed them of their own awakening and learning process. So even if they do make it out of first grade, they didn't really learn nothing. They cheated. The teacher got to get you up out of there, man, once you know the answers. It's going to be hard for you not to tell and show out to the new first graders. You got to go. You're going to compromise the curriculum. When Jonah left the well, don't you know he had a diploma in his hand? A lot of people don't really look at the artwork. A lot of people don't really. Pay. Let me show you something real quick. I ain't making this up. When you pull up the old Christian artwork that's associated with Jonah leaving the well, watch this shit. I'm going to pull it up real quick for you. No one really pay attention to that, but I peeked it, though. I'm going to show you some. Hold up. Here we go. Look. Jonah is holding papers in his hand what is Jonah holding in his hand that's Jonah's diploma his spiritual diploma meaning that I passed the class you put me into the belly of the beast in ignorance and I found my way in the darkness I, I hearken to the voice of my higher self in a world of loud chaos I was able to quiet it out and hear the little voice that led me back home. 
and to cancel out the world around you and just focus on that little voice that leads you home, that goes back to what I showed you earlier when reality around you blacks out. And the only thing you can see is the curtains open up to lead you back home. Everybody else still see the left and right eyes giving them a reality. But you close your left and right eyes, you open up your reptilian third eye, it's a little slit. That, that's what leads you up out of here. That's what sees beyond the veil. You was able to do that because you canceled out the world around you and you kept following the voice within. That's what leads us ultimately to where we fade the black and go back home. So uh, the thing about, I was going to show y'all something real quick. Um, yeah, Jonah holding a diploma in his hand. Diploma is deployment. When you deploy like a bullet taken off, what is deployment? That's ejection. When you leave high school, you get a diploma. You deploy off into the real world. You see how we talk? Everything we do down here is a ritual for what's happening up there. You went to high school. What is that? The school at the high, the summit peak. You got your diploma and entered the real world. Dude, this is a ritual. When you die, you get a deployment. And that deployment is what ascension springs you up to the real base reality. All of what we doing on earth is just a ritual. We acting out of what we, the spirit going to do at death. That's, that's what I'm saying. As above, so below. Uh, I don't want to end this thing. I keep talking and I got to open up the calls and shit. <laughs> but people, these past three days, I've been in my darkness. And every time I go away, y'all know I come back reloaded and I come out the dark with a bunch of light. So you know when Sanchez, the longer I stay away, the deeper I'm going to be when I come back, bro. And so this is my recent research and i got so many revelations that i'm gonna be going live a lot man because we got to talk about the earth earth monster right here which is the whale the world a whirlwind they call it sarlacc in star wars and he got all of them teeth layers and that's the different layers of dante inferno they get that from mesoamerican the earth monster we're gonna talk about the earth monster we're going to compare that. Listen. Listen. Jesus got two symbols. Jesus was a serpent and Jesus is a cross, the symbol of the cross. Jesus being a serpent God associated with the symbol of the cross, that comes from Mesoamerica. Check this out. Here go the earth monster right here and look at his symbol, a cross in his mouth. Because at the middle of our earth is where the four corners meet to where we enter Sheol, the belly of the beast. And this God will recycle you. Why, why does that God recycle you? Watch this. Because that God is a big ass time loop, Saturn. He tricking you. See, when you go into Sheol, it loops you back around and puts you back into a Taurus field back into uh, uh, into the life and in human incarnation see the bubble around your body this taurus field this is why they got the snake wrapped around buddha you know how they got the snake wrapped around buddha this the thing right here what i'm telling you the straight jacket keeping you in bondage it's a prison it's a fencing mechanism a layering it's it's like virtual reality goggles that's making you see the sun and moon and a false simulation and when you look at it it looked like a pair of goggles satan the serpent the trickster the aura boros is the aura pull up the aura boros again Show you his many forms. I ain't making this shit up. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Like, I got a lot of knowledge for y'all. Watch this. This right here 
is literally the prison around your body. Check him out. This is why they got the snake wrapping Buddha up. They got Buddha wrapped up in a snake. And that's because the Ouroboros is Satan covering you with the veil. I told you that the word devil is the veil, the serpent, the trickster. He tricking you with a false reality. The false reality is what we seeing through the eyes and the flesh, the body. So everybody got these goggles on, seeing the simulation. That's Satan's trick. The prison, the fence around the body. So that serpent, that deceiver, right, was personified as the earth god in Mesopotamia, another form of Saturn, and his symbol is the cross. As you can see, Jonah leaving the well is a brother. See, the thing about this earth monster He's the simulation. He fooling you like this thing is real with algorithm, with pride, with keeping up with fashion, the trends, false persona, ego. And until you wake up to who you really are, you're going to stay in his mouth. He's he put it this way. The people inside of this earth realm that are causing ruckus and, and causing the powers to have to censor them and like how I'm doing, like, you know, rebel rousers, like Jesus was. They had to kill him and get him out of the world stage. This fish had to spit Jonah out. You know why he had to spit Jonah out? Because Jonah expanded his consciousness to a point of knowledge that it made this thing stomach uncomfortable. See, I'm not a tasty meal to this monster. I make him want to vomit. The more truth that I tell and the more people I wake up in this belly of the beast, they got to go and kill you, man, and get you out of here. That's why they say the good die young. Christ died young, even though he was a mason during the Hiram Abiff ritual. We all are masons during the Hiram Abiff ritual. It's what I'm saying. The word mason is Samson. And he's pushing back the two pillars. That's what I'm showing here. This is the stone that the builders rejected. Because the builders are creating a simulation. They are the bricklayers. The, the masons will tell you, we are builders of men. We make men. You know why? The people that run this world, they literally create the human being body. What we call in God, whoever created the human, is the controllers of this simulation. They manufacture the humans, just like they showed you in the movie The Matrix. They showed you that the machines were literally creating the humans. Go watch the movie. You might then pay attention. The body is artificial intelligence, y'all. The spirit is the real intelligence. The mind, not the brain, mind over matter. So when we realize that the body can no longer contain us, so at that point, you got to die. That's why people say, man, they killed him because he was telling the truth. That's the way the game works. This is a video game. And the rules of it is, when you learn that it's a video game, it's game over. So they got to get you. Just like Jesus know that if he kept talking like that, he was going to die. Because the world powers weren't going to have that. It's built into the simulation that if you are a rebel rouser who figured it out, we got to get you up out of here. Just like in kindergarten, it's built into the curriculum that once you know the knowledge of a first grader, you can't go back to kindergarten. They got to put you out, man. They can't let you stay in kindergarten if you pass the class with straight A's like Jonah did. You see Jonah? He got his diploma. So the world got to spit him out. Graduation deployment is you being vomited out the mouth of Sarlacc coming out the inferno. Yeah, they can't hold. Think about it. This thing cannot digest you if you in his stomach talking that shit when I'm talking. That's why 
even when I make it out of this damn monster and I go back to my base reality, I can jump right in his mouth again. And, and people will be like, ooh, he, he jumping in the mouth of Sarlacc. Guess what? It's because I am who I am, like what God said. I know that I'm going to get spit out because I'm God. And that this monster don't like God. We disguise ourselves as humans when we jump in this thing and we manifest in the earth and the belly of the beast like everybody else. But when we grow up like a seed that opens up its capsule, this monster say, wait a minute, you're not a fucking human. And you go to manifesting your purposes, kicking that knowledge. It's too late. I'm already in you now, nigga. I'm in your stomach now. And I'm waking up all the souls you got trapped in this bitch. Showing them how to do they mind the way my mind is. Like Christ said, let this mind be in you. Because this the mind of Christ. This is the mind that you got from the crease. From the middle of the earth. The split. From the higher self. And, and ask God. The mind of Christ or the mind of the version of you that's at the crease at the North Pole. Let this mind be in you. Sanchez, you saying let your mind be my mind? Yep, because we don't have no individual mind in Eden. Ain't no such thing as bro Sanchez mind. What you call him bro Sanchez mind is just a bunch of knowledge that created a personality based on ancestral cosmology. It would have did the same thing to you had you fell into the awakening of this cosmology, which you doing now. The thing about it, there is one truth. And this one truth, once you grasp it, it creates one kind of personality. That's why I said all the beings in Asgard share one sort of energy. Like all of them are different and the same. That's what make it a paradox. It's, but down here... Everybody just different, divided and conquered. So that's why some areas, you know, same area to some area of this togetherness, the crease mass. Everybody in this higher kingdom, they are what we call a hive mind that's sharing the best experience. So they all are tapped into the mental state of paradigm that gives them the best mental template. See, there's a mental state of being that is heavenly no matter where you at, long as if you in this mind state, you in heaven. And that's the ultimate mind state of all humans. At that point, individuality go away because the supreme state of being is universal to all beings. Meaning, when you awaken to your higher step self, you're going to act how I'm acting. It's certain things that are universal. Everything ain't different. And truth is universal. Everybody that digested the right way will have the same experience, the same mind, the same vibration, and they will be join the hive mind in Eden. Rejoin the hive mind. So you're calibrating your energy with this galactic federation and you're being sum summoned up as the energy gradually ascends through a process of incarnations. Everything is happening by perfect design. So I don't want to talk too much. I think y'all get the point. Um, I'm going to actually let the people on now because, uh, you know, like I said, People are donating via Cash App. They are purchasing the new presentation. It, this presentation, by the way, real quick, and I'm going to sit the center. While I put the link out and let the callers come on, I'm going to just school you about the presentation. And you can come up and ask whatever you want. I also still have the slides open, so if I got a screen share and do some more teaching with the people, class is still in session. These are the best Fridays, man. But I want, I want you to know, I do know that it's payday, right? <laughs> and y'all support the show, support the community and the research. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> support the content you love. For real. Your contribution matters. 
Brilliant. It helps us continue our groundbreaking 100. research, allowing us to create the unique content that you expect from our brand. Contribute today via Cash App, PayPal, or Patreon. Thank you for your support and for being part of this flat power slash golden wings community. Let me share some with you. This new edited presentation and the link is pinned to the top of the chat room and it's also on the top of the vid description. You get this thing, man. You got $25. You can't lie to me. Every last person watching this stream right now got $25. Y'all can't lie. And guess what? The amount of work I put into this thing, it's just me trying to monetize my work because YouTube, I don't, if I don't do stuff like this, I just will be doing this, putting time into it, getting nothing. I got to be creative and monetize my own work. And that's even better for us and the channel because I get to say what I want to say. I'm not censored. If I rely on monetization from the algorithm, it's going to be watered down, bubblegum shit. I'm not monetized because I'm push. I'm saying a lot that's not ad friendly and YouTube don't really want this kind of shit here. I'm basically hanging on just for the fact that I'm, you know, but my thing is YouTube will get you off of here if they demonetize you because a lot of folks make a career off YouTube monetization and they get dependent on that and YouTube will demonetize them when they get real big. You know why they do that? Because they want you to quit your damn job first. They want you to put all your eggs over here. Then they demonetize you and you looking stupid. I've seen this happen to a lot of folks. They go to growing, getting big, relying on the YouTube money, and they get demonetized. Then they make a video saying, well, I got to leave YouTube and go back to work. I don't know when I'm going to be able to come back. Well, you could have kept doing YouTube. Even if YouTube monetized me, I'm not cutting that shit back on. I'd rather get donations and super and get the uh, cash out. For one thing, Google takes 30% of that money. 30%. And for another thing, you got to be censored and, and be like, bro, you can't say what you want and shit. It's just corny and goofy and watered down. Even if they gave me monetization back, I wouldn't cut it on. It's better with the cash apps and the PayPal, the Patreon, and just sell my work, man, directly to the people. Fuck a middleman. Because as soon as you get relying on that, I'm telling, I done had this channel monetized twice. The moment I get comfortable with that check, there's a we got to demonetize your channel and they never tell you why. Well, your content just ain't friendly without it. It'll be some vague shit. And, and, and I just said, hey, man, oh, oh, damn, we got the people on. Y'all get the point. Buy my new presentation and hit the donate button and support the work. You get the point, goddamn <laughs> it. ain't no bullshit. You know, I come with the meticulous tedious uh collages and research and connections bro like i'm serious with this work i'm, I'm a fucking professional with what i do who we got first that want the mic guys i gotta step off the mic for just one second and get some of this beer out man it's friday so i said hey we're gonna go light with the cores we don't want to be drunk we want to be a, still a teacher it ain't. But mm -hmm. so let me let y'all go for a minute. Don't address me till I get back. I'm going to step away. Y'all just, you, you can speak among each other. I'm going to be right back. The round table is open. Come on in, guys. Let's talk about it. Be right back. Hey, shalom, everybody. If y'all don't mind, I want to talk about touch. Because touch is something that everybody experiences. Everybody experiences. But it's something sublime. And I want to introduce a couple of different terms. The first one is contagion. So touch is what you see. So we're told we got five senses. But if all the senses are dealing with touch, do we really have five senses? 
or maybe it's just one sense. And that, that's all I got to say. And my name is uh, Dawood Ali. Uh, yes, it. Shalom, everybody. Can you can you hear me? Hello? I can hear you. You can hear me? Okay, cool. I just wanted to make sure that my mic was working. My check, one, two, one, two. <laughs> All right. I hear you loud and clear. All right, yeah, no, appreciate it. That's a that's an interesting way to look at it, though. I never really thought of it like that, about all the senses being connected. But how do you say it's all related to touch, though? Neurons. We we part of our our right. our uh, our nervous system is neurons, and and I found out there's something called mirror neurons, and mirror neurons pick up our environment before we're able to cognitively assess the environment. So our mirror neurons actually protect us from dangerous situations. For example, when you maybe didn't do something or did do something in a situation where it was either flight or fight. You did something, but you didn't know why you did it. But afterwards, you were able to assess like, damn, why did I do that thing? Either doing something or not doing something, mirror neurons are are more than likely. I'm back, everybody. My bad. Hey, man, why the numbers going down? Don't go nowhere. We still teaching. Go ahead. What, who we got on the mic, man? Go ahead. My bad. Hey, but wouldn't you? But don't you think that that would be more with sight? Because you know that uh, it's proven that matter matter changes dictating on on whether it's being watched or not. So you don't you it would make sense that we're all connected through visual because we visual what we touch, we visualize it first, then we touch. You know, so we have to we have to make the signal, see the light, then touch it for us to sense that. It has to be visualized first. Hey, I wanna know in the chat room, how many of y'all got my new presentation? I don't know what y'all talking about. I'm just coming back. But I don't want y'all going nowhere, man. Real talk. We, we're going to go deeper. I got it. Hey, I appreciate yeah, we're the talking love. about touch and the idea that there's only one sense. We, we <laughs> just have a sense of smell. We got a sense of hearing. We got a sense of touch. But if we really think about it, there's only one sense. The touch. And, and touch is a part of it. When you smell something, like say you go into a bathroom and somebody done, you know, done number two, the fecal matter is touching your your nose. I'm trying to understand. Yeah. When I left, I thought that see, I thought that I was just allowing y'all to come in while I used the restroom and um just say, hey, I'm, and in introduce yourself. Y'all already met way into a deep conversation. I'm coming back <laughs> like, what? I just opened the panel. What's going on? You know what I'm saying? We got all touchy feeling. No, no I, I am kind of interested in how everybody got got to, uh, like, what led them to Bro Sanchez's channel or, like, what led them on this journey. Um, because, like, Bro Sanchez talks about it, but I believe a lot of what he says because of uh, previous research that I was doing. And so it helps me to connect with what he's saying more. So it would be interesting okay. to kind of hear so, like, how uh, everybody got it. I tapped into bro Sanchez because I ain't going to lie to you. I used to be one of them, uh, what you call it, like them black magic fanatics. I was just into the whole spiritual system and everything like that. Different teachers coming on, showing everything. I respect black magic for what he does. But uh, I, something just was, uh, you already know who I'm about to say something about. Something was just off about that boy, Billy. So I said, hold on, let me see what, hold on, what Sancho is cooking on over here? Because he did a little thing about Billy a while back. And I tapped into that. And then I was like, hold on, let me see what Sanchez is talking about. And then he got me on the sacred geometry and okay. the whole rabbit hole. Because I started with the sacred geometry situation. That's how I got on the black magic at the first place. And that's what I wanted to talk about Sanchez. I mean, talk to Sanchez about tonight is 
I got a little sacred geometry thing I put together from just this presentation alone that I want him to tap in on too. Hey, okay, yeah, another. Let's whatever you guys got for me. Let's let's come on. Uh, uh, matter of fact, let me open up the screen share because yeah, man, like I want you guys to come up and 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 be able to teach and teach if you guys want to teach your your thing too. If I inspire something. And you that you think can be an addition to this classic presentation? Hold on, sorry, hold on, hold on. I'm getting a little feedback. Yeah, I believe that these panels are. That's what they're for. When I do a presentation and I inspire a paradigm in you with that presentation, when I open these up, I want to hear y'all build off of what I laid down in the presentation. And I think a brother is saying. Yo, I got some for you, Sanchez. Can I lay it down? Bro, you ain't got to ask that, bro. Hey, let's do it. Yeah. And shout out to everybody who who on here, man, that want to interject and add on to the presentation. Hell yeah, man. Let's, let's do that for sure. Pass that thing around. And we want to hear from every last one of you brothers, man. Let's do it. Salutes to y'all, man. Yeah, I ain't the okay, only uh, teacher. That's for sure. I guess I'll uh, kick it off with what I wanted to ask you about or uh, what I wanted to present to you. This is going to be kind of weird, but uh, you know how it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, this is my second time ever on the show. The first time I was on the show, I was the dude who said something about how the red and white mushroom caps were candy canes with Santa Claus. And then I said, then I related that Santa Claus situation to the fact that it was a candy cane and the Egyptians carry canes and a lot of the hieroglyphics and everything. Yeah, you on so, point. You on point. Um, if you look up the heart chakra, if you look up the symbol for the heart chakra, it's the star of David. Yeah, yeah. And going beyond the star of David, mm -hmm. if you connect the points on the star of David, it creates a hexagon. Come on with it. And if you go on beyond that hexagon, when you seen when I seen that beehive, I said, oh. So we, because everybody say the Star of David is supposed to be a representation of our, you know, the energies within us. Now, 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 uh, don't you know King David is the only king that they said was the literal embodiment of Satan in the flesh? And that's the king that the GDs or the Satan, the, the gang. Uh, are oh, on yeah. The and it's a six point start. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 So it was just like all of that just connected all at once because a little thing that I also tapped into was, you know how when you're a little kid and you, you go to art class, they'd be like, oh, make the shapes out of this, make the shapes out of that. If you fold all the points up on the Star of David, you get a pyramid with a hexagonal base. This is true. Then... If you fold up all now, the sides. Now, now on, that Star of David is the same thing they call it the Star of Bethlehem, just to let the people know. It was the Star of David above Christ. That's a whole nother topic. But yeah, go ahead, brother. No, yeah, but uh, if you fold up the sides of, uh, what's it called, of the cross, then you get a prism. Right. That, Ain't we all that when they talk about Christ and Allah, is two parts of one religion. I call it Chrislam because basically the cube is the folded up cross and the cross is the unfolded cube and they basically represent ener energy compressed and energy expanded. That's why when you look at Mecca around a cube, they got all the people like a ripple effect making this big Saturn pattern like energy blowing up from a grenade and like that. Because oh yeah, yeah, that, you know, so hey, and to to the brother Prince Nemesis, and it, it, the reason he's cam, the reason he's visible, and no one else, I got it on to where if your camera on, you will be visible. If your camera ain't on, it just won't show nothing. It'll just hear your voice. Salute, salute, yeah, brother. Salutes. salutes, bro. One thing to say about what the brother just said about the cross, though, like. I just peeped when he said that. Like, do you notice how they say, like, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, amen, right? They go, yeah. like, Christ is the arm, the arm, 
He's pinned at the feet. He's pinned at the head. That's arm, leg, leg, arm, head. That's yeah. Allah. Yeah. No. It yeah. is all the same thing. What you're creating right there with your body, you're doing, I'm not going to say ritual because it ain't really a ritual, but I mean, it kind of is. So <laughs> you know how that goes. So right it, there, it is. You're, I, I would letting, just, um, you're imprisoning yourself. Kind of. Now, I'm not saying that's what it is, but you look, you might be doing a little ritual. We did yeah, imprison no, ourselves. We did, though. Like, but as it, fallen angels, like, people always say yeah. something about this life, we got something to do with it, too. Some kind of way we can send it and don't know. And once we went into it, like, if you if you sign up right now to play a video game that I made. You got to upload your mind into the game. And when you get in there, I'm a, I'm a, it's going to start with you coming out of a woman's vagina. And Bro, don't you, they always say, like, you got to consent to the agreements? The, yeah. The, 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 the that's the that's what I'm game. saying. Because once you get in the game, you play dumb because the game was about us playing dumb. Our avatar in the game starts off empty of any knowledge of heaven. And it got to find all the knowledge of heaven in the game. So the people in the game that's looking up and asking about the stars, the NPCs and the agents start targeting them like, yo, they going to fucking start getting the other players out the game. If ain't nobody playing this shit, the game ain't making no money. Money is power. But my thing is this right here. We're the currency that goes into the machine like a quarter in a video game. So my yep. thing, you know what I'm saying? So the crazy shit is like the game objective is to realize you in a game. Because when you enter the game, we strip all your knowledge away when you say, hey, man, I want to play that game called life. And they said, well, now, mm. wait a minute. When you go up in that thing, you're going to forget this whole conversation right here. Hmm. Brother, listen, I got That's a live a video time. I made. I, I, na I titled it The Game Called Life and How to Win. Because they say don't hate the player, hate the game. But mm. you don't hate the fucking game if you're winning. So this is the whole thing. If you're winning at life, you don't hate the game. You want to keep going. As soon as they want to quit, yes. you're like, don't quit now, bro. Yeah, don't quit now. buddy. And you know what's crazy about that, bro? That when Neo woke up, that's when he really started to enjoy the Matrix. He went under the Matrix so much, man, I could go in this bitch and kick ass. Like, the best way to play the game is when I beat it and it gives me the cheat code now. When you unlock everything. Because when you was trying to Jackpot. beat the game. Right, because I remember mine is Grand Theft Auto. Like, when you got missions going on and you didn't beat the game, you don't unlock free mode. Free mode is where... Unlimited money, unlimited everything. Uh, it just all the codes is everything is unlocked. Now, guess what? At that point, the game don't even have an objective no more, but it's fun than a motherfucker. See there? We and you know what to do? We you re know what to do at that point? Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know what you do at that point, brother, when, when mm -hmm. it's free mode? You go mm -hmm. back to square one. History repeats itself. God knows itself. It goes back into ignorance you you go back into the mouth of the monster because you god you know you're gonna come back out it's basically gate uh, gda five but we're waiting for six right now <laughs> you know because yeah. we played out everything bro we go That's, to the next level hey bro sanchez shalom no I, I appreciate you nemesis hey thank you for that bros for reals you know because hey you thank you man for, for you coming up history, thank right? you for coming up my bro. brother David touch I want to go back to touch bro Sanchez you talked about touch earlier and I was speaking earlier about neurons and mirror neurons and contagion so when, when we're dealing with those things we're we're being touched by events going on around us but it's not necessarily a finger it's not necessarily a hand but it's the environment that's touching your existence and then allowing you to express in a, in a different way than you had previously expressed. Like you said, we come here as a blank slate, an empty vessel. 
and then this vessel is filled, right? Just going into some kind of spiritual stuff. But yeah, no, touch is a big thing because I believe that we we do not have five senses. We only have one. And it's the sense of touch. And I'll uh, I'll yield from here. Mm. I like. I think part. all five senses could be a part of the illusion. All five well, senses, well, the sixth sense could be common sense, because they tell you don't believe your eyes, don't believe this, don't believe your intuition, don't believe what you think you know, you know what you inherently know. A baby doesn't need to know how to suck its breast of the mother. Yeah, I think the senses, right, are the senseis. They are the teachers. Exactly. Like, Ooh. because, and, and then the senses are the sciences. Like, we use, the spirit is in a body. And the spirit is trying to understand the simulation that the body inhabits through something that the bodies use called senses. If you think of, a the like, they give you, like, the Mars rover, and they create these rovers, and we know space is fake, but let me show you some. When they create a rover, though, they say, well, we want it to have a scooper so it can pick up dirt and test it, and it can smell this for us and taste that for us. But this robot ain't got a tongue. It ain't got hands to feel. But the concept of what is tasting or feeling is transmitted back to us in data. So what I'm saying about the rover, even though I know Mars don't exist, it's a bunch of bullshit. That concept is that the body is the rover of the soul. So it's an instrument and a vehicle that the soul is using to experience another world, but it's only can do it through this instrument. So now it becomes a matter of how well I experience the world is how well my rover's instruments are working meaning the senses how i smell touch and and think about this the ability to see smell touch and all that are senses but the one that's processing those senses and sensations is the mind so ultimately it boils down to not how full your senses are not how many senses you're using but the quality of, by which you're processing the signal for any given one of the senses. And to make that example go home, you can have a person that can't see. They're blind. They can't smell. They know's gone. But they can feel. And their sense of feel can be so strong that they will start to get superhuman abilities to where that person can touch you and see how you feeling because they ain't seeing or they lost the ability to see and smell these other senses are getting more powerful because these senses are like the the the, the multiple headed beast leviathan when you kill one the other ones get stronger so the last sense is the sense of intuition and you don't need that in the earthly realm so when you kill all of the senses that govern the body, sight, smell, and all that, all that energy that was allowing a reality through those sensory glands now gets consolidated and it goes to the last thing left, which is just pure mind. And when that happens, the mind busts up out this bitch. The mind is pulling all of the energy it was used to experience reality in the simulation where we need to smell, touch, hear. But the mind itself creates a whole nother version of the self in a whole nother universe. And that version of you in that universe got its own set of senses. It got its own touch, smell. See, the mind is above the senses because it's mind over matter and the senses is only used to interact with matter. The mind actually creates the senses when it creates the goddamn material world in the simulation. And when it destroys the world, it destroys sight, smell, touch and all that on a secular level. Our, the, the real truth behind, put it this way, if I gave you back data from a rover that I sent to another universe, you'll be able to understand that universe to a certain degree. 
but you will never be able to understand it like going for yourself. Interpreting data versus experiencing yourself is the difference between the soul and the base reality and the soul and the body. The soul experiencing, trying to experience reality through the body will never get a true interpretation. Just like you trying to explore the ocean with a drone versus you being a scuba diver. <laughs> See, you never felt the ocean. You explored it like a third person view through a drone. But what if you can fly in the sky like a bird and beat a drone? That's the mind. The mind is not the instruments used to experience the simulation. The mind is that which creates those experience and the simulation itself. When El created the Elohim, the mind created the senseis or the teachers to remind the fucking body to, excuse me, to remind the soul that it ain't a body. That's all the senses for. That's why they're teachers. They're senseis. Ultimately, your sense of smell, hmm. touch, sight, and all that is going to lead you where? Up out the body to the other side. <laughs> Bro Brother Sanchez, you know how, how senseis in movies, they always be given like one-liners. They be given like riddles. They be saying the same shit since day one that the, the student comes on. They'll give them something, you know, and only in the end they'll understand. Like wax on, wax off. It's a car they was waxing on a window. But then later he understood, ah, it's the movement, you know. So listen even to the spelling of Elohim. It's L. Oh, him. You know, that shit is comedy, mm. man. God is like the, the, the best comedian, the best songwriter, mm -hmm. the best movie writer ever yeah that shit hey, crazy brother, if you don't mind i would like to unlock him for the first time for everybody up in here bro sanchez i respect hey, you. And, and salutes to the big sister time. alicia big vibes much love friday night vibes man y'all got it for sure yo listen salutes, unlock panel. Him. salutes bro sanchez can we unlock big salutes him to, right to, now? The, to the round table let's drop the link again too yep hey, bro, i have to look for that bitch yeah, hey, David. Nemesis, thank you for that. Yeah, Yo, David. Hey, you, you got it. Hey, bro, Sanchez, Salute. you know who I am? I'm David the Magic Negro Show, bro. You I know evolved. I know who you are. You know you've been around, man. You mod you modded up on all my channels. You've been been, yeah. been <laughs> thing, man. I love you, bro. I love you so much. I love man. you too, you're, bro. You already you're know. So deep and so thoughtful. You're more thoughtful than I could ever be, because I'm more like a I'm a, I'm a soldier, like. I'm just like, let's go get them, like, get rid of them, you know, but but you need somebody sitting back and saying, wait a minute, let's, there's more, we need a force. We need a force of people to to get this done. You know, we can't just drop in yes, sir. three or four people. We don't yeah. need another bro Sanchez. We don't need another David. That's why we got bro Sanchez. That's why we got David. That's why you're not like him. Salute. That's why you're Salute a soldier. Bro Sanchez. A, a salute, salute to Dane David. General. I feel the same. I uh -huh. I, hey, Dave, you took my you took my sentiment, man. I feel the same way about bro, but I'm like you, sir. Soldiers. You, you know what I like about like this community, though, man. It's almost like, like I've been new y'all niggas because it be like uh, <laughs> some of y'all niggas is newer than other ones, and some of y'all been around older than other ones. But I don't peep it. It's like all of y'all just been round. It's like hey, that, bro, that Sanchez, eating energy. You know it, it's like I'm gonna let the, you know my yeah. jacket. I went to the Navy in 1996. I left in 2004. Right, U.S. Navy. Reach that yeah. to the building. I'm just letting you know, like that's who I am. Like that's why we get along. You and know, that, the, I respect you, the, uh, the 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 chair force. <laughs> hey, guess what, man. That right there, when they used to call us the chair force, it's crazy because that's a, that's a dope joke. I was in the mm -hmm. Army National Guard and I was in the Air Force. And the reason why when I got out the active duty that I decided to go Army for National Guard, because I wanted to say, well, I was in the Army too, not just the chair force. You know, I wanted <laughs> to say, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
Because that, <laughs> that is something that is true. Like, we have it a, little, a lot easy in the Air Force. It's a lot of tech shit and all that. And when you look at the Marines and Army, they be stunting on you like, yeah, nigga, we tough as hell. Like, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. <laughs> so it's crazy well, that he did that, though. You know. Hey, bro, yeah. but hey, but because I was in the Navy, I got to fight off motherfuckers be like, oh, you probably gay. I, I love gay people. I don't got no problem with gay people. So just because I brought it up, I, I love y'all. I was trained to you know, like accept everybody for who they are. Like, who cares what you do in private? But with that being said, uh, like, yeah, I got to push off people, you know, talking about I'm gay. But I did meet a lot of dudes that was in the Navy who were gay. I asked them and they were like, yeah, I'm gay. I'm well, like, oh, listen, shit. I'm going to show you something real quick, bro. <laughs> and you know what? That yeah. proved not, not all jokes aside. Let's get up and go deep with you on that. That's true that the Navy God, is. The, listen, the Navy is the gayest. Now, hear me out, though. Just just hear me out. One second. <laughs> hear me out for one second. Think about this, y'all. You got a bunch of dudes on a ship like a bunch of dudes in prison. So what does this teach us? That they know what the fuck they doing with this gangster shit, with this prison shit and all that. Because even a person in the Navy know that a bunch of niggas around you every day concentrated. Because to me, bro, all gangsters is on some slyway gay shit. Because I'm saying y'all around too many niggas every day to prison culture. Bro, man, look here, man. I'm going to just fall back right there. But that's a whole nother topic that need to comes up on some real shit, though. <laughs> I, wanted to, I, want, I wanted to tap into that because y'all talking about the army and shit. Um, like, I believe that if you even think about the police, like, if we have our own communities, we the police, understand? So there's nothing wrong with the concept. There's just r something wrong with the power structure and corruption of it, right? So now when I look at the Navy or the Army or gangs, I'm like, yo, gangsters or criminals, I should say, people in gangs, they got like the right mindset, but they got the wrong target. They don't, they, they cannot aim. They aim at, the, at each other, you know? They don't aim at the system. They trying to fight for a block instead of buying the block. You know, like owning their shit. So I'm like, okay, the Navy, cool. My parents were both like in the army. They met each other there. So I was raised very militant. Um, but that being said, I'm like, we should create our own. And you have it. Basically, you got soldiers. They just stepped up to the channel and they was like, look. And I've seen uh, Dean multiple times on this show, right? But it's like this. They're telling you they're soldiers. They're telling you, look, you, we ain't got the patience you got. We don't want to study the way you can. We, we don't have the patience. We're going to study you and we're going to target whoever we got to target. You know, if you're going to give us a target, you say go, they're going to go. I got a lot mm -hmm. of people like that in Amsterdam, too. I'm from Amsterdam. Uh, so you got oh, a big man, community, so brother. What you got rolled up? He's, listen, Back. this guy is smoking man. better than everybody. He's smoking man. better than everybody, Stop bro. Stop playing with me, man. Oh. I, Yo, yo, don't, yo. Bro, Hold don't, on, listen, yeah. listen. Don't tell me I got peoples in Amsterdam much as I like to smoke. Don't tell me yo, that, bro. If you come to Amsterdam, you're good because we we, we, right. we we fuck with you. And I got a lot of people that are like the people on the channel that are telling me like, bro, I'm, I don't have the patience you got. You know, I don't have the patience. I'm writing a book. I'm uh, making a lot of music. I'm stepping a lot of, making a lot of effort to... Put the message out, you know, and you studying you and the shit you be doing. I'm like, nah, because there's a lot of master teachers. I came to you uh, through divine being divine from the heart book, you know. Mm -hmm. He told me like, yo, this guy is a master teacher. I Where? studied Santos Bonacci since I'm young, but I never knew about Listen, you. Divine until a few months, being but... is, is, is a phenomenon. He's a, yep. a, a fellow Eden Knight. He's not human, just like me. Just like y'all niggas. <laughs> yeah, salute saying. to that brother. <laughs> Non-human. Prince Nemesis, I love you, brother. I'm I glad I'm too. Here. Prince I'm Nemesis glad I came here. Salute. Yes, sir. I got to meet you. To hear you speak, yeah. brother. Nice to meet they you. Definitely. Right. I've been watching Yo. and I've been look. Yeah. I'm in Amsterdam, so the time difference is like six hours. I've been waiting to get on life. I be watching this shit every day, man. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm waiting because I'm ready. I'm I'm doing this in real life. You know, I got a company. It's called Mace Kingdom. May our creation elevate. And I'm making movies, mm. music, 
podcasts, all these type of things. So linking with people that are doing this shit for real is all we got to do, brother. It's all we got to do. You're going to sleep, uh, bro, sleep listen, soon, right, man? I'm a, I, so I ain't you, sleeping, man. I sleep when I'm dead. Yeah, that's Look, how I'm going show... Salutes to my fellow European, by the way. Six in the morning here in Finland. Yes, sir. It's five over. Hey, here. man, Look, you I know what? You I got to arrange some with all of my Europe people to where <clears throat> we got to be able to go outside and point up at the sun from different parts of the world just to debunk the globe, just to show them like, yes, you sir. know. <laughs> so we got to do that. I have movie. a girl in Detroit, right? And I be talking to her on the phone sometimes, and I'm like, look, we both see the sun right now. Ain't that crazy? You know what I'm saying? I be seeing the moon, the sun. I'm like, nah, this 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 shit can be like this. Mm. The yeah, way they plant tell it. But those I know seeds, it ain't, man. Plant those seeds. It's yeah. it's how they say, uh, in like Hermes Tahuti, how it says like all truths are half truths. The way they would say, like, all right, um, the earth is flat. The earth is a globe, a sphere. It's like, nah, it ain't none of that. It way beyond what you're trying to make it. Yeah. You know, it way beyond. The, so earth, the earth is a series of stacked rain magnets. Yo, how about somebody in my waiting room? They call Mock Hummy fan. And nigga, I'm a Mock Hummy fan. If you know who <laughs> Mock Hummy is, nigga, I got love for you. Like, I fucks with Griselda. I was just talking about them niggas. Uh, Come wait a machine, motherfucking uh, West Side Gun. This nigga said Mock Hummy fan. You don't know about Mock Hummy, nigga. But nah, let's go ahead. Back to the bill, man. <laughs> nah, I'm fucking with him, though. Nah, you got Bro, it, though. We get, we're getting you. deep tonight, though. I'm, I'm fucking with this. I'm going to go long. Yeah, you can. I'm going to go live long as hell, man, because, like, I might even open the slides back up. Real talk with you. You got it. Please yeah, I got open the slides up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Please. Say less, my brother. Teach. You ain't have to do nothing but say Teach. that. It's on now. Teach. Hold up, bro. You about Teach. to say something to me. Let me, let me, hold on a second. Man, this is all hey, it's hey, about, hey, man. We, we hey, got Prince, everything we need. You dropped some knowledge, man. You dropped some knowledge. Sir, thank you, brother. Thank you, you man. I thank you, brother. You will see me man. more often. I got you. Look, yeah. you this too, is baby. all it's about. I this is all it's about, man. man. Like, if we just understand this at a certain point, bro, there's not you cannot leave the house with without hearing this. Everybody gonna be on this, but not because everybody gonna jump on the hype, but because people who are not like this are not gonna stay. You know, this is like in the Bible, in Revelation, it says, like, uh, not even in Revelation, like, fuck Revelation. In all of the Bible, it will say, you, the kingdom of God is within. <clears throat> Ye are gods, you know. Um, in the prayer of our Father, they would say, let the kingdom of heaven be done on earth. Let it be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is heaven on earth, you know. So we're living in a time where Armageddon is about to happen. Look at all the wars. You know, in my in Dutch language, the word war means confused. So when you're at war, it literally means in my language you're in confusion. So and uh, English and Dutch both come from the Latin language. You know, so we we use French words like restaurant, toilet, you know, so we use English words like school sexy like all these words are universal in some way but this is like uh, the 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 live stream about uh the tower of babel right yeah but no, listen language, listen right? listen check it out Bro, check it out me. check it out check me out check me out the tower yeah. of babel is the spinal cord column in the central nervous system look at that and uh i want to go ahead with the with the slides because your spinal cord, right? It appears in the simulation as a physical object, but on the other side, it's a void. Yeah. This is what it looked like right here, a crack. Your, the thing that's separating your left ear from your right ear is literally a split in the universe. 
I'm saying the thing that's splitting everything in the center, why everything here has this same dual makeup, a left hand, right hand, right? Left brain, right brain. This split that's going through the middle of everything is splitting Damn. through the entire physical construct. And it's because you're part of the physical construct, it becomes your spinal cord. And at the top of this split in the universe, there's a bright star called Polaris. At the top of your spinal cord, there's a bright star called a pineal gland. <laughs> See, this whole shit is a fractal code. We are built like your body is a fucking supercomputer on the other side. So yeah. when you get out of your body is when you get to the other side, you're going to realize you were electricity flowing through a big ass quantum computer. Let me show you something. What they calling the Iron Maiden is this damn quantum computer. You think I'm making this up? Watch this. They told you that the human is, is blood. Blood is what we need to live as humans. We need blood, but blood is iron. And if you look at the iron mating, this is your Alistair Crowley bodysuit. Why you, let me just show you something real quick, man. <laughs> look at here. This is called a man of sin. This is the synth man. Why are they poking him all on his body? He's in his iron maiden. This iron maiden suit that we see right here. This is a tomb in Asgard. You remember when Neo was in his pod? You're literally sleep inside of a tomb in Asgard, and all of them spikes are the wires that was hooked up to Neo. He got to unplug all of them spikes out of him for this shit can open up. Now, let me show you some real shit real quick, though, about all of this, if y'all don't mind. Just let me cook a minute. Because the brother was just cooking. He opened up this doorway, and that's why I like these panels, because people don't realize when they leave, and I, they, be, they be leaving like, I'm opening up the panel, and they think that my people ain't got no knowledge, and they missing out, bro. The shit get even deeper when I open up the motherfucking calls. And check this shit out right here. Watch this, right? They sleeping on y'all. I'm going to show them why they shouldn't sleep. Remember I was showing y'all, oh, I got to pull that shit back up. Now that I got y'all on here, hold on. Oh, man. Remember the dude in the brain? Hold on. Let me, let me take, damn, I got so many tabs open. Who can see my tabs from the call? Tell them I ain't capping. That shit look crazy. God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. More, more. Hey, that look like some watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> man, donate, man. Cash that Damn. man, man. Cash I gotta, that shut, man. I gotta yeah. shut some of these motherfuckers before I can even say anything else. Let me shut hey, the, the hell up. The vesicle piscus, bro, <laughs> that look like watermelon, man. The vesicle Holy piscus. Biblios. This shit Ooh. is ridiculous. God hey, damn. Prince Nemesis, man, bro. Yes, sir. This is what I was looking for. I didn't yeah, know you was drunk, yeah, bro. Yeah. I got so much to ask you. Because the East India Trading Company, that had everything yes. to do with Dutch, but Dutch comes yes. from Latin. Yes, sir. Oh, my. I, I wanted to say something about the Tower of Babel. While he's looking for the slide, I'm going I'm to I'm yeah, I'm yeah, I'm drop it real quick. I, I found that it looked, this going to give me okay. about, look, 30 seconds to a minute, and then y'all take, take it your and time, I'm going to fall back. So, like I was saying about the man of sin who got all of those needle. Damn, I got so much shit open. This going to be it right here, I swear. Hold on. Let, 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 let me Take just say time, this. Take your time, bro. Take your time, bro. Take Watch. Your no, here we go. 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 Do all of y'all remember that scene on The Matrix where all of them cards are plugged into Neo? In the pod. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that's yeah. what this. Like that, dog. That's what this man of sin yeah. is. He's basically a. He's. This is not a human body. This is a big like the 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 night suit, the big metal suit. That's why I'm telling you, this is the Iron Maiden right here, and all of those spikes are the wiring that's going to make your 
different sex organ, your stomach, appetite, your pride in your chest. Each one of these cards is, is different things that it help you experience the fucking simulation. So we went into this as a game. And Alistair Crowley, watch this. Let me show you something. Alistair Crowley, you'll see him, right? And he got this hat on like that for a reason. That's that Iron Maiden. And then he got all of the lines going back to the true self, which is the Eye of Ra. That's all of those spikes, all of these neural veins, all of these cracks in the, in the brain. Those are the same ethereal magnetic ley line cracks in the Taurus field. See, the Dogon said that our firmament or Taurus field is a cracked egg. It's an egg with a bunch of cracks in it. And those cracks, like I showed you with Plato uh, version, if you take what Plato was saying, which he's showing you the firmament dawn right here. All of the lines that's coming from Polaris, these are cracks. And if you got one from the bottom coming up, now you got this egg with cracks in it. This is Amma's egg, and I'm going to show you that in the future. But if you look at the brain, that's what it is, man. That that highest break that I showed you, I showed you in, in Plato right here, like how at the top of his shit is this ball, and it's a hole that's open. This ball is breaking a hole into the underworld, which is allowing the light of the true self to shine into the, the hollow spirit. And once the light of your true self start to shine into this thing, it fills it up because it's so bright. And that becomes the Taurus field around your body. You, you coated this thing with your energy. Each human is making their own universe and layering it over the universe. So the, the universe it's the universe that exists of all, put it this way, each human is creating their own version of the universe in their mind. But the universe is the universe that exists as a collective of all of our universes together. And that's what the world outside is. And let me basically, I put this together to show y'all how the world is created by all of us. And that if, if you took every human from the earth, the earth won't exist because basically the magnetic ley lines are us on the other side pulling the strings on our puppets that's in the middle of this earth circle. That's why the sky, the stars and the constellations are synced to our actions and events and, and, and world events on earth because we exist beyond the sky. We exist on the other side, right? And, and, and what's happening is our body is connected to our soul on the other side. And these magnetic ley lines are, are what all of us are using from the other side to connect the mind with the body. So Plato did it like this. Here go the mind, which is this ball up here, the pineal gland. And it got all of these strings that's wired through the body from the brain. And it's pulling old. Hold on, let me mute up everybody. Somebody got a live wire. And, 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 and see, the mind pulling the strings to control the puppet, which is the body, can visually be seen. Meaning, if I cut your damn brain open, you can see the man and black man that was up there controlling that body. Like, this shit is really deep when you think about it, bro. Because this ball up here represent the highest point. This ball up here. That's the world outside the cave. That's a fucking opening that's in every single human's brain to allow the power that is flowing through the wires to come from the other side. Think about that, right? All of the electricity in my house, all of the gadgets running, the energy coming from the other side, the other side of what, Sanchez? The wall, because it's plugged into the outlet. And the electricity flowing through my computer to come from the other side, the whole other energy plant. But what I'm saying is it's coming from a, the energy ain't, don't, it ain't created in creation. It flows through creation, through this hole 
and er think about it. Everybody is basically a fucking robot. And if somebody say, well, a robot need a, a power source. Yeah, we, we, we fucking plugged into all the North Pole via this wireless beam of light. There's a tethering line coming from your damn head to the North Pole, just like bumper cars got that big ass pole that go up and touch the ceiling. And where that, you know what I'm saying with bumper cars? And if that ain't touching the ceiling, the car ain't powered because the energy coming from above. From the, so every bumper car got this, look, let me show, oh, that's a good way to teach this. Let me show you this. The pole on that bumper car is like your spinal cord. It ascends to the heavens. I know you saying, Brother Sanchez, my spinal cord ain't that tall. Yes, it is. You have more than one body. That's what I was saying about them five kashas. You got seven different spinal cords. Watch this. And in each of these bodies, you got a spinal cord. And the energy is transformed from one spinal cord to the next one. That's called passing the baton. See that scepter that they do in the race? The track is like the flat earth with all the rings. This damn card that go to the heavens, remember that right there creates a star in the sky. In the Sam's game, they got this little diamond above his head that follow him everywhere. There's a, sky, a star in the heavens for all of us that, that it, it, and, and think about it, it's, it's at Asgard at Polaris. You got all of these beams of light coming from this one light source. And we all tethered to this energy source right here. And that's how we get power. When you unplug your line from your body, your car can't work no more. If I go and break one of these little lines right here, them person's car going to lose power. Because what? I ripped them. Rip. R.I.P. You dead. Your car dead. R.I.P. See, that's what ripping is. See, when we pull that silver line and, and pull the plug, that's, that's so, the soul leaves the body. But the energy that was in the body is who the real you is. The ro the, 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 see, the robot ain't really the robot. He's the energy flowing through it. Think about this, right? The energy flowing through your body allow you to manifest a unique personality that can't nobody else manifest. But once that energy ain't flowing through your body, your body act like every other dead person. It does nothing. There's nothing unique about a corpse. They're all the same. They do nothing. I'm <laughs> just saying. That proves that the energy that was in your body was who you was, and when that left, you just was dead matter, like a rock on the ground. It, like, come on, like, what make this rock unique from that rock? You see what I'm saying? So my thing is, the only thing I'm saying, we're all shattered pieces of once. I'm, I've been going too damn long to have a call. Let me, let me just shut, uh, no, shut down right work. there. I just wanted to point out the fact that the, the bumper car was a good example to show you how this little hole in the top of the brain, that's your line that leads to the heavens so you can power through the body. That's, that's what it I'm is, saying, bro. like a bumper car. Hey, that looks like a peanut butter cookie with a mustache. I was about to say it's something about the mustache, bro. That shit crazy. That's, uh, it looks like the guy from the, the... Hey, but let me, let me finish Monopoly it. Though. like game. a spaceship. It looks like a spaceship. Circuit, because this is really important. Because in Spanish, wait, does anybody know how to say mustache in Spanish? Mustachio. Okay, that's one word, but there's another word. Bigote. Yay! Hey. Thank you. Now, bigote. So now, black. Let's get black again. Okay, move from Spanish. Let's get black. So when you think of a bigot. A bigot. Damn. That's the, that's the word in Spanish for bigote. 
there's a song about that. <laughs> yeah, so mustache. Now, the book 1984 that was published in 1948, written by George Orwell, spoke about the character that they had like as a picture, right, on a wall, and he had a mustache. And y'all remember like maybe three or four years ago, they had these uh these ad campaigns. It was everywhere. It was on the, the, the radio. It was on the TV um, where they had a mustache. And and sometimes you just had just the mustache. Well, you just had the bigote. Well, check it out. Right. Yeah. I don't want to spend too much time on it on a mustache, but I do want to share something with y'all real quick. And that's interesting what you were saying about the mustache, though. But it does resemble that. And uh, I just want to uh get to a couple of little points about like on the simulation and stuff. <clears throat> Some of the stuff I was saying about the Sumerians was that a lot of people think it's dealing with a geographic place on earth, but it's the summit area. And and then listen, I put up this quantum computer and the hold on, let me let me just do this too. I wanted y'all to really weigh in on like some of the stuff that I let me do that. Let me brought, do that. Brought let me do to that. The I got something because, for that. Because check this out, right? And I'm gonna let you get it. I've been All in right. this community a long time, and I've spoken to a lot of the top comedic priests. They like to talk about Saqqara, but I never heard nobody say that Saqqara is the Egyptian word for Shakara, Saqqara, Shakara. And that the Egyptians would have taught you about the chakra system and the earth system, the Tower of Babel. The whole world was building these towers to teach this one spiritual system. And if everybody is on one accord all over the world, you will create a singularity and the hive mind where the dream world becomes the Internet now. And you see what I'm saying? And so this is why they didn't have different languages when they was building these Babel towers yeah. because they was telekinetic. And then they only took away Man. when they made us close our mind. We lost the ability to communicate across long distances via telekinesis and the mind. So we needed the God mind. Damn. Then, then we had to find new technology to connect the world. Here come the internet now. Here come telephones. Here come all that when we already had the technology built in us. Hey, pagers. Remember the pagers? Yeah. Hey, Prince mm -hmm. Nemesis, one second. Yes. I want, I want, I'm, I'm here and for you. So that's how the languages, okay. but look, oh, look, gosh. that's how okay. the languages was created. Because when we, Bro, I got it, listen, 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 right listen, now. listen, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 um, wait. Listen, just let me get this out. There was a time on earth where heaven was on earth. What that mean was that the mindset we got in Eden, which is a hive mind of us agreeing to create heaven. But now we are agreeing to create heaven on earth. So now the Galactic Federation has descended with us onto the earth. And the first humans just rebuilt heaven on the earth. They rebuilt our spiritual home as a hive mind on, and they were Eden nights. And they brought the knowledge from Eden and they built these structures all around the world to remind them of our homeland in Eden, because this is what we see in Eden, Mount Maru, which reminds us of the Netters. So only thing I'm saying is how we're connected with these with this how Sakara is chakra. They telling you that Sakara is a necropolis, but there's no one buried there. All of the Sumerian ziggurats are called burial grounds, but there's no corpses there. So I'm telling you, they was teaching that the earth was the realm of the dead and that we are the walking dead in the earth realm after the great fall. That was the knowledge. But now they lost that because the religious order came stopped us from building these towers all around the world. Stopped the knowledge of Shakara, Sakara, Zakaru. And got us into worship and the false idols. That's all I was saying. This Bible story is true, man. That we literally had one language and one spiritual system. And that these ziggurats all over the world represent the, that old order that was destroyed. And it gave us these languages that we speak in today. 
that one that long ago. That's why I said this is a deep conversation if y'all really want to go into it because that means not too long ago, that was just one language on earth. That means these languages is new as hell. Yeah, that's why there's so many similarities, you know? Yeah, I agree with you. Um, Prince Nemesis. Hey, hey, I, yes, I, I'm telling you, I got the business. I got the business for, for everybody. So, so okay, so not Sakara, but I'm looking at the screenshot. But Kakara, like, because the CH has a K mm -hmm. sound. Nobody can deny it. So it's that cool. is, yeah. when you say chakra, it is, it's not chakra, it's actually kakara. Now, kakarat. Kakarat. Okay, you can let, put let a me, T Let me explain something to y'all what's going on right now, right? Let, let me build let, oh, oh, Hold on, no, 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 no. This is what you're going to do, right? To say what it ain't, it's the opposite of syncretism. When you say that um, it's uh, whatever the hell you just called it. To say it's not something because it's that, you should say it's also this. And now we add that to the collage. That's how syncretism go. What they're calling a ziggurat comes from the word zakaru. The word zakaru is, it, it is the same word sakara and shakara. And there's nothing, no, but bro, I know I'm spot on with this syncretism right here. So ain't nobody going to tell me what it ain't. They just going to tell me, hey, it's this too, man. I ain't going to hear nobody tell me what it ain't. As then we're going to hear that. We're going to hear that. We're going to hear that tape stop sound. Now it's a debate thing that happen. I put a lot of work in this shit. I know what I'm talking about. I'm thorough with the research. Hey, you I'm can the, add to zoo. it, but you can't destroy it. You can you add can't. to it, but you can't destroy it. Go ahead. No, I'm in the Zoom with you. And so I see three different words, and and I'm I'm having fun with every one of those expressions because they all are exactly the same thing. Uh, maybe we should say that each one of those words is an expression of vertical. I'm telling you that the only thing different with these words is semantics. If somebody say, hey, man, let me teach you about how you ain't really alive right now and that the body is the dead soul and that when the body died, the soul awakened and that the earth is a big ziggurat or shikarat, a shikara system, solar system, and at the top of this pyramid, it ain't a capstone because that's an empty spot that represent a dimension that's the unseen world that would have been the hidden one, our moon, at the top of the Egyptian mm -hmm. Jedi pillar. Tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. That's the pineal <laughs> gland. That's the Brother, motherfucker. Brother Sanchez, that, can you bro, go? Bro, that's the motherfucker that when they cut your brain open, they say all the willpower that's flowing through this mm -hmm. man body. Watch this, because I don't think y'all really hearing what I'm saying. Watch this shit, bro. When the doctor cut your goddamn brain open, I just want you to give me one minute, 60 seconds. Watch this. Watch this. Count them right now. When the doctor cut the brain open, they say everything that we call willpower that said, I want to go get me something to eat. And you get up and go to the refrigerator. That's coming from the mind. You, you, you act out your thoughts. And this is what the pineal gland is doing. You see what this plasma ball doing? When I showed the hole in the middle of the brain with the man pulling the strings right there. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Look at this. That is, so my thing is, right? The one that's giving manifesting its will through the body ain't the body. That's that's a whole nother you and another yes, rep. But the thing, yeah. what I'm saying is this right here, and I'm a yield of flow, man. Cause that shit, because real talk, only thing I'm saying is that, uh, and I forgot what the hell I was gonna say. But now the pineal gland no, and the no, what, what and I'm the saying Iron Man. Is, check it out. When the doctor cut our brain open, they got instruments that can detect. That what we call in willpower, what they're calling uh, central nervous system activity. They mm -hmm. say that uh, yeah. before, listen, just hear me out with no, with no amen and just let me so I can finish. 
They said before you was conceived, before you became a solid being in your mama fetal bag, they actually can detect the energy in that empty water before you was formed. That meant that the invisible mind landed into the mama fetal bag and started to form a body around itself. How did it do it? It stirred up the liquids of life in that bag. It's like if I put soap in my bathtub but don't stir it, you won't get no suds. If I stir it, the suds are formed. The suds is when the spirit become flesh. Because a vortex enters the mama fetal's bag and the, cre and the recipe for life is already in that bag. That vortex, which is the central nervous system, which shaped just like a tornado, enters the bag and they can tell you a baby is there for they can see the body. That's called conception. That happened before birth. Now watch this, right? When you die, they tell you there's an energy still leaving the brain after your heart through beating. That's the sole stream of information that you was calling a personality manifesting its will through the body. When the body checks out the energy that was flowing through it ain't through yet. That's what I'm telling you. What am I saying? Watch how crazy this is, right? Um, and I'm going to end here. In the middle of our brain, there's an empty chamber. And that right there has always baffled scientists. Because all of the wiring that is, is, is giving the body what's called willpower, all of the veins in your body, they are all going to the spinal cord and making a braid, a braid and coming one. Like at the North Pole, all becomes one. And, all, and that big old braid that is all of the veins in your body, they all go to the same place the pole, the, the, the spinal cord, and they make a braid. And then that braid goes all the way up and get plugged into this chamber. So now science, 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 hold on, somebody uh, smacking in my ears some shit or something going on. Hot mics for no reason. Hold on a second, though. So check this out, right? All of the veins in your body, goes to the spinal cord, make a braid, and that braid goes up the spinal cord and into the brain stalk, and it plugs into what's called the mind. So what the earliest scientists wanted to do, just like this plasma ball, they said, listen, all the wiring in a human is leading to somewhere in the center and highest point of the human, that's at the top of the skull in, in this chamber. All of your wiring is going there. They say, you know what? If we able to see what's there, we'll locate God. Check this out. They opened up the brain and there was nothing there. This became the Egyptian God, a moon, the hidden one. Because this light that I'm showing you here is so bright, 2020 spectrum can't even this light that I'm showing you from the brain is so bright, it's blinding you. And in, in your blindness, it's creating a simulation around you. This is the mind projecting the body, and the body exists within the simulation. So you cannot see the realm of the mind or the hidden one till you get out the body. That's what I was saying. But so they got the technology to prove that our soul exists and that there was an energy that predated our body and that they still can detect when our body die because we're immortal. That's the immortal part of us. This is facts. I'm, I'm going to yield the flow right there. That's all. I, I had to get that out, though. I wanted to mention something real quick and I'll be out. <laughs> um, no, I was just, when, when you put up those slides and I've seen it before you did it with the, with us living on like, uh, with the rings above each other, like, uh, that mountain, I forgot what you, uh, what you had. It looked like a, a wedding cake. Um, but that there's a scene in that movie gremlins at the end when they're, when they're fighting the last gremlin with the white hair. He's standing next to this fountain 
the the same imagery that you put up there in the slide kind of and it just i feel like it's symbolic almost like the demon is looking over what we really live on like next to that found with the smoke and the bubbles and it was ringing each other layered up and i just thought of that you put that up maybe about a month ago and that that image came to my head when i was watching gremlins one time and i was like look they tell you the truth right there in that movie but yeah i just wanted to say that and you guys are doing a great job and thanks for having me brother sanchez hey yes, yo sir. thank you all. Mm -hmm. i got something for y'all man like brother sanchez could you go back to the slide you had with the tower of babel um Right there. Is, this, what is, is this good? No, uh, well, the one you had three next to each other. Uh, you know what? I need to fucking find that. And, hey, somebody got the... Uh, right, this one, this one. This one good. Good enough. Background. So look, the way you mentioned that the spinal cord is the Tower of Babel, it leads to the... The, the the chamber you mentioned, the empty chamber, the pineal gland, which they would... Yeah. Somebody has to mute themselves. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, 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 uh, hold on, man. Hey, it ain't me. Hey, oh, How my bad, my I'm bad. Uh, Prince Nemesis, I don't know if that's you or not, but check this out, right? Um, yes, sir. Um... This damn spiral staircase, you right, I got you. Okay, so in your Reuben cosmology, you see this little staggered line? That's the spinal mm -hmm. cord leading up to the pineal gland, which is our true home. And it's just the, what they right. call the kundalini rising. The candle is yes, a sir. flame. That kundalini is the word candle. That's the soul rising up to, boom, right there. You got it. So I'm referring to this language you're talking about, where the Tower of Babel links to a language. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm referring to what um, David said about Latin. So the Dutch language and the English language come both from the Latin language. So the word mental in the Dutch language is mental. It's just an extra A added on to the A, right? Mental. But tal itself means language and ment means mind so mental means language of the mind in dutch now watch this so, right it's crazy okay. that you say the word tal t-a-a-l means language yes because if you yes, take sir. a if you take a a off of that and put a k on the end you get talk Woo! talk talk and, yes, and the sir. original form of talking was of the mind for we even open the mouth because listen Man. Our exodus from Eden was working our way down the chakras and our way back home is a kundalini rising, working our way up from the root. So to fall from the crown chakra down, meaning that when we first existed in creation as humans, we didn't even have languages. Why? Our language come from national governments. Governments didn't exist. We existed with the, the universal language that all animals even talk with. And guess what that is? Symbolism, colors, codes. A spider communicates with an enemy by saying, look, you see this red dot on my head? That mean don't fuck with me. So like all of these tattoos and people putting piercings and dots on their foreheads, we didn't have to talk to each other. I believe that the original language was symbolic and that we didn't. But that was before world governments, before English language, all these different languages. Right. I'm telling you all right okay. now, the, the original language was simply symbolism, telekinesis. And that connected the whole world. Yes. And that's why sacred geometry and all that going to bring the puzzle back together and connect it back. Yeah. So I got, like, I, got, I got five points written down for you from like 10 minutes ago from what you were speaking on, right? So the empty chamber, the telekinesis you just mentioned again. So I believe that let's look at thoughts. Thoughts are not yours. If you have a business idea to make Bro Sanchez and you never did it, somebody would have done it and it would have been called Bro David. You know what I'm saying? Or Bro Prince Nemesis, like whatever. Like anybody can take your idea if you do not act on it. So where does thoughts come from? Show me the place to the mind. 
show me the address of the mind. Where can you, where is it? It's not in this physical reality, and, and, right? And, and the crazy thing about it is, is that our thoughts are coming from a whole nother version of ourself that yes. is right here in this little Asgard terrarium. Right? That, that is our true home eating. But so our and thoughts, that's the hive mind. Our, our thoughts are being projected from here. Boom. Think about just let me say this real quick. Think about a ball of light up here. That's the pineal gland. And when it shines, it emit all these light rays. That's the all seeing eye. All of those light rays become a different vein that's connecting to your damn body in the simulation. So when you say where mm -hmm. your thoughts come from, they want to say your brain, but they really, your thoughts don't come from your brain. Your thoughts are flowing through your mind and they're flowing through the body. They don't, they don't originate at the point uh, that you call in the skull. They originate in Asgard and flow through the physical creation. The mind ain't part of yeah. the physical creation. Our mind is up here in heaven in a body that sleep in a dreamlike state. And its will is being manifested in the dream called creation. So whatever you want to do down here is basically what he want to do up here in a sleep state in his dream. And how that work is his will power is projected from above, the will of God. And it creates all of these rays like the Aten symbol. And each of those rays they go and connect to your body like a puppet because this big dome that you see that's called creation, that's really your brain with the brain crack in the middle, lean to your arms and all that. Real talk that yep. this creation And that's the shit, third eye right, right there. Right. It's this the third eye. It's in the middle. Yeah. So what I'm saying, the third eye is the mind. This is Eden, our original home. That's a whole nother you that's sleep. So right now, right? If you dreaming, in a dream, you walking around and you ask somebody, where are my thoughts coming from? Guess what? Essentially, they coming from the version of you that's in the bed, knocked out. But the power that he would have used to exercise his will in this realm, he forfeited it because he laid his body down to go to sleep for the night. And he using that same willpower. To walk around a dream. So the same energy that we call in willpower that say, look, I want to get up and get something to eat out the fridge and you go act that thought out. Right. Or I want to do this. That's willpower. Now, when you dreaming, that power goes into your dream body and you walking around another world saying, look, I want to go do this and you go do it. I want to go do that. You go do that. But so now the thing is, when you lucid dream, that willpower becomes weird because it's like you a dual version of the self. You you two people in one body now and you want to exercise a dual will now. There are certain things you would want to do as this version of yourself in this universe. There are certain things you would want to do in this version of yourself in that universe. And these things would contradict themselves if they, these two versions of you shared the same space and time. Which is why the universe put a different version of you in its own universe. Because if all of these versions of yourself shared the same space, you would be like a set of Siamese twins. One saying, I want to go upstairs. No, I want to go downstairs. You see what I'm saying? So until you learn to basically sync all of these versions to one supreme will, the universe will keep them separated in their own netters. And that's the whole thing hey, about alignment. Yeah, you you guys got it. Hey, bro, Sanchez, I, I want to one for you. I want to speak about the Iron Maiden, bro, and then the fact that the Iron Maiden is a quantum computer. You know, and you showed that image earlier about the king getting spikes in him, and I said that's a voodoo dog, bro. Yeah, we that that's that's already synced it to that. But yeah, yeah. you want to so pull iron, that back? We can go to it. Yeah, so iron, you know, our blood, we got hemoglobin. So iron is a part mm -hmm. of our existence. 
right? And so when our iron spikes, okay, then we need to figure out, okay, what's going on? So if our iron spikes, maybe we can call that hysteria or hysteresis, because these are real words. Hysteresis is a Greek word, but hysteria is also, you know, a Greek word of origin, but it also is English, but it has to do with magnetism, because we were talking about magnetism earlier, because magnetism is important. I, I, I wrote Absolutely. and published my book in 2017 because I love so, everybody. So, so, so dig this, right? Yeah. This dude in the middle of the brain, right? This this hole is the is what's called what they call in the ether. It's the gateway in, that leads to the ether, the other side. So another way to look at this, all of these little veins that you see him pulling toward himself, think of him eating pasta. All of the information that's flowing through your body is an experience that the soul gonna take with it. So it's essentially eating up the data and the experience that you're processing called life. And this hole is its mouth. So the experience look like noodles, rivers of data flowing into a, a tunnel, a drain. And this is this little dude's mouth. And him processing your life experience through the two eyes, right? Think about this, right? His two hands balled up clenching these strings. The, these two holes is what's leading to your left eye and right eye. So he's taking in your whole experience, what you seeing through the body's eyes, and he's pulling it into this hole as electric data and as a holographic experience that he's going to take to the other side. It's like he eating pasta, and the pasta is the pastime pasta. I'm just trying to make it fucking make sense to you of how this shit is. I love interpreting it in different ways. Hey, bro, yeah. you're talking about... Waste management is the name of hey, a dude. I'm, 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 I'm gonna wrap it up. I want to get back to what Prince Nemesis was talking about. I'm gonna wrap it up real quick. So, uh, bro, Sanchez, bro Sanchez was talking about okay, a spiral down, and then Prince Nemesis earlier he spoke about a toilet and a restaurant. Now, a toilet you can use the Hebrew language to solve what toilet means, and then you can use Greek to solve what restaurant means because the word crucify is staros in the Greek language and just put the RE before it. So restaros, and that means to subdue your passion in selfishness. That's what it means to crucify. That's what Jesus was teaching. So he taught about the toilet and restaurant. Hey, thank you, bro Sanchez. I appreciate that. I'm gonna go ahead and mute. But remember, we're all quantum computers, y'all. You're a quantum computer because you got blood in you. You're a quantum computer. Thank you. Yeah, hey, 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 check. Oxygen. Hey, oh, no, you got to Hey, check this out, right? So I was saying all that earlier to say this. This hole in the middle of the brain is a pole. It's a pole, right? And all of these veins are wrapped around that pole. And what it creates is this right here. This story of Vishnu churning the milky sea because all of these people you see participating in this tug of war match, it ain't no different people. Those are the avenues of Vish, uh, avatars of Vishnu. Just like you got all of your, let me show you what this is real quick. Because the churning of the milky sea is not a match that's taking place between a bunch of different people. What's happening is that is different versions of you in each universe. And they all fighting to say, I'm the one. No, nah, I'm the one. I'm the one. No, I'm the one. But the real one is the one that's above all of them. That's ultimately going to pull all of their energy. All of them are false egos saying I'm the one. They false because the one don't speak. He's in the middle, quiet. And that's why they call that tower a Babel Tower, because our original language, we didn't talk. So the real one, you're going to know who the real one, because he's going to be quiet. Everybody else going to be saying, hey, I'm, you know, in the movie, when um, 
the monster turn into your grandma and he stand next to your grandma and you trying to shoot the monster, but and you don't know which one it is. They do that in all the movies. And basically, you always know who the real one because they just say nothing. The fake one going to say, I'm the real one. And that's who you shoot. Pow! In the movie, that happens in all the movies where the monster will shapeshift and try to trick the person. And the one that's trying to oversell themselves, boom, I know you the fake one. You know okay. what I'm saying? Yo, bro. <laughs> oh, that that shit it. crazy. Hey, hey, hey Sanchez, can you link no, in? Hey, check this real quick. Solomon, right? What was the most famous story we know about Solomon, right? When that one woman was like, this my baby, and the other one was like, this my baby. And he was like, I'm going to chop that baby in half and give both y'all a piece. There was one woman that was like, yeah, go ahead, do that. I want my piece. And there was one woman who was like, no, don't do not do that. Don't do that. And then from that understanding, he knew who baby it really was. Like, hey, that's crazy, man. Hey, I know. These stories are crazy, right? Man, I'm t- and yeah, what was that from? Because, man, it's, it's so many. That's Solomon. That's Solomon. That's Solomon in the Bible. That was one of the things he had to judge. In the Bible, okay. Solomon had two women that was like, no, this my baby. This my baby. He was so, like, I'm going to try to do that. You, you know what's crazy? Because <laughs> they talk about Jesus in between the two thieves and he on Mount Calvary. In the story of Vishnu churning the milky sea, he's on top of this mountain, the R- Vishnu. And then as this ancient, walk was up. Look up the ancient picture of the fish in the cross. It's uh, the same thing. I'm going to do it. And the thing about this whole thing is like your real version is in the middle of the earth and it's spinning around. That's what the North Pole doing, the sun and the moon. Like, and I'm going to look it up, brother. Just let me do. I got to I got to show oh, yeah, you cooking. The, you cooking. Yeah. The real version of ourself is in a. Uh, North in a chamber like situation in the North Pole. Like I said, it's concept of the mummy. Right. The way they wrapped you up, you got to spin around and get out. So they tell this story in Vishnu, right? They saying that the real you is wrapped up at the North Pole like a mummy, but they tell it like this serpent wrapping up your tomb right here. But what's happening is as this thing spin around, it's pulling all of the avatars into the middle. And that's when they talk about Jesus and the rapture. The rapture ain't this God that's taking your soul. It's your higher self summoning up all of the lower avatars that was created. When we fail, we fail into all these different universes as different copies. So when they say that we're born, we were burned. That's why I showed you like the Babel Tower is like a CD tower. It's like it's, it's like when they said we was born, we was burned. And the master copy is at the very top. If you ever had one of these, the master copy go at the very top and all the copies is at the bottom. You don't change the master copy. You just swap out the blank CDs and copy the master on them. So this is up here, never changes. And Plato say that in his model. He said that's the unchanging world at the top. Want me to show it to you again? See, I figured this shit all out. Look, Plato said this shit is like a, a CD tower, the Babel Tower. And all the copies get distributed at the bottom from the master at the top, just like this shit show. Right here. See what I'm saying? It's crazy, man. For sure, bro. It's the same thing. That's what they be showing in the movies, man. They show that, like, you have a capsule at the the top and, like, a lot of copies at the bottom. And then it's, like, in a circular uh, thing. So you would see, like, a lot of originals and then a lot of copies and it will go up to the top. That's crazy. The Matrix. Trip off this, right? Trip off this. There's a thing in your eyeball called an optic disc that's at the back that surrounds the retina that projects your reality to yourself in reverse, in inverse. Because we all know how eyes work. We kind of, everybody kind of understands how eyes work, right? Where we see some, we're supposedly seeing stuff upside down before we see it upside right, right? That's what science tells us. But when you break down the anatomy of an eyeball, it's literally the shape of what our realm is. Yeah, and this think about this story of uh, 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 Vishnu 
and the churning the milk of the sea, this symbol becomes your Jewish menorah with all the candlesticks lit, but then they got this tall candlestick in the middle. Let me see if I can find. Because remember now, the word menorah is the man's aura, the aura of man. And if you look at all of these candlesticks with the tallest one in the middle, that's Mount Maru where the true self is at, waiting to unlock like a butterfly out of a cocoon. See, the real Vishnu is in this little chamber. And this war determined, see, it ain't really a war between this side and that side. It's basically that this middle chamber is turning. And as it turns, is reeling in this serpent from both sides. So he's going to get caught up. He's going to get caught. It's going to think about this, right? Think of a pole with a rope tied around. And when you spin the pole, it's going to eat up the rope. It's like a fishing reel. When I reel it in, it's going to wrap around the pole and reel and reel it in. So this is reeling in the snake and bringing all these avatars back home to the center self was santa self with the shaman hat see all the strings lean back to the north look at them and that's why i showed you earlier this right here they all these different avatars of vishnu are merging at the center which why if you look up the etymology for the word maru you get the word mirror and mirror is the root word of merge mir merge maru Everything is merging into one supreme reality. Mirror. Yeah, mirror. That that's part of the uh uh documentary that I got in. I go into the word mirror, yep. mirror being Mary, it being mirror. When we say Mary, when Mary. we say when we say camera, because it don't photosynthesis, co a co synthesis of a photo. Remember earlier, I said mirror, neurons. That's some real stuff. Espejo neurons. I said it in Spanish. Espejo neurons. There we go. Espejo neurons. Look, That's some real stuff. Mirrors. Okay. And, and, and if you look up the word mirror, it go into the word Merry and Merry Christmas. All the variations, bro. Like this where etymology is. So when we talk about Maru, it come from this word mirror. And a mirror is a small pool. Real talk. Look, yes, sir. Uh, let's I was watch about this. To say that in Dutch, a mirror uh, is a uh, pool. A it's small it's lake. a small pool. Now, but you know what that small pool is? Watch this. Cause I, I if you if you cop my documentary, right? This one of the, the Jews are dropping this shit, right? It's simple. Check it out. Maru is the smallest pool. Maru is a small pool that's specific. If you look at the way that this damn universe is set up, what they're calling mirror or Maru, of the word mirror is literally a small pool, and that would be Atlantis according to Plato or the Platonic realm, the smallest pool. Why? Because it's condensed, it's reality, it's compressing. Whereas oh as, as as it expands from the center, it's becoming this big bloated gas giant that's hollow, full of no sustenance. And people in these realms, it's just dead. It's trap music, drill. Ain't no life in it. The higher we go, the more. On to that hold on, seconds. but you gotta let me finish though, bro. Please. Reality okay. is being compressed as we go back up to this point, and it ain't about bigger is better. Technology getting smaller, sleeker, a drive today is smaller, but can hold more data. So when you say sumaru, you're basically saying summary, compression. It's getting condensed right here. So the whole Babel Tower, and then I'm finna pass the mic to you, brother, because like I don't want to act like I'm selling the information. I'm, a, I'm touching on a lot of this in a documentary, but the Babel Tower is like a WinRAR, the, the WinRAR archive, zip file, compressed, summary, summary. All of our life experiences is one of these books. But at the North Pole, all of these incarnations going to be stacked together as one pillar and that's the jedi pillar you will have the knowledge of all of your lifetimes in one being and that's what vishnu represent with all of them heads 
So the, at, at Sumeru, it's a summary of all of our incarnations just summed up into one little file that we call in God, this compressed point in the universe. And this Tower of Babel now is like a Winra logo. So I'm sinking all, making all these connections too. I'm going to fall back, brother. Take your time. Check Actually, this I'm out. Mute Check, up, this out. Check this out. Y'all got Check this out. So you said Meru, a small lake, a small mirror, a small pool, compressed. Uh, bigger doesn't mean better. Cell phones get smaller, right? So there's the saying, less is more, right? So mirror in Dutch, it means a small lake, but mirror also literally the same word means more. It means more. So if you want more of something, you want mirror of that, you know? So less yeah, is more, mirror. Maru, the that's top, right. the, 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 top of this screen share glitch the top of it the real uh, original one is the best one it's the it is more over there and it's the least you know it's like compressed right. all is one over there everything is complete and before, that, before that's what i wanted to add it, it would what does a mirror do it shows you more of your reality right that's literally right. what it does so yeah absolutely correct you're right now here's another <laughs> thing noah noah landed where where did noah land he landed on Mount Ararat, right? That was yeah. the mountain. Now, what was the valley name that he walked his people into? It was called Shinar. I'm, I'm going to answer all these rhetorical questions. The name Shinar literally transfers and the etymology goes into Sumar. He landed in ancient Sumerian territory. So when we go back and look at what that book is really talking about and we do the etymology of these, uh, these words and we learn the definitions of these words, I promise you, this book is trippy as it's a sci-fi okay. Movie. Uh, hey, bro, I want to add to that that whole yeah. mirror concept yeah. right there. Uh, so if Sanchez would do me a favor, I don't have this. Uh, like I don't have the ability to screen share, but type in the old fish and cross symbol, and it is a cross with a man on it, and there's two fish to each side. And if you're looking in the mirror, you duplicate yourself. If that makes sense to say, so there's one fish on one side of the water and yep. another fish on the other side of the water. You can look in water and it's going to be a reflection. Yep. I think another interesting thing about the word the mirror. Yep. Yeah, go ahead, my brother. I hey, think me, uh, another me, interesting that, thing that, about that, the word. I just wanted to yeah. give that brother his props, man. That, hey, y'all brothers going in, man. I was listening in, but I couldn't say that. I'm like, yo, more all oh, that, bro. This, that's yes, what's sir. up. Keep, keep it going for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, just one second, one second. Could you pull the picture up so that people are, you know, at home sitting around and everything able to actually see it? It's called the old fish and cross symbol. It should okay. be the first picture okay. that pop up. Yeah, if you spell mirror like M Y R, and then you spell pier P Y R, it's interesting how they all relate, uh, like to fire, like uh, pyramid. Is that one like, right there, top left. Fire. Sorry for cutting you off. Oh yeah, pyro. No, yeah, 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 Jesus, pyro. pyro. Yeah, like pyro, like mirror, like it's mm -hmm. if you just think like Ra, like the sun god Ra, they all relate to each other. So it's just all interesting to hear. Oh, yeah, this, sure. this this same fish is in Egypt. Uh, it, it it became basically the it swallowed the phallus of Osiris or whatever. You know they I forgot the name of this fish. We can go into it. I mean, it's the ish. I think it's Ishtas. Yeah, but it's also uh, Jesus. I, I've been I spoke about. Yeah, it's Jesus for sure. And then if you turn that fish, the one that is just a single yeah. fish, if you turn it so that the tail is standing up, that's the human aura. I just wanted to point that out. Yeah. And bro well, Sanchez, yeah. I would also like to offer another thing to everybody up here. One thing you need to know is that the Bible was also written in double entendre. Okay, now I'm going to stop. Does anybody not know what double entendre means. I know what that is. It's a teachable moment. Yeah. Teach him, brother. Teach him. Explain it. 
Well, double entendre means that a word has one definition, but it has another definition that is sexually indecent. Now, and give, them, about, now give them an example to show us you understand it. Okay, well, an example is I grew up in Oxnard, California, right? You see me, I'm a black, right? So I grew up in Oxnard, California. I grew up around a lot of Mexicans. So when I first learned Spanish, I learned a lot of the bad words before I learned the good words. So double entendre is the expression of that exactly where you learned a indecent, specifically with double entendre, a sexually indecent word. And then it has another definition. That's I don't not think it has to be exclusively it's not indecent. It's not, like, it's not no, it, I was about to say, no, double entendre don't have to do specifically. No, with not at all. It, it just means it has a, a more opinion. than one meaning, you know? Thank you. Two opposing yeah. opinions. That's all it is. Double on. No, no. I think you brothers need to look a little bit closer. It is There's not specific. It is, thing. brother. I make not music. Fair. I write a lot double on Chandra's. You know, you can say like, boy talk shit, he the shit. You know, yeah, like he's not that, actually shit, shit, but if, yeah, you know. know yeah, well, I'm a fluent English speaker and I, I would um, I would suggest that you look at more English. Look hey, yo, chill. Check it out. Check it out. I don't want you brothers to go and debate. Uh, well, that ain't what I wanted to do. It, you know. No, do, I have another it. example, my brother. Hey, 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 and, and and salutes to awakening minds. I thought you was on a call. He wanted me to remind y'all when I brought up the mirror, my aura. Who actually saw me when I taught that presentation? My aura, oh, there, mirror. Nigga, you you know saw that? Yeah. Yeah. My aura yep. maru. That was during the Kamazots. Like, man, y'all got to go on the channel and catch up. But yep. awakening minds is always letting me know, right? Bro, I see you. And he taking a lot of what I'm teaching over here and putting it on Instagram. So salutes to him yeah, for helping me. Up. He's hey, like, bro, a, he, that's that's my, my, my you, bro, bro, man, disciple, man, like on some real... He building one of the churches of 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 of, of, of over, over there on his side. Yeah, yeah he man. He he, 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 he he taking this knowledge from over here, man, and he's spreading it in areas where I ain't at yet. So we gotta drop a bomb for that brother, man. He he's helping he build a church, the church, the churches of Be Christ, like, man. You, you know. know. For sure. Yep. But hey, double entendre ain't necessarily dealing with sexuality. But I get what you're saying no. about how it's, it means two different opposite opposing things. But what we're talking about is light manipulation and what we are at the root and how we control what we are at the root source energy. Because what we're talking about is that we're an extension of a singularity or all, and we're ex we're extended, what you call stigmata. Like if you look at a light, right? Like I'm looking at the floodlight or the street light you see little streaks coming off this light, this little ball of light, right? You, if you got a stigmata, you see the streak coming off. That's called a stigmata, a stigmatism, right? We are individually those little streams of light coming off the source light. Literally, yes. when we talk about photons um, in dark matter and regular matter, 99.9% .9 of what we call reality is not matter. One out of Empty. a million of these protons don't meet up with their pair. They're so, rays, right? Yeah, Light rays. Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah rays. You yeah, know what, what it means in Latin? <laughs> go ahead, you know what it means in Latin, right? No, explain it. Go ahead, because I ain't did that in a lot of It means king. Ooh. <laughs> what, 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 say that again? Ra. Ray. Yeah, Ray. Yeah. Ray or Rex. Like, it's okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That is that's that's we're that's all, all right, man. Yes. Now, yeah, now, all not 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 people. We've been going for five hours straight. I want the people in the Ooh. chat room to hit the cash app, man, to uh support the show via my new presentation in some kind of way. We've maintained at least a thousand people in the building for five hours, and it's Friday night. So y'all ain't going to play broke. Drop a and bomb he, for if everybody drop gave a, bomb, a dollar, God damn it. That's yeah, We got to drop a bomb. That nigga been going three hours strong. It's been a yeah, thousand man. up in a year plus. You know what? Well, the, the only thing about the YouTube, though, the uh, fucking, um, whatchamacallit, the fucking monetization with them, 
you don't um got to do all this. It just comes, you know. You, you, but it make a nigga look like it bad. You already know. Day. Once you get yeah. a 500 plus, it's like, I already know what that algorithm. Yeah. I already know what that you already know. <laughs> yeah. But but oh, that's why I brought up the uh comedy. My my bad. I was just bringing random knowledge from my recent research. You know about this god called Baron Samedi? Anybody? I heard of Baron, that's Samedi. I heard of Baron, though, but that's Samedi. Yeah. Uh, how me, do you spell let, Samedi? I, I got you. I got you. Let me, let me do this. He's another form of Papa Lekba. Here we go. And, and basically, he's a form of Christ, this God of the dead, when they said Christ was on Mount Calvary. Look at his symbol. Yes. Do you know so, what samadhi means? Yeah, yeah, I'm about, to, I'm about to go into it, but then That's you can my go into it name, with bro. me, too. So check yeah, this. Bro, hey, hey, salute to that the queen. Like, uh, that sounds salute. like a baron. Like so, baron, samadhi, like so, a semite. Yeah. yeah. That's but, Papa Shango. But ch check it out, though, right? <laughs> the name Sam. In America, we got a god called Uncle Sam, you know, with the top hat. <laughs> With the he point he's point his finger. I want you uh, with the five pointed star, right? So, but the thing is that um, the word Sam is sham. That's the fake god. Like the the devil is this trickster, the god of shamanism. The sham is the knowledge of the great trick that's played on humanity and the whore of Babylon and all this knowledge. So I'm just showing you right now this god right here, right? His name, Baron Samedi. But the word Samedi, you know how the S can be a C, right? The S and the C can be interchangeable like ceiling. So when you say Samedi, you're saying comedy or comedy. And this is the God that say ha, ha, ha. Because a person that's doing a comedy joke on you, he playing a trick on you. It's a joke is a form of tricking too, with laughter and stuff. It's it's causing the body to cause laughter involuntarily by verbal verbal wit. So his verbal wit can make you to laugh even though you weren't trying to laugh. That's the same thing about the God that's controlling behavior, which is why he's linked to the comedy. He's linked to tricking, joking. And, and just fooling you out to do, to do behavior that you wouldn't have done. And so the thing is this, his name, Samity, is the word comedy. Samity is comedy. Samity, comedy, comedy, sam and, and, and And that's what I'm telling you about. This thing is, is a happy ending, but it's intended for amusement. So when you look at the Truman Show with Jim Carrey, it's a happy ending. He found his way out. But his life was hell, and it was all for the God's amusement on the other side. And when you really think about it, what I'm teaching with this cosmology and this flat earth shit, that's really the truth, man. Like, on some real shit, the, our loved ones and all of the dead are on the other side, and they can see into this thing like us watching a movie. And Ain't they weird. It, 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 no. Yeah, and it's, yeah. Go ahead. I'm gonna let y'all go. I'm, I'm gonna stop. No, I'm saying, like, yo, what's weird is like when they say God is always watching, or like everybody's. It's like, nah, they ain't watching all the shit I do, is they? And it's like, oh shit, they saw that too. It's like, yeah, pretty much. God mm -hmm. saw everything because you saw it, bro. Exactly. Hey, that's the first. Because we, we are it, right? Is the collective consciousness, right? Ain't we the all? Don't we go back to it all, all of us? So of course it's that. But what we forgot is that, that we are part of that all. Everybody. I'm your family just like you my family. That's what we forgot. You my brother, you my sister, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when we forget that and how to treat each other, even though we're not born in the same house or to the same mother and father, when we forget that we family, even though we're not born to the same mother and father, that's the evil. You know what else? You know how that, that, embryo, uh -huh. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, y'all go ahead. You know, ahead. you know how uh, how like okay, the egg cell of a female gets impregnated by the male seed, right? And then they 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 come, they merge, they marry, and then they form, they split, just like Plato basically. They split into from one to two, then to four, to eight, to sixteen, thirty-two, until it's one hundred and fifty trillion cells making up one human body, and you think you're one being. 
but you're basically the whole universe, right? Because you got your God to 150 trillion cells. So now what happens after that is you, if we trace that back to one human body, we can trace that back to everything. As they say, your stardust. How are you stardust is because if everything comes from a singular point, ain't yeah. everybody your brother, your sister, that's yeah. you. It's deeper that, than that. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm you. saying, bro. That's a perfect point. Like what they call in stardust is it ain't really dust. That's when they showing us that Aten symbol, that ball with all them rays coming out. That's the Big Bang explosion. So they said we made a stardust. But what are the stars made of? Light. So can light create dust? No, it can't. They don't want to tell the fact that we ain't made a stardust. We made the dust is pixelation. You know, when you dealing with a hologram or TV or a simulation, in order for an avatar to be projected inside of it, it's these small dots, like if you ever use paint or if you ever look at a TV real close or if you ever fuck with pixels, right? These pixels, that's what I'm saying. These little dots that create the virtual the person on the TV screen, that ain't that real person that's a projecting on a cube. What if I told you your projection in a cube, just like an actor in a TV? And the same, think about this when I'm showing you, right? If you look real close to a TV screen, you'll see this pattern right here that you see around your body. These little dots, these little circles making this brick wall. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? The static. Yeah, I've yeah, seen that before. Yeah. Definitely. So yeah. what, what, this, what these bricks that's 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 around your body is that's what i'm saying your body exists in the simulation and this taurus field is the simulation taurus is the bull that's the devil that's what i'm saying these are your virtual reality goggles that's why i told you the aura is the aura boros it's the snake wrapped around buddha and he gotta free himself from that motherfucker the straight jacket See, the, we look at this energy field like it's deep and all that, and sometimes we can start worshiping it. And that's what the, the that's not what got us stuck in here. Like the whole thing about the knowledge of electromagnetism got us stuck in polarity, because that's what electricity and magnetism is. Two yin and yang. But where we from, these two forces become like this one thing that we can't call. I don't think we can call. You can call it electromagnetism because it's like saying Adam and Eve. That's all electromagnetism is, is Adam and Eve. They I don't know if you ever said but, it, if, yeah. if you said this, but like polarity, ain't it, ain't it funny you got polarity, which would be two oppositions, right? Yeah. But So two hemispheres. But that in the middle, you would have polaris. You would have polaris. I don't know if you ever touched on pol polarity and polaris. Yeah, I, 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 I do just, all the I time. But that. guess what, though? I'm glad that, that you said that because the way you did it let us know that um, you had your own awakening with it. So, yeah, I <laughs> yeah. touched on it, too. But, but what I'm saying here is crazy because think about it. When Jim Carrey left the Truman Show, he left out of a dome. They showed the flat earth in that movie. And what I was telling you is that the world that's around you is literally your aura field. If you take the word aura and put TH on it, it becomes earth, earth, the word earth. We don't live on the earth. We live in the earth. And what this energy field is around the body is the simulation that's blinding the true self. This gets placed out as the mind inside the brain. The mind inside the brain now becomes the body inside of this energy field called Earth. And so if we want to lead the Earth, we got to change the energy in our heart because if our heart is still attached to this Earth, we're going to project back here. The electromagnetic energy field will 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 take us wherever we want to go is like a teleportation device 
So if we want to go back to Eden, all we got to do is dial up the energy of Eden in our hearts. And in our next incarnation, boom, we'll go back in the Taurus field as at the middle. That's why I said this is called projection. We're like motherfucking Nightcrawler. And what you call in death is you teleporting from one dimension to another one. So if you want to stay in creation, all you got to do is fill up your heart with worldly shit like the Bible say. And you will be in hell, which is repetition, a ring around a rosy in creation. Now, when you change your heart, you're going to change your mind. And that's when you're going to project all of your willpower and energy to Eden like what we doing now. Because what happens is this. Let me tell you something. When I astral projected, I used the same energy I use at what we're calling willpower to get out of my body. The energy that said, man, I want to go get something to eat and get in the refrigerator and go get it. That energy said, I want to astral project. That's a chant you say at night. So it takes willpower. And it worked. And my thing was, I traveled to another side, to the other side, the astral realm. But I just wanted to get out of my body. What if I wanted to go into myself through in the middle? You can project in and out. So my thing is this right here. If I astral project again, instead of me saying I want to astral project and just merely focusing on getting out of my body, I'm going to say I'll be specific of where I want to go. I want to project into this center place called Maru, right? So check it out. I realized when I did the rope on the ceiling experiment, I used my willpower by picturing a whole nother version of my room with a rope on the ceiling. And I pictured a whole nother version of my body sleep, laying in the bed, grabbing a rope as I'm going to sleep. Now, my real body, if I was to literally grab a rope on the ceiling, I would never be able to go to sleep. So as my real body or what I think is my real body is going to sleep in the simulation, I'm, I'm, project, I'm picturing a whole nother version of my room in my mind. And as I'm in my bed, I'm not going to sleep. I'm reaching up, grabbing a rope. Me? Yeah, we can hear you. Mute your mic. I'm talking. So I'm in the bed, right? I'll mute it for you. So check this out, right? The real me is in my bed, and it's comfortable falling off, going to sleep. The projected me is in my mind, sitting up in that same bed, grabbing a rope. As the real me go to sleep, my consciousness literally went into that projected me, and I made it to the other side. Now, when I got over, I didn't know that I was astral projecting i thought i was just in my room i ain't know i left my room but i noticed when i got out the bed all my lights was on and i went to i'm sure i was in darkness and just me remembering that wait i was in darkness how am i surrounded by light and that's what made me say oh shit i'm astral projecting and the moment I realized that, I got scared and woke up. I told that story of many times. Not, sure, not, not, a, not a thing is this right here. I'm realizing how it worked, though. It's because projection. I projected myself inward to this other. They said there are no such thing as an original thought. So whatever, wherever you are right now, I want you to think about this. Think that the room you in, that the wall is painted a different color than what it is now, but it's the same room. Now tell, now think about this. You may be thinking, well, I'm just thinking of this same room with a different color wall. Nope, you just peeked into a whole nother universe where the time and space where you at now the, pop, the probability exists where the walls was painted different in that world. It be people that'll tell you, look, man, I had a crazy dream that I was in this world that was no different or nothing like that, but 
my such and such was different or this was different. It'll be these crazy variables. They made a movie like that, like in one universe where we go on a red light and stop on a green light. What basically what the universe had to do was act out all the probabilities. That's called a law of probability, meaning if it can probably happen, it happened already in an alternate reality. Because in order for the law of infinity to stand, the universe got to cancel out all probabilities. So how did the universe do that? It just create a bunch of fucking simulations and every probability that can exist it make it exist in its own simulation. And it say, aha, now I did it all, I'm infinite. But we end up with a bunch of fake probability universes, simulations or demonstrations just for the sake of acting it out. And when you say acting it out, what are you saying? God being an actor now. Because the probability existed for God to not even know that God is God. That had to be acted out too. And that's the simulation you in now. You know bombs what I'm saying? On bombs on bombs. Dr. Moab, the mother of all bombs. M-O-A-B, nigga. The Moab. Mm, that, that shit is nuclear. That's what Biden just, dro that's what Biden just dropped on uh, Iran. Like, he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that shit. This shit so look like a mouthpiece. Uh... The Moab, for sure. Absolutely, my nigga. That was deep. That was no. deep. Now, here's the bro. System, right, right? Hey. You put a picture of the Kabbalah up, right? In the the Kabbal and you know the square, the cube or whatever, right? When we talked about how in the middle of that so-called uh dead pan, in the middle of that Kabbalah that they call like the center of the galaxy or a piece of the Milky Way or the dark, you know, the uh what they call it, the black hole, right? That's what they say that black stone is, is a piece of the middle of our galaxy, right? That's what's in the middle of the Kabbalah bed pan, which in the, you know over there in Mecca, which they go around and circle around. It looked like a bedpan with a black woman. And just and just to take this home too, like, because a lot of people may say, well, what would be the purpose of me making a universe where we go on a red light and stop on a green light? That come from a movie I saw where they was trying to explain what I'm trying to teach now. But what would be the purpose of it, like I said, with the law of probability, Every action is tied up into the most minute action that you don't think mean nothing, like how we go with the stop signs. For example, with the red, with the red light, green light shit, right? Somebody might have died because the light was red. But in an alternate universe, they live because we go on red light. They never died. So you will be surprised how the smallest action could could it equate it to the most the major dramatic is yeah the ripple effect that's what that's what I'm saying that's why the multiverse is this so Dude, that's what I was saying about the ripple effect about light uh, like the way so 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 light hold light on light. one more thing okay. so with that theory right let's just say the world the multiverse is this continuum to where death is life because it's a paradox so if you were that person who died at a four way cause the light turned red. Well, when you died in this world, because everything is polarity and the opposite happened on the other side, you actually never died in this other universe. Cause the red light is actually mean go. So you never die. So what happened? You just find yourself living on like the mortals. We are never knowing you just passed away in another world because that light you pass really ended your life in an alternate reality. But at that point, you pass that light. And this need to become a movie, right? At that point, you pass that damn light. It ain't the regular light you pass. You get this revelation that changed your life forever and you become this better version of yourself in that universe. And you tell people, man, I don't know what happened. Like, I was just riding, I was thinking to myself like another day and some came over me. I remember it, I was passing these cross streets, right? And what you don't know is that was your other ego or other consciousness from another world at that same cross street, you died. 
And that's symbolic because in this other world, you died too because that version of you became a new person at this revelation that just dropped in your mind at a cross street for no reason. You know, see, you just ride, boom, you got an idea that changed your life. And the idea made you a millionaire to the point where you bought a damn chain and put them cross streets on that chain. And you like, yo, the reason I'm wearing these cross streets on my chain because the idea that made me a millionaire and changed my whole passion in this world, it dawned on me at these cross streets. And those cross streets on the other side is the crossroads at the North Pole where these two realities merged at the polarity point, the pole point. You died in one world, you actually gained a whole new perspective on life in the other. And that's what death is, in my opinion. The sperm gained a new perspective on life when he became a human. The human going to gain a higher perspective when it become an angel or a higher soul. And it's going to continue to have better experiences. You wouldn't want to go back to be a sperm cell just like your soul would never want to go back to be a human. Think of it that way. That's that. And I promise Man, you, Man, that's bro, crazy. I've never looked up the etymology of sperm. Yeah. Or spur, like a spur on, on, you know, on the hill. I've never looked up the etymology of that. But I promise you, if you look at the etymology of sperm, it's going to give us a trippy effing understanding. But we'll be talking about this one. Link in to what light means, right? Because sperm... Everything we're talking about, price, melanin, DNA, everything we're talking about has to do with sunlight. I don't know if anybody's like comprehended. Like I know Bro Sanders understands what I'm saying, but everything has to do with the art, the sunlight, right? The archetype, the Antarctica, the Ark of the Covenant, anything that has arc in it, like electricity, has to do with the shape the sun makes when it crosses the sky. It arcs which is one of the strongest shapes that you can deal with in engineering is the art for a reason. It's that for a reason though. Can, can we it's say, so can we say it spark, yeah, yeah. it sparks. I got you good spark. Arc. Yeah. You got it, bro. You got it. You got it, man. You got this shit. I feel you know what spark, you know, you know, you know what sparks, you know what sparks the mail? You know what sparks the mail? A good arc. When she, <laughs> when she has a good arc, it sparks us. I got something uh, a little bit more tangible so people can touch yeah. it. So Hold Jesus, on. Jesus on. had wait, a- Wait, 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 wait. We no. got to go to my homie fan because- No, this is dope though, I, I man. Thought, I, gotta, I, gotta, I thought somebody was <laughs> trolling me with that avatar. It's a real person oh. mic on now. They been, yeah, they right. been trying to speak and shit. My bad. Hey, and David, we got to go to you too, but yeah, they've been waiting and shit. Yeah, go ahead, my yeah, homie yeah, fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jesus, yeah, Yo. where he was talking about where a, a husband died no. and his wife married a brother. Y'all remember that? Where the husband died and then she had to marry the brother. And then she, then the, that, that next husband died. But the idea is they were without issue. So if you look in the Greek, the word issue is the word sperma in Greek every time. So one husband died. They were without issue. Okay. And then she married the next brother. They were without issue. So that's the word sperma. That's and exactly then right. I would like to add this as oh, a caveat. Yeah, Every, sperma, sperma is sperm in Dutch, indeed, sperma, yeah. Yeah, every one of you that has a driver's license or an ATM card, it was spermed to you from a bank. Sperm bank. <laughs> it just means given. Uh -huh. It just means given from somebody else. That's all Think sperm. about this, right? Think, 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 think about think, think about this, right? <laughs> Think about this, right? Because you made me think of this with the sperm bank shit. Salutes to the panel. Y'all brothers be diving deep. That's what keep me on here for, for hours, man. But so it's Salute. like, think about what happened at a sperm bank, right? Oh, shit. You know what? I'm going to fall back. I'm more patient, man. You got it, mock homie fan. Take your time, brother. I'm going to remember what I was saying. You got it. Yo. 
No, nah, it's not me, bro. I've been having like weird tech issues and shit for like I don't know, like a good thirty minutes. Like y'all, y'all done been past the shit that I've been kind of itching to. So he had tech, you tech issues. Waiting. My like, bad. I thought that the tech issues made me think you was trolling. No. My bad, bro. Uh, he just been trying to talk, but it's been glitching a little bit. Man, I apologize. Let's let him bro, get it. Man. Come on, I like my comedy. I wouldn't. I don't fuck around like that, nigga. Like, nah. I appreciate it, Uncle Brother yeah. Sanchez. Like, I, I've been checking the shit for a second, and like, I'm not even gonna lie, bro. Like, while I was waiting, you started talking about like a, uh, like the rope shit, and like. I don't know, like I didn't, I didn't really have that, and this was way before I got into lucid dreaming. But like, it was mad similar, except I wasn't trying to like pull myself. Did his audio go oh, out, y'all? Yeah. Hey, maybe he should turn his video off, so then his audio comes through good. Cause I, I I'm not on. Nah, the, I'm on the you know work. what? His joint just completely went out. It's like he hit a <laughs> mute button or something. No, he just his his connection's just bad. No, it don't matter what it is. <laughs> they shine some light on the sperm But bank, I, man, I'm gonna say I, this though. It's crazy because I've been really on my Griselda shit lately, and that, now I got my homie fan come on. Like I want that's him. Right. Yeah, I want him to. The, 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 I want to hear what he got to say. That's crazy, cause the moment I brought up them niggas, I saw them on like uh, what's his name? What's the nigga from New York with the big show? Not, damn, he's a was a battle rapper. I know they from Buffalo. Um, what's his name? Oh, um, Geechee Gotti or uh, what's his name? Nah, what are you talking about though. Yeah, Griselda, that's Buffalo, New York. Though. He that's interview Buffalo. everybody now. In the barber shop, right? He was a barber shop. Barber shop, barber shop, 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 shop yeah. interviewer. Um, Matt Hoffa. Is, Matt Hoffa. Matt, Matt, yeah, guess what, yo? And and it's yeah. crazy that I and I'm gonna say something right now. That's an apology for me not even remembering that nigga name because he's a legend Hoffa, in the absolutely. fucking. He's a legend on the battle rap shit. So that's my bad right there. Uh, everybody should know who Math Hoffa is. So, but <laughs> but but, but yeah, so, yeah, so in the yeah real record, talk. So it ain't so, but the, right. it's just because I'm drinking right now and shit. But the thing is this I'm right high. here. Um, yeah, man, you know, he been over there. They been interviewing and shit. Yo, y'all gonna laugh. I didn't know West Side Gun was the CEO of Griselda. That, Griselda, that's crazy. My nigga, and, uh, West Side Gun, the nigga that got shot in his jaw, uh, Conway. Yeah. And then you got B Benny the Butcher. Them three niggas right there got people. The beats that they make, my nigga, the samples that they do is on the level where I wish I, we know about it, because any old school 70s, 60s sample, they done sampled it and spit over that shit, period. Phyllis Hyman, Boosie, uh, you know, Boosie, James Brown, Parliament, anything, they done already did it. They on point what they doing, but the key is, I noticed that he stopped getting his hair braided. He just going reckless, right? And he up under that label that Jay-Z up under, which is up under that, you know, the alphabet book. So I just want to let everybody know, as clean as West Side Gun music is, Griselda. Griselda is called Griselda for a reason. She did what she did for a reason. She was the king. She was the queen pen for a reason. So we got to pay attention to what they represent, even though the music sounds official and amazing. But yeah, y'all got it. Yeah, and nah, I know that they they on some bullshit. I ain't going to say that it's uh fucking you know, they no, on it, the typical not, bullshit. Bro, I'm like, just saying, if, uh, let's if I had see. To do it, I would do it. I would do it. To be honest, I would do it to be honest, but, but I just my bad. Um need to to promote things that he's actually pretending to promote. Like a 50 cent, like yo, show us the schools that you doing the supply runs or the, you know, book bag drives for show us the schools that you support the jay-z or 50 cent but they never do that but they always we always kind of like hear about it mm. and so they're up under that umbrella literally the umbrella that is that you know that flag that paper plane but that's up under the, the alphabet board that hispanic lady that hey. runs it run that shit for real 
but yeah, hey, hey, got hey, 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 I just want to say this, man. Welcome back. Wait, you talking about? I missed what you said about Griselda, but yeah. that's. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, thank you, bro. Um, but no, nah, I ain't even gonna nerd out on my uh my mock comedy shit, bro, because that's like. That's that's completely you separate. Like you, I'm you, the, you 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 Haitian? You, you Haitian? Uh, my dad is half Haitian, half Jamaican, but you know I don't speak Creole. Like I'm not super connected to the culture or nothing. Yeah, because, I'm really on Makami because I'm like a, a elitist type nigga. Really? Yeah. You know you the best. I ain't gonna lie, man. I but, fuck with him because um I ain't on the the Haiti shit plays a lot of role in the wild fuck with him because how many haiti rappers do you know are in the fucking um like the scene of uh the, but what i'm saying right. is, you got kodak black you got he's he's rare as fuck because it's like um he his the way he, his songs about haiti still has like this trap kind of eerie you know rap music vibe but it's still like he's like a he yeah, got a he, lot of songs where he revolutionary talking about the struggles of haiti and shit and i ain't gonna lie man like the right? nigga right now if i was a haitian he would be like how jay-z is to brooklyn for me that's what i'm saying you know as hey, far as the rap game. Like you know for, for haiti he gave like he straight up like dedicated uh, a part of the masters like to Haiti, because there there was Pray for Haiti, and then he had a song with that dude K Trinata, and I think K Trinata is like big. I don't, I don't really fuck with him, but he had a yeah. song with him called Pay for Haiti, and that's when I found out he was actually like he put up money from his his masters to be sent somewhere in Haiti. That's that one sure of my like, favorite you know, songs, Pray for Haiti. Hey, God bless yeah, Donald Trump like, for pardoning his ass to get him out of prison. That's right. We finna vote him back in. Shout out to 2024. That nigga is not real no more, bro. I saw like eight pictures of Kodak and it was like that Biden shit, like different just type remember, of niggas. But just remember how no, Kodak like, was praying. Just remember how Kodak was praying with the Hey, hey hold on a second. Y'all want to hear me roast somebody for old time's sake relentlessly? Mm-mm-mm. No, nah, I ain't gonna do it. That one ain't gonna change it. Fuck it. Who we'll do it, dude? Yeah, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. I, I'm just gonna it. block. Nah, I'm just gonna do block. It. I'm gonna block them. That's it. We just gonna block them. Oh shit! I was about to say they did. They, they, they yeah, here. we just gonna you block. Talk about them. It don't matter. You got it. Nah, Sanchez. While you're doing that, right? You done? Damn, you fast. Nah, look. I'm about to uh, leave the panel and shit. I'm gonna be back whenever there's another live. If I catch it. Salutes to everybody. Salutes to you. Keep doing the work, you know, and uh, stay up and blissed. Peace. Prince Nemesis. Salute, Prince Nemesis. Prince. Salute, hey, sir. Let me let me let's Prince. No, stop. Yeah, Salute, man. Nemesis, it's been a pleasure. I'ma say right now, Nemesis, you're a deep brother. I hope to see you on another one. That's real talk, bro. It was it's been a pleasure, man. Salutes. And and, Same. and thank and you. I'm surprised really? awakening minds then hop his ass on here and he in the chat room. He was supposed to. He was supposed yeah, to. Yeah, but we we salutes to the to the bill, man. Yeah, even I know. Hey, hey, brother! Let me ask, brothers. brothers. But nah, I'm disappointed. Look, 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 right now, look. Let me I'll put my, know. I'll put my Instagram All in the chat the right now. Niggas. Thank and you. Y'all can, you know, oh, like yeah. if if y'all want to hey, talk or some. Let me ask you something real quick. Nimitz, ask. How you feel? How you feel about the Israel Palestine war right now? Uh, that's crazy. Who, this is some. This is some biblical who's stuff, man. This is who's more righteous. To answer the question, who's more righteous? Who deserves? Who's more righteous? Who okay, so let me thing. go ahead. Um, okay, so 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 no, 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 because my answer, I don't want to answer with a long answer, I want to give it short and concrete. You have to understand, like, I tried to think of an analogy real quick, right? But it's like this it wouldn't matter. Okay, so who's more righteous is like saying you put two boxes in a ring or two slaves. You let two slaves fight each other. And then like, you're going mean, to say, and right. listen, listen, listen. You're going to say, you're going to put two slaves to fight. And you're going to say, who's more righteous? 
there's no one righteous in a, in a wrong battle, right? So this battle is not wrong even. It's like day and night. What is evil? Thank it's you. the balance. This is supposed to happen in order to cleanse the earth. The people that took the vaccine, <clears throat> you know, the they, vacation. it's called the vacation. The vacation, everybody that went on a holiday go. trip, they're going to trip. And when they trip, you fall. And when you fall, you're you going to fall even from Eden down to earth to hell. So now this is this is the, the end of it. You know, like we're living in a time where I don't I don't live in a reality of war. I'm not confused. I live in peace. And if they want war, I'm going to blow them to pieces because this is rip. And they're going to rip Absolutely. apart, you know, like this is, go. you can rip literal parallel universes. My room turned red when he, when he said paint the color to another room, mine was red. And when he said there was another universe, I, I felt it. And I went there and I went back. I was like, Ooh, God damn. Everything was the same except for the room and my experience in that room for my life there. So what I'm saying is your experience on the war or the world war of the world's is supposed to be like, okay, if you're at war, you're gonna feel that. I, I don't feel that, man. I don't feel that. I don't, I don't, yeah, out of that sight, war out of has mind. been I going on it. before I, I was out born. Of sight, out of mind. I get it, out of sight, out of mind. But guess what? We grown ass men and women, and this will affect our paradigm, our economic prowess, everything. So that's this why is why I have something. You, you know what? You know, everybody, you know, though, including Bro Sanchez. This is why I have something. It's called Mace Kingdom. You have to buy your land, buy land, and grow your own food and live off the grid. Once you live off the grid, you actually live on the righteous path, which is a narrow line. It's a very, very narrow line. You know, you can fall off it very easily by distracting yourself with uh, material, worth, worldly, earthly things. Babylon, the Matrix, they're distracting you with a million and one things, which is not the one. You only need to focus on the one thing, which is the righteous path, the next step in front of you. That's the only thing. But you focus on politics. This guy, that guy, this guy got shot. This guy made a diss track. Yeah. This song got dropped. And what's you know, happening, so, and, and what, when you do that, all of those things dictate yeah. your your actions and okay. thought paradigm. Now you ain't manifesting your will. Right, can I catch next on that? Yes, April? sir. That's, but look, with facts. all the peace and blessings towards everybody in the panel, I'm gonna leave. I'll be back to, in the next in the next live, man. Hell salute yeah, man. Salute to you, Sanchez. Salute you, salute, salutes, salutes, bro. Salute. Hey, hey, look, I see a lot of trolling in the chat room, man. Like. We've been here for six hours talking. I don't want to hear nobody say talk is cheap because check this out. I'm going to tell you why we got to quit saying uh, talk is cheap. Right. And let, let me, uh, I might have to uh, do one little thing real quick. Hold on a second. Brother Mock Hummy having tech issues, right? We're going to get him up out of here. <laughs> so check this out, right? Uh, you know, I just saw some in the chat room I want to talk about. Talk ain't cheap. When I saw Creflo Dollar raise $60 million for a jet, I knew talk went cheap then. I know the <laughs> motherfuckers who created the Bible know talk ain't cheap. I'm going to tell you something. A rapper with a bunch of chains around his neck, no talking ain't cheap. Niggas got to quit saying shit that ain't true. Because it ain't serving you just because it's been repeated so long on making right. Thank you, bro. I've been trying to get that across to people. Like, regardless of what people regurgitate. Yeah. Don't a motherfucker, look. A motherfucker will hear you talk and say, that's a jewel. That's a gem. So how can it be cheap? Diamonds expensive. Jewels and gems expensive. We don't value truth. That's why you dumb fucks think talk cheap. That's why they killed Jesus, because they said that nigga just talking. He ain't built, and Caesar built something. A fucking big building Thank teaching you, your ass a lie. T.D. Jakes built something too, nigga. So what? What you going to get when you go up in that motherfucker? A big lie. See, y'all are fools, man. Mm-hmm. Facts. Mm-hmm. Facts. So talking like they could. Anybody talking like they really understand? Jesus, Yeshua, whatever you want to call him, the son of Yod Hey Wah Hey or Yehovah or the Yaha, right? Yah 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 Yah. 
he's the guiding light that's within everybody. He was one of the first ones. He was the one of the first rebels that told everybody, F the system, go against this shit that they're telling you. They're selling you back your reality. You don't got to do that. It's within you. Just know what you are. That's what. G- that's why they slaughtered them. That's why they tortured them in the most, in the most torturous way. Crucifixion at the time, right? It's for a reason. We don't talk about these things, even if you believe it's fake. The fact that we talk about any person that had brown skin being tortured to death because of how he was against the system that was manipulating and perpetrating the fraud against the people at the time. That's a real nigga what we would call in our day and time. So the you fact know, that we think that Jesus Christ won't the realest nigga at the time, that's it's weird to me how people talk about him not understanding that. You speaking of really Jesus like, like he was a Jesus was right. listen, he, listen, he, listen, he listen, 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 listen. Salute to the panel. Hey, 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 can I add I, this? Can I, I, I add I, this? Hold on, let me holler at me Jesus myself. Had a bad week. <laughs> I, I, I gotta say this shit. Salutes to uh <laughs> Mel, Melvin. Melvin, I wasn't trying to go in on you much love, but I just want to say this real shit to me, myself, man. We keep speaking about Jesus like he was a real person. Jesus, listen, listen. Jesus was a real person, just like a 33rd degree Mason is. But the thing is this right here. The, the, the thing about Jesus being put to death on a cross it's the Hiram Abiff ritual. That mean that the life and legacy of Christ would have been a script, a acted out script like Machiavelli, like all the Masons. But Christ, as you know him, wasn't a man that literally died in real life and that script was real. That was a Hiram Abiff ritual. And every okay, third, okay. hold up, brother. Every 33rd degree Mason got to die on a cross and get raised up by the brothers. Well, that's why Jesus died at 33. If, if you get that, then we, we track it. You, you I do got get it. it. I do get it. But now, here's my point. What we're talking about is a man, right? Like, like the story is about a man that transcended what man can do and became a sentient, eternal God, right? You know why? Because when no, you listen, plugged listen, in listen, at listen. the 33rd degree, you are outlaw. You are outside of the law and yeah. operate outside of the rules that govern the straw man or the regular people. But, but go ahead. I, so you see you know. what I'm saying? So you, you understand what my point is, right? What we are talking about is trying to reach that level of sentient metaphysical being where we are not concerned about this flesh that's you, you hear my lips flapping right and my tongue clicking you hear the english right but we're more than that right? can i can i ask and you a question this, real quick bro all this brother jesus christ the christos was about was understanding the true light that's within us that sparks all of the physicality that that we are so that's all i'm saying to people. I, I i got you but i'm telling you that the concept of christ consciousness is everything you saying but this christ yes. real talk was an imposter a, a a ritual leader no. that listen to me listen to me this christ right when he was on top of uh mount calvary that was, let me show you something real quick christ on mount calvary is the position of the 33rd degree it's called the steps of freemasonry the people you see up here at the top them the high ranks when you talk about christ on top of mount calvary that's because he's in that 33rd degree position above all that the all sin I sees all. You see where the G is at? What I'm telling you is this right here, man. Christ dying as a 33rd degree. Christ riding the goat. Remember, Christ rode the goat into town, and they call it tri- They call it the triumph em- ent- entry. Listen to me, bro. Listen for some time, bro. They call it the triumph entry of Christ. He rides in the town on a donkey. All motherfucking Masons ride the donkey. They ride the goat. Christ ain't no different. He's just a fucking Mason, bro. This is what I'm telling you. The idea of Christ that we are all gods and we are all Christ. I'm with you on that. But the story of Christ in the Bible is a script that was acted out by Masons. That's why they call it scripture. It's a ritual, bro. 
It's a ritual. So, so listen, the only way that story becomes real is when you embody it, when you become Christ. But if you believe in some dude that got up off a cross, that's why the world ain't changing. We should be Christ, not believe in the script. Because when we don't embody the shit, everybody think you can treat each other like shit and just call out on the dude that died on Calvary. And that was a fucking ritual. That's what the Masons did. They made you think we can just treat, be the world can be evil and somebody else died for your sins. That's why I'm telling you, if the world believe that Christ didn't really die for your sins and that you're going to pay for your own wrongdoings, they'll change their fucking act, bro. That's what I, bro, when I left the church and I realized Christ went real, the first thing I thought about was, oh shit, who, who the fuck gonna die for my sins? Then I learned about the law of karma from the Hindu. Nobody, you gonna pay for it. What you get out, you put out. It's reciprocation. Bro, I started changing myself. Until I die, I've been working on myself. Now that I know ain't nobody dying for my damn fucked up behavior and that I'm going to pay. See if the world knew this shit and they didn't believe in this false ass ritual, having to be created because people literally believe that somebody died for their fucked up behavior. We pieces of shit on this yeah, earth. Yeah. Jesus Christ mighty name. Amen. And he that's did. the, that's yeah. the ritual shit that I don't like how they controlling us, bro. That's what I'm saying about you distinguishing between a ritual and the fact that you are the Christ. And if you are the Christ, you wouldn't believe in the ritual. You'll know that you're going to pay for your own sins like the Christ did. Thanks. You're right. Mm. Now, guess what? Thanks. Now, now, guess what? We all talking about a physical being. We talking about me and you, right? We talking about if we did this, if we did that, if we... I ain't Definitely a physical right being, now. bro. No, okay. I'm not a physical you. being, though. No, so so I just gotta I specify that. I, I I feel you. We we spiritual and physical at the same time, right? Well, I am. I'm just gonna speak for myself. I'm not speaking for none of y'all. For the moment. Yeah. We're, for the moment. Right now, yourself, I'm spiritual and physical. We got a for for the, for the right moment. For the moment. Are Real you? Time, let me right? ask you a question. Are you always gonna be physical and spiritual forever? We're going to be both forever. Absolutely. We okay, that's why I disagree yet. I believe that my ultimate form is something way beyond the physical, which is what the word metaphysical mean, beyond the physical, which is what the word spiritual mean, beyond the physical. If you think that your in all be all is the body, you ain't woke yet, son, but I'm going to pass you the mic. Question. Question. I got a question for me myself. I have a question for you. But understand, um, 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 salute to the panel. Salute to you, bro, Sanchez. Yeah, go ahead. Ask me yourself quick. Bye, show. Um, so, based on what you were saying, he was a human. So, based mm -hmm. on what I read, the man mm -hmm. actually lived a great life. He only had a bad week. He was God incarnate. <laughs> based off what you, if you based really on if he was the human, I'm yeah, just playing on what you're saying. He only yeah, had one bad it, week. He I lived a great say, life. All of that, that he way. had one bad. He just had one bad week, dude. You said one bad week. Yeah, he had so one bad week. So he had yeah, one bad seven. You days know what's what crazy, bro? I'm gonna show you how much power. <laughs> I'm gonna show you. No, no. I'm gonna show you how much power that the Masons got, right? Because because this yeah. shit, like. I'm going to show you how much power the Masons got. Now, Jesus was on Mount Calvary in between the two thieves, which is Joachim and Boaz. Now, here go the two thieves right here, the two pillars right here. This little space right here in the pyramid, that's the earth realm. Man, y'all ain't, bro, because y'all playing with me. And I'm really on some deep shit right you now. And, 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 and no, nah, bro. No, nah, because this shit that I'm breaking down with Christ, a lot of folks be coming at me like, bro, you you always bring up the Bible. And then when I get people on here that really think that I'm on some real Christ story believing shit, bro, I'll be on this bitch another two hours to show you that ain't what I'm on. I hate when folks think that I'm on a sly way Christian. That's what and, I'm and, 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 but, but check, I got you, bro. I got you. I got you. Bro. I got you, bro. I got you, bro. Can I? I got you. Let me get, let me get it. So check it out, right? 
Let's go back to this Yoruban cosmos for a second. There's a hollow chamber up here where you can see people living inside of this thing right here. And then you got the earth realm now here. You got this dome up here. How we ain't going to compare that to this whole thing here? I believe that what this showing us is that in the heavenly kingdoms up here, this is where the most high God is really controlling the simulation, which is the earth realm, this dome here inside of the earth realms and government, the two pillars controlled opposition, yin and yang, polarity, Democrat, Republican, man, woman, ruling us out of polarity, divide and conquer because united we stand at the top, divided we fall. And right here they got them two pillars. Christ was mounted up on top of cavalry in between these two pillars or two thieves. That's all I'm saying. Think about this right here, right? You can't tell me Christ was a Freemason because the whole story is Christ is, is based upon Akhenaten and Atenism in Egypt. And that's where Freemasonry and world religion started at the same time because all world religions is a kindergarten initiation into the occult. And what I kept telling y'all is eventually every single one of us going to be a fucking occultist and an archon. I ain't say whether you're going to be a good one or a bad one. That's your choice. But what you're going to be is a trickster, a person that's phasing in and out of these dimensions, playing a role that it is in that place. Just like when Neo and them go into the Matrix, they got to blend in. As the, they'll be spotted and shit. So you're, when you regain this power back to be multidimensional, one thing you're going to have to learn how to do is blend in and fake and, and, and act. Think about uh, you going on a covert mission and you got to play a role to be undercover. Undercover mean under the chakra layers. When Neo is going in the Matrix, he got to blend in so the agents don't spot him if he want to wake people up. This is the war. This is you going into the earth realm as an awakened guru who know you live in Eden. But you going into these dream worlds to wake up the babies who sleep. They bodies in Eden and they bodies it ain't woke up yet. So you become one of them bees that's help waking up the lava because what they doing, right? The lava are asleep inside of this fluid. And if they don't stand over that lava and vibrate the, the pool, bacteria, harmful bacteria will grow in that lava's fluid. And that lava will never turn into a bee because the, the, it'll get a like, disease in the water like a swamp with parasites. So when you see the bees over the lava, tending to the lava, they got an important job. They got to make sure that they constantly vibrate the waters of those lava, like what the ocean doing. Because if it's stagnant, life can't. The, the quality of life won't be able to thrive there. Parasitical life will thrive there. So what I'm saying is that when you see the bees over these lava chambers just doing nothing but looking in there, they're using their wings to vibrate the waters that that lava is in. To, they're basically shaking them awake. The lava is like a seed, and as the seed breaks out of the capsule, is like you're unraveling it when you shaking it. See, the earth is vibrating. The earth we walking on is vibrating. When you put a seed in the ground, the earth is basically over time unraveling it and shaking it loose, its contents out of it, and it becomes a tree. It breaks through. The vibration of the earth literally is what opens up the seed just like your mind is going to open up to release your soul the seed chamber will open up to release this new tree that will then poke its head above the ground surface and see the world above for the first time. You know what I'm saying? So, For sure. Hey, and I agree with you, bro. I like, ain't just like talking the, to you, though. I was just teaching, but you got it, yeah, though, brother. Yeah. Talk to me. Sure. You got good, it. Right? Now, um, 
what they do with cancer cells, like cancerous tumors, they vibe, they got a new technology where well, it ain't really new. It's old as fuck, uh, pardon my friends, but they just vibrate your body at a certain level and the cancer cells shake apart. So why wouldn't that be possible in the waters above and below or the void or the deep, the waters of the deep, right? Which is, you know, described in Genesis on how the realms were split apart and then the land was exposed as vert, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Mm. When I, when my whole mm -hmm. my whole argument is it ain't even really no argument. It's just that everybody has an understanding of what they were given in reality, their imagination, right? Say that again. Know, everybody has an understanding of what they were given in their imagination via reality, because that's all your imagination can be is based off reality, right? So everybody's imagination is based off of their realm. Our realm is based off of what was given to us before. So we are in control. We have dominion over how people actually are going to perceive this reality next after us. So we got to take real care about how we promote and perpetrate the reality of this realm. That's my whole point, is that we need to have everybody's understanding incorporated before we dismiss anybody's understanding before we understand it. I, so I don't really understand point, it, point, no, 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 <laughs> but listen, you got my it. Point is, my point is, before we dismiss somebody's understanding, we should truly understand it first. I'm going to tell, tell you what I think, man. Yeah, go, ahead. Yeah, go, ahead. go ahead. I just think you should, while we have this platform, because it's very unique, right? You can basically talk about whatever you want to talk. Anywhere else you get laughed at. You can reach here. This is very a unique platform. I'm going to tell you that now I created it because I couldn't find and like it when I was on YouTube. And there was deep shit I wanted to go into. And I, everywhere I went, I was like, no, nah, if I go that deep, I'm probably going to get laughed at. I can go that deep on my own place, though, and the people that want me to go that deep, they'll come to me. So that's how Bro Sanchez was born. But the thing, what I notice is, this ain't going to be around long. So when I open this shit up and y'all come on here, give the people nonstop data download. Know what I'm saying? Come with everything. And you've done that. So appreciate all of y'all. And we t that that's all I'm saying. Make, because you know what I'm saying? This may seem like just a little Zoom panel. It's not but I, I really look at this shit like this stuff going to be here long when we go on these recordings and words going to outlive us. We're going to be the Plato's and Aristotle's and all that mm -hmm. in the future. Like, and, um, you know, like the people yeah. that was really doing a lot back in the day, it was really, they were fucking really nobodies, though, a lot of those people. It wasn't it to generations later that they became fucking names that you can't go without hearing when you bring up certain topics. And then when in these men time, they were nobodies who was getting laughed at and ridiculed. And but their idea outlived them. And when the world caught up, they brought up them people like, yo, he was saying this way back then. And they, crucified him you know what i'm saying he was ahead of his time and that's what i think this community is why we get ridiculed so much but when the world catch up to where we at we'll be long gone and when they do catch up to where we at on the other side when they get there i'm gonna be the first nigga to say i told your dumb ass you could have <laughs> been woke up nigga laughing yeah, no, and shit a... calling a nigga a tenfold <laughs> hatter you had and eventually in your motherfucking 10 trillion <laughs> lifetime. Now you saying all the shit I'm saying and you made it on to eating and I'm going to be up that bitch standing at your body when you wake up like <laughs> you stupid motherfucker. You could have been woke up. I'm going to choke him out. <laughs> I'm going to choke him out. Right, Sanchez. I, just... I told you dumb ass. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. we get the last laugh and the last laugh is because think about it the ancestors told us the truth and we laughed at them 
I remember when I was telling people, man, the ancestors don't know everything, a flat earth. And, and, and that was me before being a flat earther. I believe that the ancestors was right about astral projection. Like I told people, I believed in an astral plane, but thought I lived on a globe earth. How the hell can the astral plane be a plane and then the earth be a sphere? But I wasn't thinking like that. And when I asked her project that I was a globe earther and I never thought to myself, damn, we travel to other worlds via astral planes or dimensional planes, just like I just did. Not with spaceships and rockets with a solar system and spear. The body becomes the shape of a rocket when you look at it in a meditating position. Look at it. It looked like a rocket pointed up. That's crazy how they turned this shit into, you know, just a, it's just crazy, bro. That's why I got so much to teach, man. Yeah, no, it, it is crazy. And it's nice to have a spot where, like you said, you could go to and kind of talk about some of this stuff or get new ideas without somebody just completely dismissing what you say or yeah. acting like it's not, not true. And, and, and what happens is when they dismiss it at the door, the opportunity for your community to grow and evolve into something where we at the day where I can pull up a collage like this. We're so advanced with the knowledge of the netters that I there are no comedic priests on earth that are deeper than us. And they making money saying they know everything about ancient Egypt. We're so fucking deep, y'all, that one of my collages over here in this community is Damn near 50 years worth of damn you rising through the ranks in Freemasonry. You will never get, you won't get nowhere near a collage like this, even on your highest degrees. Like, and this is how oh, of them keeping the world dumbed down for generations. We rose above the ignorance. We don't really even know how significant this awakening is. This is not going to really mean none of y'all till you get to the other side. Then you're going to see that everything happening here is happening on a spiritual level. What's happening, if you think about it, if all of our bodies are like sleeping avatars and eating and we're dreaming this like them bees in the lava pit that I was showing you, when one of them bees go, let me show you something because this is where it get deep. I was going to shut down, but y'all making me stay longer. Watch this. Watch this. See, what happens is this. Because the whole honeycomb is connected as one big fabric. Like, it's a bunch of different holes or pods, but it's all connected as one sheet or fabric, you know. What happens is vibration plays a role now. One of these worms go to moving he making a lot of money he kicking the walls he moving a lot that mean all the worms around him gonna go to waking up and moving and in their dream now on the other side this look like a lava that's sleep and he wiggling too much so he waking up the other lava around him but in the simulation where they dreaming into that plays out as a nigga named Brother Sanchez waking people up. But on the other side, we all sleep in lava and I'm just moving a lot, disturbing the ones around me. And that's because when that happened, all the other bees say, you know what? It's about to be an awakening or an exodus over here in this area. The, the more motion mean activity like a baby kicking a lot, you know you about to give birth soon. You know what I'm saying? So what happens is when the lava is the most active, something very strange happened. This hole start to close up and seal it up when it's about to become a mature bee. And that's because it's becoming solidified like a baby get fetal bag liquids becoming a flesh. This would be the fetal form, embryonic form of the bee. So when that ceiling is formed over there, 
That is when they throw in the dirt over your grave site in this world. So in the dream, when they go to burying you under the ground, that's like when the bee lava gets capped in. But at that point is when he about to break out and rise out. So when the football team playing a homecoming game, they bust through the paper just like all of Jack bust through the box, God Anubis bust through the seal. And that's this whole thing. When the bee lava actually wake up with wings, he's going to bust out of a small little caked up chamber that seals him in. But it only seals him in when he's about to wake up. Ain't that something? Because that's in the simulation as above, so below. They burying you in dirt. And, and that death is you awakening up in this realm as a bee that's about to bust out of that dirt. As another farm, though, with wings. So everybody in the cemetery that we buried, they got back up out the grave. We just didn't see them because the farm that they took is out of our visible spectrum. But they on the other side. They're here with us, man. They right above us looking down at our sleeping bodies. Like when Neo go in the Matrix and the people who didn't go in the Matrix with him, they watching everybody's body while they go in. That's what your, your, your ancestors doing. So it's all a ritual as above, so below. The actions in this world is taking place in the higher realm in our sleep. I'm going to end this show right here. If you guys want to learn more, man, like I said, support me by grabbing my edited presentation. It's basically the Sumeru presentation that I did pay-per-view it was actually like damn near five hours and something but i trimmed it it was a lot of fat on it and 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 i realized i could enhance it by taking out all the dead spaces now just like three hours and something so that was a lot of dead space of me just looking for stuff and playing music to take breaks and and because it's a live pay-per-view event where i'm kind of presenting new information that I just got and I'm breaking it in a live presentation on um, stream wise but now I've digested the information refined it edited it, that live and I'm adding on it here today and so you know like I said if you want to if you know support me grab that appreciate y'all man for sure Salute, Bring bro on. I supported yeah, no, you yeah, bro thank you I supported you, bro. I appreciate that, man. Real talk, man. Everybody that support me, I can't thank y'all enough because y'all don't have to do that, man. Real talk. I would still do this, but I really appreciate you. Y'all make it possible for me to make this a profession. And because of that, yeah. I'm very serious about being meticulous and cracking the code and putting my all into it. So I appreciate y'all. No, yeah, we hope that you keep making these because it's like you said, it, it doesn't last. It's not going to last that long. And while it's here, it's kind of like you want to grab it and take advantage of it the most you can before um, things change. Yeah, big facts. Big fa you, you, you know what, man? I'm going to put this shit on a shirt. And I just thought about something to share with y'all to leave out of here. And this, you can sleep on this tonight. You know, a lot of people be saying we are gods. Little G. Little G, right? Watch this. This going to get me in trouble because guess what I'm telling folks? Bro, I'm a motherfucking big god, baby. Big god. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, hey, I'm a big god. <laughs> big G. Uh -huh. Big G. Absolutely. Look. Hey, Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, look, we big G's, baby. We ain't no little G. Now, they going to say I'm a Mason. Now, I am a son of the month. Big G's, baby. We ain't no little G's. Mm -hmm. You a little mm -hmm. G if you don't know the truth behind the veil. See, I'm a big G, baby. Big G's. Yeah, big I'm G's, a big man. G. Big G. Big God <laughs> over here, baby. Big God. <laughs> Real Facts. talk, man. <laughs> 
Hey, salute to all my big G's, man, on a call, mm -hmm. man. We ain't no little G's. Don't do us like that, baby. Nope. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I said, man, well, I've been calling. Yeah, we gods, but we little G's. No, nah, bro. Nah. Nah, bro. Uh-uh. Salutes to my brothers, man. We we out, man. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate, right, appreciate it. Thank man. you. Appreciate y'all. Salute to the panel. Appreciate you, yeah. bro. For sure, my brother. Thank you. Yeah, man. That we got to get our claim this shit back, bro. If you a god, you a god. The body is the little G. The mind, that's the big G, baby. That's that. Come on now, capitalism. That's the cap, the the top point, the pinnacle, baby. Much love to y'all, man. Support your boy. Like I said, I can't stress enough. When you download, when you purchase your download you will get a folder with so many collages and images that I use during the entire presentation. You will be able to access all the slides too, so it's like a bundle. I want to just include everything I got to make it worth it, man. So support your boy. I'm going to do a show asking y'all about the edited presentation. And that's going to let me know who supported me. And I want to know from the people who copped it some customer feedback and how I can improve it and what they like and don't like. So, you know, check me out, man. Appreciate y'all. We out. Peace and much love. Sanchez, you got the story right, and now I see.